West Orange. Today is Tuesday, October the 10th, 2023. Today is meeting number 23. My name is Tammy Williams. I serve as your West Orange Town Council President. Madam Clerk, opening remarks. This is to inform the general public that this meeting is being held in compliance with Section 5 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975. The annual notice was emailed to the Star Ledger and filed in the Township Clerk's Office on November 23rd, 2022, and published in the West Orange Chronicle on December 1st, 2022. Councilwoman Casalino? Present. Councilwoman Geber Michael? Present. Councilman Rutherford? Here. Councilwoman Scarpa? Present. Council President Williams? Present. Mayor McCarthy? Thank you. I've always associated October with the opportunity to bring awareness to breast cancer and domestic violence. And with that, we would like to do our series this year called Survivors and Experts. And with that, we've invited two of our West Orange residents and employees uh, to come and have a brief discussion on breast cancer, how it has impacted them. And so I would like to first bring forward our resident and doctor, uh, Dr. Cordai de Cadour, who is a resident of West Orange, who is indeed a cancer survivor. Please welcome Dr. Cordai to the podium. Hello, okay, thank you. Thank you for having me. Council, I appreciate it. And yes, it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So Tammy Williams became a part of my journey um, as everyone sort of know, knew that I was diagnosed with breast cancer in the latter half. But what happened was I am a board certified podiatrist. I practice in New York City. I practice in Essex County. I am now with a fairly qualified health center in Plainfield and Elizabeth. Um, have colleagues. I'm at Barnabas quite a bit and uh, Trinitas and JFK. I had a history of what's called a fibroadenoma, which are non-cancerous tumors that can occur in women, particularly of color. And I had one removed at 16. Okay. It came back at residency. I was like, okay. And I thought it was good. 218, I felt something and I was like, well, oh, it's back. And my, I, I know that I'm in a privileged situation because I have colleagues that are all doctors, we're all friends. And I went to my OBGYN, who's I'm the godmother of her youngest child and said, this is normal. And she said, let's see a breast surgeon. So I saw a breast surgeon who I love, Dr. Margaret Sacco at Overlook, who's like a surrogate auntie. And the exam date, she's like, it's a fibroadenoma. You're fine. You can have it removed. I said, I'll do it later. 219 comes, two, sorry, that was 217. 218 comes, it became painful. And I was in going to drown in patients in Barnabas and had a meltdown thinking something was wrong. I got it, it um, aspirated and again, negative. So I'm like, okay, 219 comes. And I'm like, oh God, I have to do this mammogram. And I delayed it. First point not to do. I said, I'll do the mammogram later. I'm going on vacation to Martha's Vineyard. Came back, did my mammogram and ultrasound and it was abnormal. And I was like, so of course I go to my mom and asked her, have you ever had an abnormal? She was like, yeah, and it was fine. You're fine. So I said, okay, delayed again, doing the biopsy. Did the biopsies. I didn't want to take time off because I was doing surgery at Barnabas and I'm like, patients come first. And I did it the day after Thanksgiving. And 12 3 2 Dr. Sacco calls me. And I'm thinking she's calling to harass me about taking this out. I'm like, I'm going to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I get the, you need to sit down talk. And everyone knows when your doctor says that, you're not getting good news. So she told me that I was diagnosed with stage 2B, which I was like, what happened to one and zero? Because staging starts at zero. And I was like, where did this come from? And had a meltdown in the office. 
And she says, I know you're not going to sleep. I'm going to wait for you. My sister came. My sister is an attorney, general counsel in the city. And my good friend was OBGYN. I called her. She shut down her practice. Again, privileges. So I'm there now with a, an attorney and OBGYN and a surgeon. And they're back and forth trying to determine what's the best course of treatment. Being a surgeon myself, I was like, give me percentages. I'm not making a decision unless I hear percentages. And that's what happened. I literally collapsed after being diagnosed because it was a matter of, can we save your eggs? Can we do this? No, we'll throw you into stage three. And it was ping-ponging. And I realized my life is changing. This is going to be crazy. So I did six rounds initially of the hardest chemotherapy in my life. And during that time, the hardest part was telling colleagues because doctors look at it as us versus you who are the them. So when us get sick, us was crying, us couldn't talk to me, neurology had to hang up on me. It was just the funniest, I, I couldn't believe it. Like these are doctors that you might know that really were like, I can't believe this is happening. And I said, you know what? I'm in a situation where I'm getting the best care possible because the average woman or man and men can get it and are not getting the information that I'm getting or the type of care I'm getting. So even during chemo, losing my hair, I did something called Cool Cat, which helps preserve your hair a bit, and that helped. Being sick, being at GI, what have you. I said, you know what? I'm going to form an advocacy. My friends thought I was nuts because what happened right after? COVID. So now I'm talking to my doctors saying, will I survive? And five doctors, I mean, from everywhere, one of the top allergist immunologists, Dr. Ann Maitland, right after Fauci, a friend of mine, and no one had an answer for me. So I was like, so I might die, that's what you're trying to tell me. Okay. So I left it to God, and I kept doing what I had to do. I did a lumpectomy in May of 2020, and it came back negative right before my 45th birthday. I ended up having an on a virtual birthday party and then told my friends, oh, I got to go because now I got to go get a mammogram. They put a special wire in you for surgery. And literally the party stopped. Like, what? I said, yeah, this is my life right now. Did that, was negative. Did 22 rounds of radiation. And radiation is something that's five days a week. It's like, remember the show Cheers. Literally, I would, every day I'd be like, hey, how you doing? And I made it funny where I think I became a comedian because out of pain, I think really does come comedy, as most comedians say, and exactly what's happened. So the point they were laughing at me every time I would come in because we have jokes. I'm like, well, I think you know me more intimately than my boyfriend does. Okay. You know, and it was just a camaraderie of staff and physicians. And I was like, how does the average person get what I get? And I realized I had a friend who went to Sloan Kettering and she wasn't given some information. I was like, you don't know about this? And so I formed something called Talks with Dr. D. And I've had the privilege of speaking to groups like this, um, the United Nations two years ago, different women's group, um, the Divine Nine, which I'm a part of, you know, Bill Rutherford is, and also Tammy. And I'm speaking at Newark Museum tomorrow for an event. And I, because of surviving the radiation, having to go through an additional five rounds of chemo and an additional lumpectomy, and God said, no, I'm keeping you around. I, it's something that I'm passionate about. I see too many women who I've spoken to, regardless of color, who said, I don't understand this information. Um, I don't understand what my doctor said. And it's easy for me to be an advocate and sit down and literally take a salt shaker and explain your receptors and the person leaves saying, oh, that's what they were trying to say and can make an informed decision. I've spoken to family members. It affects the spouses, you know, what to expect, you know, if she's mad or if it's a he, you know, and she's mad, what do you do? How does a family come around? And about support, which I had in the West Orange community from neighbors checking on me and dropping me off food to my sorority, which I'm grateful for every day of my life. So the three things that I could leave you with is always get a second opinion, which I did with Sloan Kettering, because I told my colleagues are too invested where I need to make sure that the information that you're giving me matches what they're giving me. And they respected that. And I was blessed that it worked. And I said, okay. And I did everything out of Overlook Hospital for some anonymity because being at Barnabas, I said, if I'm getting treatment, somebody's going to ask me about their foot and ankle because that's what always happens. Somebody slides off a shoe and says, hey, doc, you have a minute? And I, I was like, I, I just can't. <laughs> um, number two, have a support system. Some people that I've talked to want to do it alone. They're afraid. C word sounds ugly. And I'm like, you can't do it alone. I mean, I had the ultimate test doing it being through COVID. And I was just like, okay, I was working 
and then I was pulled out of work because we didn't know what would happen to me from March to July. And I went back to work. And if you had a sniffle and came near my office, my staff was like, can't be seen because vaccine didn't exist at that time. Um, number three, I would say, know your history. A lot of people think, oh, it's you know hereditary. 80% of breast cancer is not hereditary. I got tested out the wazoo for every gene I think that exists to man. And I have not one abnormal gene, but I have cancer. But at least I can tell my family, particularly those who are younger than me, sisters, cousins, nieces, that nope, negative, but you still need to get tested. And number four, don't be afraid to ask questions. Sometimes you sit there because you're so overwhelmed. If you can bring somebody, it helps. Because I was overwhelmed. I swore I didn't need this, the, the extra five chemo sessions and went off on my oncologist, who's a good friend of mine. I felt so bad. I mean, cursed her out in the office because I was like, you tell me. And my sister was like, uh, yeah, I wrote that down. And that just shows you that the mind will protect itself when it's stressed out. And I was stressed out. And you know, thank God for institutions like Barnabas and Overlook, particularly Barnabas being right there. It's a great partner because they do excellent testing. And if you're over 40, get a mammogram and an ultrasound, particularly if you're of color, Asian and African-American women, it will not pick up on the mammogram by itself. It will not. The ultrasound by itself, it will not. The combination, it will. And if you can't get it, fight for it, advocate for it. It's not a law yet in New Jersey where it's an automatic ultrasound unless they say it's something abnormal they see. If it's routine, not covered, at least not yet. And that's my story I wanted to share. And I thank you guys for having me. Wow. Thank you so much, Dr. Cordai. A couple of things. Get tested, get checked, have your mammograms annually. And she is just 44. So please, she was she was just 44 when she was diagnosed. So please, 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 age is not a number, get checked. And then we have some facts. So our experts. So we're going to introduce Dr. Dr. Courtney Renish, um, who is a Hispanic professor at the School of Nursing at Montclair State University. It's Hispanic Heritage Month, so thank you. She served as the inaugural, inaugural undergraduate program director since the school's inception in 2016 until 2020. Since joining MSU, Dr. Ranish has advised and educated registered nurses seeking their baccalaureate degrees. She su supported, wow, she supported the school's expanding mission to include a generic undergraduate program in 2017 and a graduate program in 2018. Let's introduce Dr. Courtney Renish. Or as, as, as well as our health director, come on up. I forgot you were going to say a few words as well. Come on, Michael Fonzino. And we'll let him do a, a better introduction, not stumble through. You said it well, Council President. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Michael Fonzino, Director of the West Orange Health Department. Um, just October is um, breast, care, breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we wanted to you know, raise awareness within our community since nationwide communities come together to, to raise awareness. And we're honored to have Courtney Reinish here to um, give a short presentation uh, to raise awareness in the West Orange community. So without further ado, Courtney. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me tonight. Um, tough act to follow. And I'm glad that you had your screening and got taken care of. So although I have a doctor title, I am a nurse practitioner, I'm a family nurse practitioner. I just want to be clear. Um, so I was asked to speak about breast cancer awareness. Um, so October is breast cancer awareness month, but it's also there are other uh, conditions for which we want to bring attention to as well, uh, as well. Uh, attention deficit, hypertension, uh, hyperactivity disorder, breast cancer awareness, cybersecurity, LGBTQ plus history month, and it's national book month. And actually today is World Mental Health Awareness Day. Um, so, you know, suffering, unfortunately, is a human condition and we need to eliminate stigma around mental illness um, and encourage people to share their experience. So my brief objectives this evening are to define what is breast cancer, 
um, discuss some of the causes, review a few statistics, some health disparities, unfortunately, we still see um, when dealing with breast cancer, and screening and prevention. Um, so breast cancer, you have a basic definition of cancer. It's abnormal cells that are growing and invading he healthy tissue. Um, and it's particular in the breast. Um, the disease, those breast cancer cells, when they spread, it's called metastasis of the disease. Um, we can have breast tumors and they can be benign. So those are not something we need to treat. Um, if we are suspicious that they are malignant or uh, dangerous for the person, um, you will have a biopsy to confirm that and then there'll be treatment. And metastatic disease, of course, is when it spreads to bone, um, to the lungs, to the brain, and that often happens through the lymph system or the blood system. So causes of breast cancer are not clearly known. Age is a factor, gender is a factor, some family history, some genetics, but not always. Um, lifestyle can contribute. So smoking, obesity, lack of exercise, um, excessive alcohol use, which in women, we're talking three drinks a week. We're not talking huge quantities to increase the risk. Um, things that don't cause breast cancer, caffeine. So drink your coffee. Um, deodorant, you can wear it. Microwave. So my mother's uh, goddaughter used to duck. And this is back in the 80s and 90s. But if you were running the microwave, she'd be ducking um, because she was afraid of the radiation from the microwaves. Cell phones do not cause breast cancer and contact with someone who has cancer. It's not contagious. Um, so always trying to work to reduce stigma. Um, so how many people are affected by breast cancer? I'm sure everyone in this room knows at least one. Um, one in eight women will develop breast cancer in her lifetime. Um, this year alone, almost 300,000 people, there'll be 300,000 cases of invasive breast cancer in the U.S. Of that, 3,000 of them will be men, and unfortunately, 500 will die. Um, so breast cancer is the second leading cause of death uh, in women, second leading cause of cancer death, excuse me, in women. Um, there is some hope. We do have some decent survival rates. There are actually over 3.8 million, almost 4 million survivors living. And the minute you're diagnosed with breast cancer, you are a survivor at that moment. Um, the good news is if we catch breast cancer early on in um, those early stages, we're looking at a 99% survival rate for five years. So that's why we wanna do the screening. Unfortunately, healthcare has work to do in the area of disparities. Um, risk factors for worse outcomes include those social determinants of health. So lower income, less education, and certainly lack of health insurance. Um, only 30% of women without insurance are up to date on screening as compared to 64%. But 64% of insured women are not enough women getting screened. So your job tonight is to encourage your loved ones, your sisters, your mothers, your aunts, your friends, to please have their, their annual mammogram. Um, almost half of women put off having screening done because of costs and yeah, 50% delayed or went without care due to costs. So really our problems. Who's at higher risk for worse outcomes? Unfortunately, it's the Latinas and black women. We have worse, uh, worse rates of breast cancer and outcome survival rates. So screening, screening is going to, depending which organization is making the recommendation, it's going to vary. So I'm giving you general screening, but I'm always gonna say with a caveat, you need to discuss with your provider, your healthcare provider as to what is best for you. But generally, 
Recommendations are age 40 and above to start annual screening. Um, some women with denser breast tissue will be referred for an ultrasound. High risk risk individuals, so someone with a mother or a sister with breast cancer may be referred right away for an MRI. Um, care should be uh, individualized and encourage friends and family always to have screening done. So talk to your healthcare provider about what is best for you. Treatment, you heard a little bit about radiation, about surgery. So lumpectomy, mass mastectomy, double mastectomy, prevention, chemotherapy. It's always going to be individualized based on the staging of the disease and other risk factors and your personal decisions too. You have a voice in this. No one has to tell you it's your body. If they say you uh, you are, they recommend you for a lumpectomy and you're saying, oh no, mom had it, my aunt had it, I'll, I'll just get a new set after. You know what? You, I'll take a double mastectomy and that is your right. So please, you know, second opinions, do what you need to do for you. Prevention, it's going to be all those things we talk about for heart disease and cancer prevention. So healthy diet, avoiding smoking or quitting if you are a smoker, maintaining a healthy weight, um, to the best of your ability, daily exercise, and work to with your be a partner in your care. Um, so, with that, those are my recommendations, and all these things are also good for Mental Health Day. Um, it it kind of crosses the ground. So, thank you this evening for having me. And if there's any questions, otherwise, I will let you continue your work. Thank you. Thank you. And continuing on, it is also Fire Prevention Week, so we are going to invite our Chief, Mr. Vecchio. Thank you, Council President. Yes. Good evening, everyone. As the other speaker said, we have a lot of things to uh, compete with in the month of October. So uh, fire prevention is, uh, is in my wheelhouse. So we'll have a little conversation about that. According to the National Fire Protection Association, the NFPA as it's known, local fire departments responded to 1,353,500 fires in the last year uh, of reporting. These fires caused 3,800 civilian deaths 14,700 civilian injuries, and $15.9 billion in property damage. Help me, Joe. That's what I said. I should have got There you go. Every 23 seconds, a fire department in the United States responds to a fire somewhere in the nation. A fire occurs in a structure at the rate of one in every 6.5 seconds, and a house fire occurs every 93 seconds. Went too fast. Yeah. Most home fires and fire casualties resulted from one of five causes. Cooking, heating equipment, electrical distribution, and lighting equipment, intentional fire setting, and smoking materials. Over the most recent five-year study, cooking was the leading cause of home fires and home fire injuries. Smoking materials caused the most home fire deaths. Just last year, West Orange had a fully involved attic fire where the ignition source was determined to be a cannabis water bong which given the recent legalization is expected to continue to drive these numbers higher, even though the smoking of tobacco has been on the decline. Fire Prevention Week is observed each year during the week of October 9th in commemoration of the Great Chicago Fire, which began on October 8th, 1871, and caused devastating damage. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. There it is. This horrific conflagration 
which people remember had something to do with Old Lady Leary, a lantern and a cow, killed more than 250 people, left 100,000 homeless, destroyed more than 17,400 structures, and burned more than 2,000 acres of land. This year's NFPA Fire Prevention Week campaign is Cooking Safety Starts With You. Pay attention to fire prevention. This year's campaign works to educate everyone about simple but important actions they can take to keep themselves and those around them safe when cooking. Simple, simple actions such as staying in the kitchen while cooking or keeping anything combustible away from the cooktop and establishing a three-foot kid zone around the stove in areas where hot food or drink is prepared can go a long way to prevent hidden fire, kitchen fires and burn injuries. On behalf of the West Orange Fire Department, I'd like to thank all the residents who came out this past Sunday for our annual fire prevention open house at fire headquarters. We had fire safety giveaways, equipment and rescue demonstrations, hands-on fire extinguisher training, apparatuses on display, an ice cream truck, that was my favorite, and a poster contest. And as always, Sparky the fire dog was on hand to greet the children. We want everyone to know that while Sunday was an organized opportunity for the community to visit us, we're always open for folks to stop by at any of our firehouses and chat with our firefighters and learn more about us and get some tips on how to keep you and your family safe. Thank you for your time and have a safe fire prevention month and year. Thank you very much, Chief Vecchio. So we have council liaison announcements. Councilwoman Scarpa. Yes, um, I just wanna say uh, tonight is going to be an exciting night for our seniors. We are um, passing our amendments to the Senior Citizen Advisory Board. They are thrilled and wanna thank the mayor for hearing their voice establishing the board and working so hard now to meet their needs. Um, OSPAC, unfortunately we got rained out uh, for the Jazz Fest, um, but there's, my, there's one or two more um, things that we may be able to partake and we can go to the website to look at the rest of the activities set up on schedule. Councilman? Um, no updates from this weekend. Councilwoman? The West Orange Arts Council is meeting uh, Thursday, October 19th at, at the Arts Center at 7 p.m. To learn more about the council, uh, visit woarts.org. Pedestrian Safety Advisory Board is meeting Wednesday, October 18th at 7.30 p.m. in the Thomas Edison Historic Site. And uh, the Open Space Board Commission is meeting November 2nd at 7 p.m. Check out our township website for the location if the date gets closer. There isn't one listed on there. Um, and that concludes my council liaison announcements. Thank you. Councilwoman. Uh, yes, Mr. Fagan, if you could assist me. We had a ribbon cutting the other night. Let's see. Let's see. So let's go to the one we did. Okay, so next Saturday, October 21st, we're really, really excited. Downtown West Orange, we have three ribbon cuttings. We're going to be celebrating Llewellyn Park's uh, restaurant on 104 Harrison Avenue, their one-year anniversary. We're finally getting around to doing their official ribbon cutting. Uh, the Dose Pharmacy, which is located in Edison Lofts, will be at um, one, uh, 2 p.m. So we have one at 12, one at 2, and at 3.30, we have a new um, Mountain Society a wine, beer, and spirit store, also located in um, in the Edison Lofts at 3:30 uh, p.m. So we're very excited about these three new entities in our downtown. So come downtown the 21st and catch your energy. We just had a new restaurant open up on Main Street. Um, yeah, that Mr. Fagan. Oh yeah, o Oco Fine Cuisine. And we were all there to support them Friday night. What a beautiful um, uh, space. It's very eclectic, uh, great energy feel to it, great delicious food. So please come visit them. You could park in Quigley's parking lot. And for all parking and visiting our downtown, you could go right to the um, 
downtown app download it on your other uh, android as i have or your iphone and go to your app store and you'll see on the first page um uh, there's attraction. Uh, well, that's a couple pages in, but the restaurants are on there. There's four pages of icons to look through. So uh, download your app and come find where to park and come visit us downtown to catch your energy. Uh, tonight's agenda, I believe, not that it's on the official agenda, but there'll be a presentation for the capital budget this evening. Okay, great. So um, when we have that presentation, our downtown business owners in the Tory Corner section have been uh, advocating for us to improve uh, and, uh, Abe Lando parking lot, which is located on the corner of Washington and Main Street. Uh, it's a lot that has various uh, entrances and exits, not very well, uh, not great signage. And most, uh, most um, uh, visitors to the area don't even realize it's of its existence. So we were hoping that we could get some support. I'm gonna pass this to my colleagues this evening and give it to administration. So when we get to that part of the presentation, if you could read through, see that there's support from our business owners to uh, uh, to add to the, not add, uh, to support in the capital budget uh, renovations of that parking lot. We're excited that there will be a new restaurant opening in that uh, area, which will seat about 80 patrons. So, you know, 80, 80 seats in a restaurant uh, requires a lot of parking. And so it's in a, a great location, uh, but the lot really isn't user friendly. So when we get to that uh, portion, I hope my uh, colleagues could consider that uh, as we move forward in preparing for a capital budget. Thank you, uh, thank you, Council President. Thank you. And yeah. so just wanted to acknowledge, um, again, this is um, Indigenous Peoples um, Month as well as Indigenous Peoples oh. Day was yesterday. I've got the tiny flag raising. Oh, oh, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, and so we wanted to acknowledge that. Um, this week is also National Voter Education Week, which is the perfect time to make your voting plans for the upcoming general election on the 7th. Um, the voter registration deadline for that is October the 17th. So if you're not registered, um, please go online, check your registration, um, and register to vote by October the 17th for this election. Um, this is also a historic preservation uh, month. We will not be having a meeting this month. The October meeting is can canceled. Um, the WOSAC Foundation also hosted its fourth um, run for WOSAC. Also this past weekend um, at Town Hall, there was a Town Hall employee cookie exchange, which was a delicious, delicious Friday afternoon um, sponsored by uh, these two wonderful Town Hall employees, Ileana and Margaret. Um, so just wanted to highlight some of the things that they do in town hall uh, that are just promote camaraderie. Also understood that um, uh, there was a celebration for our CFO today as well. Um, we attended the Essex County Senior Wellness Event um, last week hosted by uh, County Executive Joe DiVincenzo. I just have to tell you that was an amazing production. Um, I'm going to yield to my county colleague here, just give her an opportunity. She's worked very hard for this event um, year after year, um, but this year was an expanded program. They were in both um, ranks one and two. Um, she was here to support this event. Any comments? Certainly. Teamwork makes the dream work. Um, everyone worked hard together, but that wouldn't happen under the leadership of County Executive Joseph DiVincenzo and his continued commitment to seniors in Essex County. I was completely wowed with the turnout. Um, I got to see some of our West Orange uh, residents there, which is really nice. Um, but, you know, this is an event that I look forward to every year. And um, and yeah. so the way this is set up is there are booths, um, probably at least 50 booths um, in total with all types of information um, for our seniors. And I just wanted to highlight, I picked up this um, pass it on sample pack um, from our uh, Congress, congressman's office 
on different scams and different things that are targeting um, our senior population. So I wanted to make this and make, uh, bring a copy of this and share it um, and make sure we have this information. We can get it posted to our website, share it with our um, senior uh, department. But there was just so much information. Um, the event was amazing. Um, all day long from 10 to 2, lunch was included. Um, every senior also got to go home with a, a box of fruit. Um, it was just an amazing day uh, full of activities and information. Totally impressive. And again, kudos to our county executive for always taking care of not just our residents, but especially our senior population. Then I also wanted to highlight the stop for Nikhil that also occurred um, despite the rain, the West Orange community came out and supported uh, this event. I think this was the 14th event, if I'm not mistaken, 14th year. Um, and so again, just thank you to our West Orange community and to the Bailani uh, family for all they do in West Orange. And then of course, just a little bit of information and, and highlights from the run. And again, just highlighting suicide prevention, um, a wonderful day. The weather turned out to be a perfect running day. Actually, it was a little warm, um, but lots of people came out. Thank you to the Mountaineers from uh, the high school, the mentors um, for coming out and volunteering. Um, it was just a beautiful day. And just to, again, highlight the fact that mental health is wealth. Our, our, our health is our wealth. Um, so I think that's all I have today. All right. Thank you. All right, that will conclude our conference agenda and we'll move into our council agenda, Madam Clerk. This is to inform the general public that this meeting is being held in compliance with section five of the Open Public Meetings Act, chapter 231, public law 1975. The annual notice was emailed to the Star Ledger and filed in the township clerk's office on November 23rd, 2022 and published in the West Orange Chronicle on December 1st, 2022. Councilwoman Castellino. Present. Councilwoman Gebber Michael. Present. Councilman Rutherford. Here. Councilwoman Scarpa. Present. Council President Williams. Present. Mayor McCartney. Will everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The council is now in their public meeting. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, invocation for today's meeting will be a moment of silence. In West Orange, it is important for us to acknowledge that the recent attacks by Hamas on Israel have touched many of our residents personally. In West Orange, we have residents with both Israeli and Palestinian heritage. The geopolitical complexities of these attacks and the ensuing war declarations are beyond our borders but our primary focus should remain on the life, loss of life. Please continue to pray for all those impacted by all wars and unrest. And if I may just ask for a moment of silence. Thank you. We have some important items on the agenda tonight, and we have a capital budget presentation um, that will be presented to us by our mayor. Uh, we wanted to have that at um, this part of the meeting so that we could make sure all of the public um, was in uh, attendance at our meeting um, that typically starts at seven o'clock. Um, Madam Mayor. So good evening all, and good evening. Thank you, Council President, but it gives me a chance to say thank you to Dr. Courtney Varnish also because she serves on the Mayor's Wellness Committee. So I appreciate the partnership that the township has with Montclair State University. And also thank you to Dr. Dean who was just here because she was just so uplifting even with the dreadful news that she had. So I can't even imagine what her bedside manner would be. Uh, so thank you for that inspiration. And thank you for the moment of silence. We have eight synagogues in town. 
And um, there was a vigil last night and uh, it's just devastating the impact on the families and friends that we have here in town. So tonight, thank you for the opportunity to present to uh, this evening's capital budget. Uh, we'll start here, okay. With the appropriations at the last council meeting, there were two um, ordinances that were passed, one for $3,624,000, ordinance 281323, and the $1,990,000, 2814-23. So that was uh, passed on second reading. That was time of the essence. So I appreciate that you passed that then. Um, there is an authorized environmental $103,150 down payment from Capital Improvement Fund. Um, useful life of combined authorizations is 8.37 years. Debt will likely be financed in 2024, payable in 2025. So the remaining recommendations, uh, in an effort to be efficient, I have asked the directors of the departments, this is broken down into three parts, the Department of Public Works and Engineering, the Fire Department, and the uh, Recreation Department. So they have prioritized the list. We have two lists, hopefully before you, you have the priority list number one, total of $6,300,000, and priority list number two, $5,176,000. So in pr priority requests, you will see on your list are street improvements, sewers, we're looking for cameras and uh, help with our sewer systems, Fire engine and ladder truck, which we have been hearing for a while now. We have one truck that goes up and down our hills for 34 years with a lifespan of 20 years. So for 14 years, we have been pushing a truck up and down our hills. Uh, outdoor facility improvements, I'll go through pictures. The multi-purpose roll-off truck for the DPW. Uh, town hall fire safety improvements and protective and office equipment at $100,000. Um, Joe, if you'd like Joe Pelos, director, if you'd like to come and talk about our street improvement, roads, sewers, and sidewalks. As you can see by the disrepair of some of our curbing and potholes. Joe Pelos is director of our DPW department and doing his yeoman's job in engineering. Hi, everybody. Um we try to keep on a plan, you know, like a 10 year improvement plan. And we're kind of lagging behind, as you can see so, with some of the pictures. Um, you know, we're in desperate need of, of repairing a lot of these streets, um, replacing gas trenches and, and what, and taking a lot of wear and tear on, on our roads. You see the curbing and, and whatnot. So we could definitely use that money to repair a bunch of streets in town. I'm sure you hear a lot about it. <laughs> yeah, it's just more, you know, there's more streets. This is um, two of our pumping stations. Um, the one on the left needs a new pump. And uh, I can't uh, tell you how bad that can be when they fail. Um, you know, a lot of people would be backed up and a lot of money to get rid of that stuff expeditiously. So, um, you know, that pump needs to be, you know, redone and rebuilt and re re put in. So we have two pumps that are constantly working on and off, on and off, on and off. You know, there's a lot of times where that station is only working with one pump because the other pump is constantly failing. The second set of pictures on the, on the right is an old, very old pumping station that um, we have problems with at least once a year, if not twice a year, the pipes will break and, and you know, upwards of thousands of dollars to fix them. Usually it's in the middle of the night and we could actually take this pumping station out of the mix completely and use like it into the gravity system. So it would cut back on repairs. It would cut back on pumps. It, you know, it's like the right thing to do. 
and you know it, it's very beneficial to us to eliminate that station altogether you know we have an opportunity here that we wouldn't normally have let me just add on your form there it says that we wanted to de decommission this um, pump station and as joe said very politely you don't want to know what happens um, if it fails so this really decommission would be to do just that avoid any contamination uh, from those systems and um and this is a, a truck replacement it's like a it's replacing two trucks with one truck um we use a garbage truck and we use tandems to haul leaves, to haul snow, well, the tandem to haul snow, to haul uh, trees when we cut down trees and, and everything, dirt, whatever. The garbage truck we use for leaves and like leaf bags and stuff. But we've been very good with uh, roll-off uh, roll trucks. I'm sure you've seen them on the road. So if we were to, if we were to purchase the roll-off, you'd be you'd be replacing two trucks our garbage trucks are 25 30 years old when they're full of leaves when we're doing leaves it takes an hour for them to get to the recycling center dump and come back to the site they're, they're they've done their job well and they just don't have much life left to in them and the same thing with the tandems as you can see they're you know, this one looks like it's freshly painted. That's just so people don't get cut on the rust. But, um, you know, like they've, they've, they were both here 30 years and they've, they've moved a lot of things for us. And they, they were definitely, we're putting more money into those four trucks than, than we need to be putting into them just to keep them on the road. That's some more pictures of the town. There's the older garbage, the old garbage truck. And that's a one of the snowplow trucks. That's a, the generators for the pumping stations for the backup power. No, this is your your this is for the firehouse. It's a backup power, which is a necessity for the at the firehouse. senior buses that need to be you know replaced they're you know running every day you know five days a week um eight you know morning runs afternoon runs during the day runs and they they um you know there's three or four of them that are in very very bad working order it's just tony stuff right there we go Thank you, Mayor. Okay, so these are just a few pictures of, um, I was asked to provide pictures to show what apparatuses need to be replaced. So the ladder truck you see on the left has been out of service um, for um, mechanical malfunction for two years. It's actually um, decommissioned. It's currently waiting to be auctioned up at the uh, recycling center. So that's kind of a non-entity. Um, that was our reserve aerial. It was about 30 years old, but we it, it, the cost to repair it would have been in the tens of thousands of dollars. It didn't make sense to even entertain that. Um, we do have an aerial truck, which is a beautiful truck, but we do not have a reserve. So anytime that goes out, we have one aerial. Our neighboring communities all have multiple aerial trucks. Um, I could get into the specifics as to how why we need aerial apparatus and firefighting, but we'd be here all night, so I won't do that. The second uh, truck right there is currently still, in theory, in service. Well, however, we don't use it because it has um, it hasn't passed what we call a pump test in an in an emergency. If we had to use it and we had nothing else, we could put it in service. I don't feel comfortable doing it. Um, and the other yellow engine that you see there is something that we bought. Uh, six, about six, maybe six and a half years ago, used from the Ridgewood Fire Department. It's uh, 34 years old, and it was bought specifically to bridge a gap until we got a new a new engine. Um, 
if we were to order a new piece of fire apparatus today, it would take two years to come in. So obviously that that's turning into about a, almost a 10 year gap. It's still running. We put more money than we should into it every year, but it's all we have. It's the only reserve apparatus we have. Um, back in 2015, for those of you that remember, um, West Orange was in a tough place with EMS. And thanks to Chief Smeraldo's um, work on this, the fire department was able to, um, I don't say take over, but as the first aid squad, which was a great organization, was having trouble finding volunteers, the fire department was able to pick up that slack. In doing so, without it costing the taxpayers any more money, um, we had to remove an engine company out of service. There used to be an engine company at fire headquarters that doesn't exist anymore. So to give you the, this, make it very simple, engine companies carry water. We have a ladder truck at fire headquarters that doesn't have water. So West Orange is divided into four zones. So in zone one, which is where headquarters is, currently we don't have an apparatus with water. That's something I would love to talk to you at another time about bringing it back, but that's not what we're talking about now. I'm bringing it up to explain to you why I'm requesting what's called a quint or a quintuple. What it is, it's a, and I did submit a picture, but I don't think it made it to the to the PowerPoint. Um, what a, you'll see that the number we asked, $1.2 million, that was actually, a, I hate to say it, it was, a, it was a number from a couple of years ago. So we're gonna try to keep that number, but that number might even increase. What a quint is, it's a um, engine that also has an aerial ladder, the, the quint obviously meaning five, it has an aerial ladder, ground ladders, uh, hose, um, a pump inside, and um, a water tank. It carries X number of gallons, usually 500 gallons of water. So that's why they call it a quint. The reason I'm requesting this, as we've downsized in the past 10 years, it's a very versatile piece of fire apparatus. It can be used as, an, as a reserve aerial truck. As I told you, our reserve is not available. So when our ladder does, today our ladder was out of service all day. Um, and thankfully we borrowed another town's aerial apparatus, but that's another story. Um, however, when we if we have the quint, we can use it as a quint. So it can, in other words, we can use it as an aerial device. So we can put it at headquarters and we would ride as a truck. However, the goal is to have it on a daily basis be frontline engine three which is up in the St. Cloud area. It's a big, it's a much bigger truck than you may see engine two. It's a smaller little, maybe a little more, um, um, I don't know what the word is, compact. Yeah, it gets around a little bit easier in the tighter streets. St. Cloud area doesn't have as many tight streets, so you can have a, a bigger uh, apparatus. That's our intent. So our engine three would be this quint that we're asking you to, um, to approve for us. Again, we won't see it for a minimum of minimum of a year and a half, probably closer to two years, but we really would like to get this um, in the works as soon as possible. So we hope you guys will consider that. Thank you. And if you have questions, ask me questions. Oh, right. I might as well get into this too. So, so this is actually, believe it or not, this is more um, engineering because it's buildings and grounds, but since they're our firehouses, I'll, I'll talk to you about it. Um, back in 2003, 13, 15. Pete, was that when we did that, that study? 15. 15, the study was done in 15. Um, so the, the town commissioned a study with a with an architecture firm. They came out and they they evaluated all of our buildings and um, came back with, in, a, in priority, they came back with all the things that needed to be fixed um, for various reasons. Um, yeah, these are just pictures of of the various fires. You know, if you if you want to come see them, you you know they're your buildings. You can come see them anytime you want. Um, and we started to to fund projects and fire headquarters um, um, was able to get a, a sizable amount of money to do um, not a whole lot of cosmetic stuff. It needed all HVAC, new HVAC systems, and that can, that costs a fortune. Um, these are some of the things you see here are cosmetic, uh, but they're falling apart. Um, the picture on the on the not the generator, the one next to it, that's the that's the driveway, the rear driveway at station four. Quite frankly, I've been asking for that for years. It has to be. We're destroying our equipment on it. If any of you come uh, the, by the that area, it's that's just one. The whole driveway looks like that. So every time the apparatus comes in, we're going in potholes in our own driveway. It's it really has to be um, 
Zaja Beth came up to look at it and, and thankfully she put it in her, her request because it's, it's something that just has to be, has to be worked on. Everything else was prioritized. Obviously there's in that report, there were millions of dollars worth of, of um, renovations that were needed. We weren't expecting that that's going to happen every year. So I think the plan was that you piece me, we do a little bit every, as much as we can. Um, we have to bring our buildings up to date. They're all old buildings that have never been renovated before. Um, unfortunately it, if we're going to keep the buildings, we we need to keep them. Um, go ahead, Councilman. And and Chief, when we started started that study in 2015, um, we I remember with Mr. Lapore, we had to start off with some with a lot of the roof work and some and reinforcement structural repairs we had to make. So right, you had to fix the outside, which yeah. we have taken care of. All the firehouse, all the roofs of the firehouses have been done, um, which is great. It sealed the buildings up. Um, cause obviously, um, the, the gray picture was water damage, uh, that, that never got repaired from a bad roof. So, so you can't fix the, the inside until the outside is all sealed up. So we're, we're ready to go with some of the other things. Um, so again, we're hoping you'll consider that. Anybody have any other questions for me? We'll have Thank questions you. at the end of okay. the presentation. Okay. So sure. Thank you. So when I asked the directors for these pictures to help us go through this budget, uh, there is an eight page report from the fire chief explaining in detail all the things he just talked about. So I'll share that with you. Uh, these are outdoor facility improvements. If director Kehoe could join us, he can explain uh, the proposed plans for, for some of our outdoor facilities. Thanks. Good evening, everyone. Uh, on the left-hand side there, you see uh, an aerial photo of what Lafayette Park on the corner of Main and Park Avenue looks like now. Um, it is uh, a baseball field that is totally unused by any of our baseball or softball programs, and it's basically turned into a glorified lot with, with no activities aside from uh, people running their dogs through there. So uh, what we're proposing here is to um, solve two problems with, at, at the same time. One, um, in our five-year playground kitty park renovations, it's Lafayette's turn to get their new playground equipment. So if you look at the second picture where the red blocks are, the top red block is the current parking lot that needs to be expanded because if you know anything about that neighborhood, it is extremely challenged in terms of parking. The lot is constantly overrun with illegally parked cars. And we're proposing that the kitty park be moved from its current location and that the new one be placed out on the ball field somewhere where you'll see number one and number two, would be the enlarged parking lot. So we would have a new kitty park and uh, a parking lot that would double its capacity. The other things on the field, on the other things on the field are the um, volleyball court and futsal court. Futsal is our hard court soccer, which are very popular activities um, among the Hispanic community, which populates a great portion of that area. So we're trying to not just upgrade a park, but we're trying to make it significant. We're trying to make it something that the neighborhood wants and is going to use on a regular basis because that baseball field is basically unused now. On the right-hand side, you see uh, two kitty parks that we are in the process of uh, changing. We have a five-year plan for our kitty parks. We have um, Degnan, Liberty, and Boland, which are completed. Club and Minish, which are in various signs, sizes of uh, construction, and Stag and Lafayette. So we're proposing that the five-year plan continue and that Stag and Lafayette receive their upgrade of new playground equipment in 2023. The tennis court at West Orange High School slash Degnan Park. This is a complicated one. Uh, as of right now, this is the home court of the West Orange High School tennis team. They are using it for practice, but as you can see from the pictures there, 
it is unplayable for scholastic matches. It's also not in very good shape for people that want to play recreational tennis there. And it is the most used recreational tennis courts in the community. The project originally was to include a underground renovation, which was there to eliminate part of the underwater table that is causing a lot of this cracking and uh, decay in the, in the field, but uh, on the court rather, but the costs came back so prohibitive that we decided to scale the project back and just to upgrade the, the surface of the court as we usually do every five, six years. Uh, at a, so the project was originally $1.7 million and we're anticipating that with that scale back, it should come in less than a million. That is being proposed uh, and put out to bid uh, this month by the engineering, former engineering, well, current engineering director, Mr. Lepore. The bottom picture is a wooden pole that house, houses the lights for the Degden tennis courts. We wanted to upgrade the lighting there, but you cannot upgrade lighting on wooden poles. It's no longer permitted. So the wooden poles would have to be removed, replaced by metal poles. The standard lighting that's there now would be replaced by LED lighting. So there would be a considerable environmental uh, savings there. So those are the things that we're looking to do. It's not a lot. Um, what you see here is, is a project from 2022, which we're hoping to get uh, you're backing on. Uh, the question came up about pickleball. Well, tennis and pickleball right now are conflicting interests. The tennis players want to use all the tennis courts for themselves, and the pickleball people want all the courts for themselves, and we only got so many courts to go around. So four pickleball courts could be fit in the bottom of the new library's parking lot, and the question arose, well, isn't the popping of the pickleball going to make noise for the people in the library? Well, as you can see from that picture, you cannot hear the pickleball courts in that library. It is quite a distance away. So we're hoping we can get that project done. The other two projects on the right-hand side are also 2022 capital budget projects that are kind of stuck, stuck in neutral. That is the futsal court at Colgate Park. It has the same problems with the surface that um, the tennis courts at uh, the high school have, just old, beat up, peeling, cracking. So we're trying to get that project uh, moving as well. I believe that brings us up to date. If there's any questions, I'll be glad to answer them or you do it at the end. At the end. Well, these are, these are, these are just the pictures of of what old kitty parks look like with the old wood chips and things like that uh, at Lafayette and at Stag. And the new kitty parks th that was in your packets, guys, they all got the poured surface and brand new equipment. And that's all part of the, that, 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 that Degden is what the new, the new ones look like. That's a green and blue surface. On Bolin and Liberty, we went for more of a standard brown surface, but those are poured surfaces. That is the current standard. So the idea is to make all of our kitty parks look that way. You want me to do this one too? Okay. Okay, what do we got first there? The Ginny Dunkel pool has a flat roof that covers the men's locker room, the women's locker room and the snack bar. It is in terrible condition. It's not just the roof, it's the wood supports that are supporting the roof and it really needs to be repaired. Uh, the Cat Civic Center in your center photo was a beautiful state of the art when it was first built and now it's starting to show its age. There's peeling on the walls, there's electrical problems inside. There's a lot of pictures there you'll see of broken masonry work in and around the entrance and Toby Katz needs a lot of work. Toby Katz and the library are included in requests that you're going to see as part of the projects that Louis Reynolds is coordinating through um, DPW. 
All right. There we go. I think we're caught up. Outdoor facilities. That's the 550 is the two kitty parks. Yep. And okay. excuse me, Mr. Keogh, the uh that picture was the new building, not the building that needs I know. Repair. Yeah, yeah that, that's the, that's the that's I just the want the office. public to know. Yeah, it's the pool office. The buildings that are that are the original ones from 1965 that are at the other end of the building, with probably the same roofs from 1965. Uh, these are our pool motors. Um, in, in the pool, you have two uh, pumps that work the filtration systems. And um, uh, you can see from the top picture, uh, they're on their, uh, they're both on their deathbed. And these are already the backups. So if we don't have new ones in the closet and the backups go during the pool season, we're looking at a five to six week shutdown of the pool. So we need to have those two motors. Okay. Here's our kitty parks again. Stag, stag kitty park, which we're gonna do, redo. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Also, we talked about pickleball and how it is so popular. A lot of our courts, what we're doing now is restriping so that everyone can play either pickleball or tennis, depending on what they what their preference is. Town Hall Fire Safety Improvements. John? Yeah, these, these are various uh, improvements that require some of it is, is um, in terms of um, fire controls, uh, particularly of concern is the second the second floor or the top floor of the building, uh, which does not have alternate escape routes. Mm -hmm. So we, we need to make some improvements up there that will at least help with with uh, with that situation, with at least our early alarms um, and, and whatever other um, physical changes that the, the fire department or the, the fire officials recommend for us to do. Projective gear. This is also in the packet that I will send from the fire chief. The, um, if I may, well, right. So we know that our protective gear lasts for ten years, and it does need to be replaced. Sure. So um, the NFPA that I mentioned before um, tells us that we need to go by manufacturers' um, recommendations, and all gear recommends 10 years and your, your end of service life and you can't use the gear anymore. So that means that we have 88 firefighters. You can do the math how often we need to replace them. In addition, every time we hire, obviously we have to buy new gear. At the end of this year, we're going to be down likely 10 firefighter positions. Each set of the ensemble runs about $5,000 minimum. So we can do the math we replace probably 10 sets and we're hiring probably 10. So that's 20 sets at $5,000. We're asking for $50,000 this year. It's something that we ask for every year because it's an ongoing, we can't do our job without Turner. It's not, as I said to the mayor, this is really isn't a, isn't a want, it's a need. Uh, if we're going to continue to operate. We need gear for our, our people and we can't have them when they're, when their gear is over 10 years, we have to replace it. Um, so that's basically it. Yeah, exactly. And the mayor saw actually, you know, what happens. Now, some of the, quite frankly, you may look at gear that's 10 years old and say, well, it's not, you know, real tattered or anything, but, but we, it doesn't matter. We can't, the manufacturer says it degrades. If something happened, we'd have a problem. So we have to replace it. And again, we're probably going to spend a little more. We did, we got a grant uh, last year from the, the American Rescue Plan through New Jersey. Uh, we received $35,000. That's spent already. We already bought last year. Uh, we applied again because apparently there's still money. The state still has money. Don't know if we're going to get that. Um, but this is, we have to prepare. So that's why we asked. Thank you. Mr. Gross, you can talk about the various departments and the needs there for office equipment. Yeah, the um, the computers that you see on the right-hand side, they're special uh, computers for the uh, police department. Uh, they're they're called forensic uh, computers, and they have they're very high power and and have um, uses that allow the police department to dig deeper into um, different types of cybercrime as well as um, uh, just their normal use 
for for uh, other other crime fighting activities. Um, but these are these were are three brand new. That's the seventeen five, and then there's fifty thousand dollars for um, basically um, portable air conditioning units. Um, we have large office buildings, and we when the um, have a problem with HVAC, oftentimes uh, we end up having whole buildings uh, where the heat goes up and we, in order to keep from having to close the building, we have to find ways to keep them a certain level of, of uh, cool so that we don't have to send employees home. Um, we've looked at these and we believe that it would be good for us to have in, in terms of um, our arsenal to fight to fight in an emergency circumstance, keep keep the, the township's operation running to have these in our uh, possession to use. So one of the pages that you have are reallocated funds that were not used in previous years. Uh, there's one million five hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars. We'd like to carry over, transfer over uh, to, uh, to this capital budget. 2024 budget impact is 399,893 cost of new debt or $1.93 per month for a property owner assessed at 300,000. And Mr. Gross, this is our 10 year capital analysis. That's a slide from last year's. I think this is probably the near the end of this year's slides. Um, this is was prepared previously, and it it it, it shows um, a, a good breakdown um, of of where we're spending our money. And you'll see that that there's in terms of our debt, we have a significant amount of debt in what I'll, what I call um, you know temporary status. We're we're basically holding properties until we we can once we can divest of them. Uh, or find alternate financing for them, we'll be able to pay down a, a, a large portion of the debt. Um, and then some of, some of the debt is actually, uh, you'll see from this chart, is um, income producing, you know, by, by, by acquiring the properties, we ended up uh, able to get, provide revenues um, that offset taxes. Thank you for your consideration. So there is also another, not tonight in an effort to save time, there is also another presentation. Council President had asked for uh, projects that are completed, projects that are underway. So I can share that with you as well. Okay, any questions? I thought it was important to have the directors here directly. They're intimately involved with their budget and they would be able to answer your questions. Thank you. So I'm sure there are questions regarding this presentation. I would like to uh, ask my council colleagues at this time, since our directors are here, as is our as is our mayor, um, if there are questions, preliminary questions, or if you go ahead, Councilwoman Gabriel Michael. I have a question for our fire chief. In your presentation for the in uh, indoor facility improvements, on the slide it indicated a uh, two million dollars. For the improvements, um, but on the sheet it shows one point two about one one point two million. So, what I was wondering what what is the exact total? Unless so, I rather it. than and and I'm sure that Mr. Gross is fine with. I I can provide. I can scan the the the. Um, uh, I think the question is you you're looking there was a. A figure that you thought was yeah. a discrepancy. There's a discrepancy. I think, that just, I think there are there are certain slides that were were combined. Might have had a picture of 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 the firehouses, but it, it wasn't necessarily just for the firehouses. Uh, but the, the one point two is is what we're recommending for this year. We've been doing six hundred thousand, um, so that is actually twice the amount what we have been doing traditionally. Okay, so it's not two million. No. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. That's okay. I have a question for for you, Chief, as well. Uh, you showed some ceiling damage in one of the firehouses, and um, I understand that there are others that have similar water damage. Uh, sure. Do we have mold? Um, not that I, I'm aware of, but as you know, you, you take walls down. I, I'm, you know, I'm not sure of that. So that and that hasn't I don't, been I don't believe so. Yeah. No one's ever said 
you know, there have, there's been patchwork that's been done. No one's ever said, oh, there's black the mold studies, there. The studies so, that we have so. did not indicate that. Yeah. All right. And then um, that, that was it for, for you, okay. Chief. Thank you. Um, Just so you know, Councilman, the, the, the pictures I, I sent were, I could send you hundreds of pictures and the mayor asked, here's some pictures to, for, to illustrate what, so I kind of walked around and snapped pictures like that. So um, that's, those were the pictures. Chief, Again, I, I, I if anybody wants to come and visit, I'll be more than happy to give you an eye. We tried to have a tour. <laughs> I'd like to say that I've toured the firehouse, and I think the Piggly Holiday that you yeah. offered are much nicer than what I saw. Okay, you got, you got so I am. I, I understand. I'm in full support. Of That's why I say come, come visit. Your renovation. Thank you. Um, Chief Vecchio, before you go back to your seat, I just wanted for the um, edification of the public, could you explain what a pumping station does? Uh, that would be. Oh, that would be. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I can so, kind of give you a very. Yeah, sure. Whoever it doesn't. Pumps the, yeah. Pumps the poop. <laughs> yeah. Pumps the poop. Yeah. Is that a good way to say it? Yeah. So uh, that's I. That's what it does. And where are they located? There are multiple ones around the town. There's not just one pump station. Yeah. There's twelve. There's twelve. All right. You showed us two. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. This one's for Mr. Gross. Um, so this year, I don't see, because again, just for my newer colleagues, we've been working with five-year strategic plans for each department. And this year, I do not see anything for the police department or maybe uh, uh, Chief there, Abbott. There was a, a lot of, if you- I know we've done a lot past last year. To year be, last year's capital we did in December. Um, so they're still working off in significant projects on that. So okay. they were, we, I, we, we sat down with the, the chief uh, and his staff and determined the, there was, I think there's a couple of small things in this year's budget, but they were felt comfortable um, with what they had left over from the last budget and, and a couple of other things. Okay. All right. And then as far as the street improvements, we'll, Obviously, you have uh, request one, request two. If we do both requests, this will keep you all current with all like that. I know we had created well, a it backlog. It won't catch us up, but it but it, but it is certainly certainly um, we if, if if both are approved um, towards the end of this year and then early spring, we'll have a lot of work going on in the town. And then just, uh, I just need to wrap my head around. So you, at the last slide, additional dollar ninety three. So the capital, um, not the capital, the our OE budget, operating expense budget that we passed that already has the down payment for the bond and the payment for these projects plus an additional dollar ninety three for household. No, the the, that, the number that, that you see up there is a projection of of the impact of adopting these uh, two uh, priority recommendations from the mayor. What the impact will be on the twenty twenty four budget? Oh, that's right, that's right, because it's another year, right? Because away. we don't we we will. But the twenty twenty for budget OE, it's already the down payment is already calculated in the budget we passed. The already. 2023 OE for capital improvement fund was already approved. Okay. And that's what you need in order for this. It doesn't that whatever you raise. Yeah, this goes to 2024. This the debt goes to 2020. Moves to 2024. Okay. Got it. And then I had one additional question regarding the tennis courts and the shared cost with the school since the schools use that for their practice facility. And only they also own part of that tennis court. Yeah, I'm just wondering what was in the school. Yeah, yeah. But you give me the question again, please. Absolutely, certainly. The tennis courts at um, Degman Park, yes. since that is utilized by the schools, I'm just wondering how that cost is shared between the schools and the township, or is it? It is not. And why is it not? It has traditionally been the responsibility of the township to maintain those courts. Is there a rationale for that? I guess you have to ask yourself that question. 
Um, so just, what is the Can you talk a little bit about the usage of the courts? Is, yeah. it, split, is I, it split 50 50? Is it 75 25? No, no. the, the community uses those courts probably 80% of the time. The tennis teams, there's one tennis team there in the, in the spring, one in the, one in the fall. You know, we do our tennis lesson program there, open recreation all the time. So the rationale, in all seriousness, was that the township uses the facility to a much greater degree than the high school does. Thank you. Councilwoman? Yeah, it saddens me to see those courts in such condition because I played tennis in high school and I was on the teams and I managed the team. So I'm happy that we're we're doing this. But yeah. I do have a question for you uh -huh. about the five uh your kitty park plan. Yes. Um, well, I know that's important and we're doing these upgrades for the kids. And my question to you and you and I have talked about this um, offline is our town is in desperate need of turf fields for our very large sports community. Yes. Um, it's disheartening to know that West Orange, which is so large, the fourth largest municipality in Essex County and centrally located only has one soccer turf field in which you have 10 year olds that practice at, from 7 45 in the evening until 9 p.m because they have to share it with the other sports teams as well as the high school team which takes precedence um my question to you is because i've had constituents reach out to me regarding a uh, turf field is when is west orange going to get a uh, multi-use turf field where it's soccer and um, baseball and football because we have the space at stag and o'connor um and i think that's that's something that's well really i i don't i don't know and, that, and then i just want to preface for the yeah, community yeah verona is a teeny tiny town in essex county and they have three turf fields and they're a major sports community and i really feel like that's that's missing. well we, we to be in fairness we do have three turf fields yeah. we have a turf baseball field we have a turf football stadium and a turf soccer field which also hosts soccer, soccer right? and lacrosse they, they they you know we all share it um between the youth organizations pal mountaintop the recreation programs the board of ed my assistant edwin johnson does an amazing job uh fitting everyone in and trying to meet everyone's needs if you're asking me, would I support uh, additional turf fields? Of course, I would love it. Um, we have some preliminary plans that we looked at for O'Connor, which we think works better than Stag because of the parking limitations at, at Stag. Um, but we're looking at a big, big number here, guys. And you know, Can if you tell it, the community what that number is, just so people know, and if any of the constituents was, who asked me are on million when we went, it's way around. more than four yeah. now. It's probably I, if anyone's listening, I want them to know because yeah. that those are the calls that I get. And 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 the the other the other part of uh, of the equation is, if you can't light it, you don't turf it, because there's no sense Waste of money. turfing it and then losing three hours every night. So. Now you get into the situation where the LED lighting is much more efficient and much more direct than it used to be. So that if we do decide to do this at O'Connor or somewhere else, we were gonna to have to sell that angle of it, that the lighting is not gonna be intrusive to the neighbors, which the old traditional lighting is. Got it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Appreciate the information. Any additional? Uh, as far as the number, it's, at this point, it's probably five and a half. Thank you. Say, yeah. I'll be sure to let them know. <laughs> <laughs> Is Any there anything else for me while I'm up here? I think that's it. Thank you, Mr. Kehoe. You're welcome. I want to thank um, the mayor. I still had a couple of questions. Yeah, sure. I wasn't done earlier. No, um, no it's for uh, Mr. Gross. Thanks, Mr. Kehoe. Uh, Mr. Gross, you showed the dollar ninety three on the three hundred thousand dollar assessed home. Um, I'm assuming that is just in 2024. Or are you saying that's a dollar ninety three per year going forward for that size home? Be dollar ninety three per year for that size home until the debt's paid off. Yeah. So that so so those bonds that you're talking about there are all long term bonds. Yes. Okay. Second question I have: um, What is the cost of the futsal courts that are listed in the capital budget this year? Mr. Keogh, you might want to stay for that. Mr. Keogh is right here. He's right. Oh, I'm sorry. That's what he was looking. Bill, you want to address that? Yeah. 
some of what Mr. Kidd talked about was has already been funded. Yeah. Um, I think part of part of the renovations that are required at Colgate have been funded, but at a at a number that just will not allow the project to move forward. So we have a problem there. Um, as far as Lafayette, um, if you there's a project summary on that where um, excluding the Kitty Park because that's part of the five year plan to upgrade Lafayette with a futsal court and everything else, uh, that's one sixty. 160,000. And do you know about how much of that is for the futsal court? Uh, no, because we, we, we only have preliminary numbers. We, right. we got to put a, we got to put a volleyball court in there. We also want to see if we could maybe put a dog run in there so that the people still have that option. So we got a couple, couple good thoughts in mind there, but I think 160 does it. And uh, Mr. Gross and possibly you, Mr. Keo, you just said that, the one at Colgate is is funded. Can you explain that, or partially funded? It's partially funded. There was there was previous monies allotted for it. Um, a lot of them went to fence repairs and net repairs. That court has is right on the backyard of people's houses, and there's really high nets there, and they're constantly in terms of repair. So the sixty thousand dollars is what's left, but but we want to we want to really fix them right. You know we've been band aiding it. So that's that's our idea for the Colgate Futsal Court. Thank you, Mr. Keel. Mr. Gross, can you tell us why we didn't um, sign the donation acceptance form from the New Jersey Red Bulls when they were willing to build these futsal courts for free? I can't speak to that. I, I I never met with them, so I don't know. But you did receive the email with the form, you and former Mayor Parisi. My, that... my recollection is, is that we were trying to set up a meeting, but that never happened. So. Now, that's not my recollection. And this is this is what um, is difficult for me with those particular projects. They certainly serve a valuable, um, they provide a valuable amenity for the community. They are needed. And we had an opportunity to get them for free and we did not take advantage of it. And now we're asking taxpayers to come back and spend a hundred or $200,000 on futsal courts when we could have had twice as many or more done with someone else's money. That, that is a problem for me. I, 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 it, it just leaves a bitter taste in my mouth that, that we would ever do something like that. And, and if we'd have brought it up at that time, I, know I brought it up at that time. I brought it up at that time. Um, all right. So that, that's it. I, I wanted just to put on the record that we had an opportunity to get five football courts done for free by the New Jersey Red Bulls including support for our high school soccer team and our after-school soccer program. Why didn't the rest of us and hear about it? And we walked away from it. Why didn't we hear about it? We never heard about it. Councilwoman, there's no way in the world you didn't hear about it. I spoke about it all last year. I spoke about it at the you time. You did bring a plan before the council. I did bring it before the council, and I sent it to the mayor. I did all of the work. I, I, we're not going to debate it because this is going to be another two a.m. We are debate it because we did not. I did not see a plan. This is the first I'm hearing that this was all going to okay, be. That the thing absolutely I not true. That was if that came in, there was major stipulations of other towns coming to use the fields as well. That's the only thing I heard of it, and it never came to fruition. So, so you did hear of it. This is not the vaguely, first you heard of it. Oh, vaguely, vaguely, but not vaguely. in this okay. body, in this council, okay. where it should have been properly vetted. Okay. Whatever your particular uh, desire is to present it. What is disappointing is that we had an opportunity to get them done. There is no debate, no ambiguity about the donation. Um, and now we're sitting here going to add money to the capital budget to do something that could have been done for free. Mr. Keogh, thank you, Council you, President. Can you uh, add to the conversation of what the, uh, the only, the only thing to the I ever state? heard of it was that the Red Bulls were interested in doing it. And my recollection was all the properties that they designated were Board of Education yes. properties, not municipal properties. So there, ergo, they really, Which coming no to us was, was was not gonna work because you had to go, we can't, we can't dictate to the Board of Education what to put on their properties. Col uh, Colgate Park was one of the sites that we did a site visit for with the New Jersey Red Bulls to put a futsal court That'd there. be great. And the only thing we had to do I'm was sure the electricity. My understanding, when you say we, the, the administration 
was Mr. Gross, you were on those emails. You you I was not on any any site visit. No, you were not on the site visit. And as far as I know, the president, president was on the site visit. And we did all of the work ahead of time because every time I tried to present something in the prior two years, didn't have the support, it would get knocked down or ignored. So we did all of the work and got to the point where they were ready to make the donation. And all we had to do was sign the form to receive the donation. And we did not. Why and I asked you about it several times. Pursue it? I don't know why the school board didn't pursue it, but I but I do know that it is very interesting. So this 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 conversation indicates to me that it is indeed politics that got in the way of taking a million dollar donation and doing work that we could have done. And, and the public should be upset about it because we're, we're now we're coming back to this capital budget, which presents as 11 million, uh, which is really 17 million because 6 million has already been approved. We're adding 11 million to the 6 million we've already done. After raising property taxes by 5.8%, raising sewer fees, considering a gas-powered uh, leaf blower ban, and not knowing exactly how much we're going to get in revenue from the biggest potential projects we have in town. So we're, we know we're going to add to the expense side. We don't know where the money is coming from, and that is a challenge. That's something that we should all be concerned about. Um, and I'm disappointed that we would even have the back and forth and pretend like that wasn't a real opportunity because it was. Yeah, I'm disappointed too. I'm glad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So can we, um, I think, are there any other questions regarding the capital budget? Is that complete your questions and statements? Councilman? I'm going to complete my questions. Okay. Thank you. So there are no being no other questions. I want to again, thank the mayor and the directors for coming in to present an overview of the capital uh, budget presentation. And at this time, we will go into, if we can, um, what I'd like to do is amend the agenda. We have some topics that are very, very uh, important to the public, not only the gas leaf blower ban, but some other agenda items. The emails and phone calls that we've all received indicate that the public has strong opinions and want to be heard. So with that, um, I would like to go on to our ordinance for second reading for the gas blower ban and take comments for those. And then we will have an opportunity to debate and perhaps vote on that um, before the public um, goes home, goes to sleep, just disengages. Um, I just think this is extremely important to the public. Financially, it will impact every single resident and I think it's only fair that the residents uh, be able to hear our discussion and debate. So with that, Madam Clerk. So you're going to so have public comments. Second. Yeah, I, no, yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Let's, we have to have public comments. We have consent agenda yeah. minutes. So I, I am, I'm not opposed to us having public comment, but what I do know is that these are hot topic items. So the only thing we're doing is just hearing one ordinance and we're going to hear a public comment on that ordinance, but I would love the public to be able to hear our deliberation. And if you don't think the public is entitled to hear our debate, um, that's fine. Um, but that's my recommendation. Council President, it's not that I, you know, I can't speak for anyone else, thinks that the public doesn't deserve to hear the debate. I think they do. I think there are some there's some low hanging fruit that has that we can take advantage of and 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 get done. Even if you wanted to take the ordin that one particular ordinance before we did resolutions, at least let's get through the the you know the administerial business, you know the consent agenda, the approval of the minutes, um, and the bills. I agree. So my recommendation is that we take the hot bot button items first. If you would like to make a, a motion to suggest that the public isn't entitled to hear what's going to impact them, um, that's more than did, your did you not hear what I just said? Maybe I wasn't clear. No, I was clear on how I wanted. So if you would like to do something different, I'm suggesting that you make a motion to do so. Again, again, just procedurally, the council president has a right to set and change the agenda. Unless the council president is overruled, then taking taking it out of order and doing second reading or the ordinance on the leaf blowers can go forward. 
and, and you'll have the public hearing and then the council can vote. But, we, but the council has a right to. If the council wants to open the rule, the council president call for the vote. You can, you can make a motion. Mm -hmm. so they have to make a motion. Somebody has to make a motion. You've got a, a, a gallery full of people here. I assume they're here to make some level of comment. I know some of them are here for uh, the gas-powered leaf blowers, but we have no way of knowing what the fullness of this out, outpouring is. Councilman, make a motion if you would like to defer no, from my recommendation. To to normal, uh, if you would like to do that, then make a motion to do so. My recommendation is that we do the leaf blower on second hearing. If you would like to change the net, the order that is on our published agenda, I think it would require a motion from you. I don't want to change. It doesn't. Council President fixes the agenda. If, if the council wants to overrule her, then you can make a motion to overrule the council president. So we are going, so your recommendation is that we not follow the published agenda and go straight to the second reading for the gas blowers. My recommendation is that we go to second reading for the gas blower ban. That is why we have a room full of people here for the second meeting in a row. And if there is something that you would like to do different, please do so by making a motion. Yeah, I, I offer a motion that we handle items one, uh, items two through eight on our agenda before going to uh, second reading for the gas power blowers. Is there a second? I'll second. It's been properly moved and second that we go items two through eight on the agenda before going to uh, second hearing, reading on the hearing for gas. I just want to look at whether it's a majority or a super majority. So, did you, did you two through eight, two through eight. I don't have any names pulled up. No. Just two. Yeah. It's okay. I, I'll rescind the motion. You you want to, Council President, want to go to second reading for Thank the you. evidence? God bless you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Madam Clerk, I would like to move to the ordinance on second and final reading for the gas leaf blower plan. Okay. 2017-23, an ordinance amending chapter 17, section 14 of the revised general ordinances of the Township of West Orange, gas leaf blowers. Is there a motion to introduce on second and final reading? So moved. Second. Okay. Then properly moved and second that we go on to Second and final. I have to do a roll call. Okay, sorry. Councilwoman Casalino? No. Councilwoman Geber Michael? Yes. Councilman Rutherford? No. Councilwoman Scarpa? No. Council President Williams? Yes. The motion uh, does not pass. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So the ordinance the, is defeated. The, the ordinance is defeated. Yes. The no, motion. No. 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 Yeah. You didn't approve it being introduced. No, no, no. So that was a misunderstanding. I thought we were voting to have that heard now. now. No. That you was my understanding your too. motion to overrule the council president. So therefore, the council president's um, direction that we're going to do second reading, including public comment on leaf blowers, would be now, except you just voted it down. And no. So no. clear my understanding of that. <laughs> <It did. laughs> my understanding was that we she made the motion so we could hear it now. Okay, so I, so then, then I misunderstood that was what, my what the vote. Okay. Okay. Just so directed her to hear it. Did state your motion to overrule the council president? You can. No, I want to give a I I I don't want to record a, a no vote to introduce on first reading. Period. This is second reading. Second read. Whatever. I don't want to introduce that. What I was voting on whether we would do it now out of the normal order, or if we would do it uh, when it would normally come up. That's what I thought we were voting on. Oh. Because I said and that's in, what I thought. Too. Well, I misunderstood you. All right, but I okay. clearly said, is there a motion to introduce on second and final reading? So I misunderstood what okay. that meant. So where do we go so from here? Just do so the that... vote again. Do the vote again. As Mulligan. Introducing <laughs> the purpose of having a public. So Mulligan. Okay, we, this is a vote to introduce on second and final reading. Councilwoman Casalino? No. Councilwoman Geber Michael? Yes. Councilman Rutherford? Yes. Councilwoman Scarpa? Yes. Council President Williams. Yes. Okay. Now's the time is, for now, hearing. Correct. It has been. Now we would like to uh, have people, members from the public. We will first begin with members who are in council chambers. Um, just 
to advise everyone. Um, and you have five minutes for your public comment. When you approach the podium, please indicate your name and address. Um, please remember in all matters not provided for in subsection 315.1, and accept under consent of the council president, each person addressing the council pursuant to this subsection shall be required to limit their comments to the five minutes and shall at no time engage in any personally offensive or abusive remarks. The chair shall call any speaker to order who violates any provision of this rule. Um, so, Catherine, just to clarify, there will be a normal public comment later in the evening. This is only on the ordinance. Yeah, only on the standing of Thank you. So, if there's anyone in council chambers for public comment, please come forward, sir. In the room. On, on the ordinance, yes, on the sir. In the in the back. Okay, sir. In the back. Thank you. Uh, members of the council and sorry, could you please man. speak into the mic? Oh. I can't lift the mic. Thank you. Um, um, my name is Dr. Hal Strelnick. I'm a resident of Montclair. I am a professor of family and social medicine and of epidemiology and population health at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine in the Bronx. And for uh, a decade, I was the principal investigator for a grant from the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences, um, part of the National Institutes of Health, that uh, studied the relationship of adult and childhood asthma with both stationary and mobile sources of air pollution. I wish to speak about the health effects of gas-powered leaf blowers. As many of us are working from home since the beginning of the pandemic, we can hear these machines uh, are deafening, but they are also invisibly toxic. One, gas-powered leaf blowers pose a strong threat to community health because of their emissions. Leaf blowers generate copious amounts of fine and ultra-fine particulate matter, this is types of carbon, both through their exhaust and the dust blown into the air, which can linger for days. Because their two-stroke engines run on a combination of gasoline and oil, Leaf blowers produce an especially toxic exhaust, including large, large amounts of unburned fuel, carbon monoxide, cancer-causing hydrocarbons, such as benzene, and asthma-inducing ozone and nitrous oxides, and asthma-aggravating fine particulate matter. Independent laboratories have measured the air pollution generated by two-stroke engines and found their hydrocarbons, nitrous oxides, and carbon monoxides dramatically exceed regulated cars and pickup trucks. California air quality officials estimated that in 2020, leaf blowers and other small two-stroke engines produced more hydro hydrocarbon-based ozone pollution than all the passenger cars in the state. The California scientists estimated that an hour of using a gas leaf blower makes as much pollution as driving a 2016 Edmonds, the automotive comparison company, conducted a test in a local AAA emissions lab in Diamond Bar, California, between a 2011 F Ford F-150 Raptor crew cab with double seats, pickup truck, and an Echo PB500T two-stroke leaf blower, a backpack style mid-range model that many comparable uh, um, 
landscape companies use. The re result, and this is a direct quote, the two stroke leaf blower was worse generating 23 times the carbon monoxide and nearly 300 times more non-methane hydrocarbons than the crew cab pickup truck. Let's put this in perspective to equal the hydrocarbon emissions of about a half an hour of yard work. With this two-stroke leaf blower, you'd have to drive a Raptor pickup truck 3,887 miles, or the distance from Northern Texas to Anchorage, Alaska. This is a one of the larger pickup trucks. California began regulating gas powered leaf blowers in 2022 and will ban their sales in 2024. The smaller the particulate matter size, the farther into the lungs they penetrate, generating inflammation and exa exacerbating asthma and emphysema and potentially causing cancers. Your time is up. I thank you for your attention. I think you get the message. Thank you. Someone else in council chambers, public comment? Yes, sir. Good evening, council. Good evening. My name is Michael Javini. I'm 68 Mango Road here in West Orange. Also the owner of Javini Landscaping at 14 Columbia Street here in West Orange, where I've owned the landscape company here in town for uh, 37 years. Uh, speaking in respect to the uh, the gas blowers, uh, is without a doubt that this ban will, propose, uh, will pose adverse effects on the way we conduct our business, but also the quality and care that my customers are accustomed to. Spring and fall services are very time consuming and attempting to complete these extremely labor intense early and late season tasks in any similar quality with only the use of rakes, tarps, and no electric blower equipment will be unachievable within any reasonable cost, time frame, or my biggest concern, possibly at all. Without the use of any gas-powered blower, we will no longer have the ability to manage our current volume, thus resulting in the high probability of incomplete properties, unsatisfied clients, loss of business, and a poor look on our community. I can't understand how some can seem to be so concerned about the environment and yet promote and mandate the purchase and use of a product that is unproven and quite environmentally unfriendly. Let's look at the battery powered blowers themselves. Are you aware of the impact lithium ion mining has on the environment? In part, it requires tremendous volumes of energy and water, a natural resource, mind you, to extract from the earth, which in turn leads to air and water pollution of chemicals and heavy metals. It is also known to be a major contributor to the disruption of wildlife habitats, soil erosion, and significant long-term ecological damage. Even though some may falsely claim that lithium ion batteries are recyclable, the true fact is that they are not. This will result in thousands upon thousands of these batteries tossed in our trash and landfills. They have been factually proven to spontaneously combust, potentially leading to the loss of one's home, business, property, and worse, the loss of one's life. I would like to address some of the talking points you're hearing from some in support of the ban. I see a 2011 study source to show a leaf blower emits nearly 300 times the amount of air pollutants as a pickup truck. This is almost a 13 year old study. These products have come a long way over the past dozen years. The US has some of the most stringent emissions laws in the world, which all of these products and manufacturers need to adhere. If gas blowers were such a harm to humanity, how does the EPA allow their existence? It is said that leaf litter should be left in beds to decompose as mulch, naturally feed and create habit for beneficial insects. Leaf litter is bulkier than mulch. It will smother mulch plant material, generate fungal spores, which would lead to asthma, 
And yes, may create beneficial habitat for insects as well as many non-beneficial insects, mice and rats. Let me ask you, is this what you want surrounding the foundation of your home? It is also said that leaf blowers stir up harmful dust and ash, contribute to soil erosion, and that leaf matter should be mulched and left in place. Do you have any idea how much fine particle matter of dust is created by a mower constantly going over dry leaves and mulching them? It is far more than what a blower creates. One of the greatest combinations of soil erosion is uh, one of, I'm sorry, one of the greatest combatants of soil erosion is good healthy turf. Excessive leaf litter, whether it be mulched or not, will lead to thinning of turf, compromising its integrity, and ultimate leading to soil erosion. Last and not least, one that I take most personally, it is also said that business owners do not care about the safety of their employees and that the use of blowers cause lung disease, heart disease, hearing loss, asthma, and early death. <coughs> I don't know about you, but this is pretty bold statement when most of the items in your medicine cabinet state the same. The fact is that I and all employers care greatly for the safety of our employees. Without them, we are nothing. My employees have eye protection, hearing protection, masks, and the best equipment possible for them to do their job. It is incomprehensible to think that time removing is their equipment away may make their lives a safer place. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Pelosi. Joe Pelosi, Director of Public Works, West Orange. A um, little worried that if we end up getting be, to be part of this ban, okay, um, the taxpayers would suffer a great deal. Um, we're talking just to try to match up battery powered blowers to what we use as the gas powered blowers. You're talking like 700 you know, like a thousand dollars a unit and thirteen hundred dollars a battery when we run a gas powered blower for seven hundred. Right. Now you're gonna need multiple batteries to do what we do during leaf season. You're talking probably five batteries per backpack blower. These like what Mike was saying, these backpack blowers are heavier than the gas powered blowers. So these guys are gonna be carting around you know, these things that weigh much more. So the bottom line is with that stuff is you're going to need, and they don't work as efficiently. So you're going to need more of them, which means more manpower, which means more units. Then how are we charging the batteries? Are we going to be ecological and charge them at the garage where you plug them in? Then we have to run a truck up and down the hill to get the extra batteries? Or are we gonna set a generator on site or in one of the trucks and let that run with the gas powered generator? I think we're being a little hypocritical when it comes to that. You know, you know, even if you wanna talk about the noise, the, the, the decibels that they currently put out, there's only a, maybe a 15 decibel difference between the gas and the battery. Everybody, I don't know if everybody here, but when they first came out with cordless drills, you know, nine volt Makita lasted for a week. It was great. You had to go buy another battery, nice and quiet. Mm -hmm. Then they came out with the DeWalt's, the 12's, the 14's, the 18's, the 16's. And what did they do? They got more powerful. They got, they got louder. And that's what these blowers are gonna do. These, these first generation, second generation leaf blowers they're just going to get bigger and stronger and more powerful to keep up with the demand. You, the technology just isn't there yet. There isn't anybody in this room that wouldn't want to pick up their blower, throw a switch, and it come on. The, you wouldn't have to go to the repair shop as often. You wouldn't have to, you, you wouldn't dislocate your shoulder when you were starting it. It, it, it's a great thing, but it's just not ready. 
you're getting pushback because everybody's worried about raising their prices or, or in our case, the job we're doing. Tim is from the Board of Ed. He's here. They feel the same way. Like you're not going to be able to get your, your fields clean. You're going to extend the LEAF program another month. You know, we're not going to we're not going to be able to operate as fast as we can. You 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 know, like this, this, this is a big deal. And money wise, if to replace all our equipment one for one, and it's not going to be one for one because you're going to need more of these blowers than you do with the gas powered blowers. You're talking about one hundred and twenty thousand dollar capital layout just for backpack blowers with the batteries, with the spare batteries. You know how your cell phone charges when you buy a cell phone. Works great the first week, the second week. Then all of a sudden, you're not getting as much juice. You're not getting as much juice. The more you use it, you get less juice. Then you're constantly charging. The way we run them, they're going to be running constantly. So how how quick do you think the batteries are going to wear out then? You know, so you're going to be buying these $1,100, $1,200 batteries right and left. You're not going to be able to use the capital budget to hide behind. They're going to be operating. It's going to be an operating expense because you're going to be buying batteries through the whole leaf season. Or maybe you want us to rake the leaves off the lawns and everything like that. And then we'll just we'll just be there forever. So, it, you know, it, it, if you would not get any pushback if the technology was ready for this. The technology just isn't there yet. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Pillows. Yes. A lot of good points. A lot of good points. Vincent Militello, 182 East McClellan, Livingston, New Jersey. I operate a landscape company, Militello Landscaping. Uh, I just want to go over a couple of the same things. Technology is not there. You got a lot of good reputable landscapers here. There isn't any one of them that don't want to do the right thing green wise. You're taking our equipment away. We're not going out with hair dryers to go clean these lawns off. That that's basically what you're going to do to us. You got to understand. I know you went and visited Fred Small Engine a, a week or two ago, right? Did you find that the, the equipment he had was adequate to do the work? Was it the equivalent of gas power blowers? So okay. I'm just going to ask that you make your statement right, and not actually okay, engage okay, us in good, conversation. Good, Thank good. you. I just want to make him aware that that I know that he went and visited there. I also found out tonight for the first time I must be Superman because I've been around gas blowers since I was a teenager. I should be dead 10 years ago. <laughs> and if anyone wants to come and look at my hands, I work for a living. I don't just fling drive guys. I'm with them every single day. So, you know, if, if this is something about, you know, that these guys are all about money, it's not about the money. We want our customers to be happy. I've called dozens of my customers in West Orange. None of them even know about this. They're going to be very upset when they get our leaf cleanup bills. So take that into consideration. I had a woman call me tonight and say, you're going to go tonight, right? And I said, yeah, absolutely. Because we don't want to go get new blowers. That's why we hired you. That's why they voted you guys in here too, for their for them. Do this when the, the equipment is available to us. Don't do it now. Do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment in council chambers regarding this ordinance? Yes, please come forward. Great to be here. My name is Barbara White. I live at 51 Howell Drive. 51, uh, I'm sorry, what was 51 it? 51 Howell Drive. Thank you. Um, I almost don't need to say what I'm thinking. I want to refer almost directly to what the West Orange Environmental Commission has recommended. And I think it speaks so much to what you've already heard. Uh, none of us want to have medical issues if we can avoid them. Speaking of them. Sure. None of us want to have medical issues if we can avoid them. We all understand that. But I think at this point, there is not enough information on either side, both in terms of where the technology is going with um, battery powered equipment or gas powered as well. And that recommendation from the West Orange Environmental Commission, which basically says, let's wait until 2025 to see where the technology is going, to see where the New Jersey legislature ends up with all of this, to understand a little more of what this will all mean at the end of the day. 
I mean, clearly, I don't want to have my landscaping bills doubled. I know they could potentially do that. If it's in a good cause, then I would have no problem with it. But if we're being premature in terms of decisions, I think there is a need to step back and kind of assess what this means across all of the community at all time, both the landscapers, the individuals, and since this also impacts uh, residential folks who often have blowers themselves, is to recognize that these are not inexpensive. Um, I recently bought a very nice electric, well, sorry, battery one for one of my sons. He can tell you it doesn't work as well as he would like, but we're asking people who often struggle with getting basic equipment to take care of their homes to be in a position where in a relative near term, they're gonna be asked to make other financial decisions. So again, I'm urging the commission, to, urging the council to consider moving off of the 2025 requirement until more is known, until there's an opportunity for more of the citizens of this town to know what it might mean for them or not. I thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lee Sal. I'm with a group of people who are interested in Seniors United to get some of the programming that we've been waiting for. So Ms. LaSalle, this is public comment only for the gas blower band. If you could- The number of us that are here, we've waited patiently and I'm just starting it, okay? I Thank we, you. We, oh, we are here. But I'm, I, I'm, I apologize for interrupting you, but this is only for the gas blower ban at this time. We'll have public comment regarding other issues after we have settled this issue. So if you could just give us a few more minutes, we'll be able to hear you on other issues. Minutes have gone into hours. I understand, and I empathize with you, which is why we changed this, this issue um, to bring it forward in the beginning of the meeting. I apologize. Is there anyone else for public comment for the gas blower ban? And and so and. You 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 can only you, you can only speak once. One thing out, and that is that you can't come back. Ma'am, you can't come back. You can't you, come back. I'll we'll have one opportunity. Okay. okay. Someone else to speak. You can right. email us, ma'am. You can email. You can share your thoughts with someone else who does come up after you. Okay, sure. Someone else was coming to the podium regarding the guest blower ban. Thank you. My name is Richard Leonardis. I was here at the last meeting. And uh, some of the things that weren't said. Just your address, please. 1073 Pleasant Valley Way. Thank you. Vinny Militello over here who just spoke. He's the president of a very large uh, landscape organization. And we know that Montclair has this lawsuit going on. Matter of fact, I forwarded it to, yeah. to the council. And the, the, the vote is actually Thursday in Newark in federal court. So what I had suggested is that you don't vote tonight and you table it for another 30 days and see what this vote is. So let's just play out a scenario. Montclair's being sued. They're filing for a stay. Montclair has hired outside counsel. So I don't know what they're paying their counsel and now they're paying outside counsel. If they don't get the stay, they'll appeal. If, if, if they win, they're going to sue the town over the blower the lawyer's charging $325 and he's banking $325 as a hybrid case. And his, the game plan is to sue Montclair. If they win, he's going to turn around and sue Montclair now for his money back under this federal case. I don't know what that sounds like to you. That sounds like a half a million dollars to three quarters of a million dollars to me. Because if they lose, they got to pay the, they got to pay the landscaper's attorney back. Do we have that kind of money to throw away? I'm a taxpayer here. To me, that's crazy. Why are we rushing this thing through? Is there another agenda? I mean, it just doesn't make sense. We're, we're jamming this thing through. Whether we, that you've heard that there's no technology out there. I own a lawnmower shop. There is no technology out there right now. Nobody's saying they don't want to do it. Nobody's saying they don't want to do it now. They're saying we're not ready now. So if you want to have a compromise, why don't you allow the landscaper in June, July, and August, to use a backpack blower that uses a battery, right? So if he uses that blower for three months out of the year, which he can do, 
the, the backpack blower, a battery power blower is sufficient for that time of year. He needs his gas blower in spring and he needs it in fall. If he's doing commercial, he needs his rolling blower or his stand-on blower. They should be allowed to use that 12 months a year. They're not going to put a rolling blower on a 50 by 100 lot or, or, or needlessly use it. So to take that away from him is crazy. Why don't we compromise, give the landscaper what he needs, give the homeowners what they need, use a battery, put the battery powered ban in effect, June, July, and August for the next three years. And in three years, let's visit it again and see what the technology is. If the technology is there, then run with it. If it's not there, we revisit it again. His group is ready to file a lawsuit. He's already contacted the lawyer for Montclair, and they're ready to file a lawsuit on West Orange if this goes through. Now, I don't know what that sounds like to you, but to me, that sounds like, again, my taxes are going up. And there's three people on the board here that just seem to be running down this road to pass this, and I don't know why. Because well, let's see what happens in Montclair. If Montclair falls on their face and Montclair's dirty, so be it. That's Montclair's problem. Right. If they if if it works, then revisit it again. But I why are we jamming this through now? The difference between what you are on the same time now. No, no, you can't. No. Okay. no. So, so, Good so, try, guys. Good try. <laughs> so to me, to me, to, you're, you're going to hear from people that are going to say they can do it. The experience in this room and there's a lot of people in this room this week, last week, they have the experience. Vito Denti has 53 years in, in this. He, he talked to Montclair. They don't even listen to him. You're not talking to a, a kid that's started a business two or three years ago that has some ego equipment. They're talking about guys that are professional landscapers, and we're not listening to them. Our, our agenda is to jam this thing through, but maybe, maybe it's against the mayor. Maybe it's against uh, uh, whatever. Maybe it's political. I have no idea. But common sense is common sense, and common sense says – let Montclair try it and see what happens. So it's not our expense. Let's see what happens three days from now when, when the lawyer goes to federal court and see if this law gets turn, turned over or it doesn't. Why are we pushing a vote through tonight on second reading when we don't even have enough information to make a decision? So it, it, if the agenda is really for the people, and if you have a fiduciary responsibility to me as a homeowner, and your responsibility is to people, uh, to the people, don't waste my money on a lawsuit because my taxes are high enough in this town. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment regarding the gas blower ban in council chambers? Mr. Fagan, the Zoom audience, please. And how many are on the Zoom audience at this time? Okay, one moment. I'm sorry. I have one more person in council chambers. Amner De Leon. Um, I run a landscape company, all electric landscaping company out of Princeton, New Jersey. Um, <clears throat> my landscape company is designed. Pardon me? Your address for the record. Oh, my landscape company is um, an all green uh, company, including. Your address for the Oh, your address. 17 Pasadena Drive in Hamilton, New Jersey. Okay. 79. 17. 17 Pasadena Hamilton Drive. Drive. So I run a landscape company out of Princeton, New Jersey. That's all electric, um, including the truck, which is a Ford F-150 Lightning. And yes, I've heard a lot of those same concerns from fellow landscapers because I did a lot of consulting for landscapers for about 10 years. And one of the guys came to me that wanted to start a landscaping company. And I said, hey, listen, I'll invest if you go all electric. I wanted to test out this concept. Princeton has had the ban already for about four years. Now, the one thing that I can't wrap my hand head around in Princeton, what happened is we have a ban. You're supposed to be using the electric blowers. And you're supposed to be training your people to use these when the temporary ban's in place. And then you and then you go and spend more money on the gas blowers, right? <clears throat> so it's a double expense there. Um, in one year, I know that we can recoup all of our investment. Now, if we have a small company, yes, it's it's a lot less than I'm putting out. If I have a bigger company, obviously, I need to put out more money because I'm servicing more <clears throat> locations. So when I started the concept, it was an eco-friendly kind of like a Princeton only type of landscape company. 
um, because I guess we're special in Princeton, right? Mm -hmm. And and ended up turning out into being the low noise that clients loved because they work from home. But as it evolved, the concept evolved, and I already knew that the employees were actually inhaling all this and they're hearing, right? So their hearing goes, and I'm fortunate enough that I'm running everything electric. So I'm not just running blowers, I'm running lawn mowers. I'm, I'm running every single item on electric. Yes, the way that I actually like the way your approach is because you're going to be gradual, unlike Montclair, where it just went and just it was a one and done deal. So the gradual will allow everyone to ease into it. Now, I one of the misconceptions I hear is about charging. Um, I actually do test for one of the companies. Uh, I'm charging a char testing a charging system that should be out by the time that you're. Uh, ordinance goes into play. It can charge up to 96 batteries on a 110 charger. So you don't have to change the electric like I did at my house. I did at my house, I changed the electric because I needed to get batteries and the car. So I have more than 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 the average person did at that point. And now I'm testing that charger. And there's another company out there that I was reading the other day where you can use any charger that's going to be on 110 that is not going to be specific to like the company that I that I currently use. So there are a lot of uh, companies out there that have the equipment. It's just a matter of us getting into the habit of using it. I can tell you something that's happened in Montclair because Montclair has uh, given me a lot of business since the ban went into place. And some of my fellow landscapers have done some crazy things. Uh, average uh, hour charge to clean up was $55 and it went up to $155. Plus, we're telling the clients it's going to take three to four, five times more to do the same job. And it doesn't because I am currently running on that equipment. So what I did do for Montclair is I matched the prices that the landscapers had before. Um, obviously, I'm running out of capacity and I'm not saying that everyone needs to go into it all at once because I know the expense of uh, buying the equipment. So... The way that you're approaching this, I think, is sensible because you're going to ease into it. If it was a one and done, I would say, hey, you guys are crazy. Or if you were saying, hey, we need to go all electric, um, like eat, like <clears throat> blue sky, green earth, then I would say, hey, you guys are crazy because there are a lot of properties out there that need to be serviced. So your approach, I think, from when I got the call and I heard about what, what your approach is, I think it's a lot more sensible than some other Communities have done out there, including uh, when when uh, Montclair went to just two electric leaf blowers. You know, that was a little crazy. So I called some of the people on council afterwards and said, "Hey, listen, that's not realistic, and that's not going to help out." Um, so again, I urge you to just consider what you're doing, and I think you're on the right track. Um, I am running 100% electric, and if you have any questions, I do um, volunteer my company to help out and train. So um, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Fagan. Uh, did you got some more? Did you have public? Okay. Come on. Yes, come forward. Thank you. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jared Gavsey. I'm from EcoQuip. Um, we're out of West Nyack, New York. Um, I'm both a landscape contractor as well as an outdoor power equipment dealer that set up a shop that is 100% exclusive, all electric. We only sell battery operated equipment from basically the top brands that are out there. And I could tell you both from experience as well as our manufacturer research uh, over the transition that we did over the last four years to go pretty much full electric for almost everything that we're doing that while some of the points that have been brought up from the contracting community, I completely hear and understand. Um, there's so many positives that are not being addressed. Um, and the technology, as well as the fuel cell technology that is available to us, is absolutely ready for the transition. Um, we're, we're, no one's addressing the cost savings, the health benefits. Um, every backpack blower that you convert from gas to electric will save you on average about $1,000 a year as a contractor. Um, there are multiple ways to charge without having a gas generator, without plugging in your charger up against the, you know, your, your, your homeowner's house. And I'm not going to 
turn around and say that they are one for one efficient when it comes down to comparing it to their gas powered counterparts in this industry, but they're more than efficient enough to get through the job um, at about 85 to 90%. And there's also other means to address the leaf cleanup, both in the springtime as well as the fall time. Um, but the, the efficiency, the power that you can get out of an electric motor comparatively to a gas uh, counterpart is, is significant. It's instant torque, it's instant on, you're not starting anything. Um, the the, the two-stroke issue, generally speaking, for the small equipment that we use is the worst polluter that we have. And some of the uh, technical references that the doctor first put out are 100% accurate. I have very similar research studies, whether they're coming out of California or some of the more progressive states that we have. Uh, to address the concern of the lawsuit, while I, it would stink to get sued, um, I've been involved and work in over a dozen towns that have implemented gas power, uh, gas blower bans with zero issues. Um, I live and work mostly in northern Jersey and southern New York, so Westchester, Rocklands, northern Bergen County. Um, multiple towns have gone and transitioned without any threat of a lawsuit. Whether they get wind of what happened in Montclair and choose to change course, I don't know. Um, and I do understand that there is a, a, a financial burden initially being placed on the landscape contractor. As I said, I'm, I'm a contractor as well as a provider of this equipment. Um, and at the end of the day, the fuel savings, the maintenance savings, uh, some of the user savings, as well as the longevity of this equipment that we already have in service for four to five years, far outweighs the, the two-stroke engines when it comes down to how long they last and how much it takes to, to repair them. Um, and, and that ROI and the future investments into other larger cell technology that allows you to charge on the go, whether it be solar, converting to deep cell batteries to store that power, or uh, the various companies that are coming out. If you research, review, we do demos. I'm happy to lend these guys the equipment to show them that it works. Um, we're, we're not just forcing it down people's throats. We're, we're showing townships, municipalities, uh, co collegiate campuses, and landscape contractors with multi-day seven to 10, 14 day demo programs that transition their entire truck to electric and show them how it can be done at almost the same exact efficiency. And when you factor in the cost savings, the efficiency far outweighs um, the negatives. So um, really uh, not too many other things to add that everyone else has kind of touched on uh, in this subject. And I know how touchy it is because <laughs> this is probably our fifth or sixth council meeting that we've been to to, to, to speak and present on this similar subject. But um, in my opinion and the research, I believe supports it, the benefits far outweigh the negatives. So, Thank you. Uh, Hi, my name is Daria Paxton. I'm a resident of Southern Greenwood Avenue. I, I'm sorry, can you repeat? I said, my name is Daria Paxton. I am a resident at Southern Greenwood Avenue. I am also the owner of Gaia Gardens Landscaping. I want to mention a few things. First of all, Ms. Paxton, I'm sorry. We couldn't understand your street address. 7 Greenwood Avenue. Greenwood. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, if you want some some data from, from a group that is industry neutral and doesn't have a stake in the game, I highly suggest that you contact AGZA. That's the American Green Zone Alliance. They're a national organization. Their Northeast representative is Rich McCoy. He has a landscaping company and has been using solar power to power batteries. And AGZA completely does not support full bans on leaf blowers, unequivocally. You can talk about the, the efficiency uh, comparison between batteries and gas, but the tool that we need for fall cleanups in the Northeast is a ground blower and nobody makes an electric version of that. I have to reiterate that the number of tools that you need in order to replace gas powered blowers with battery powered blowers is in the multiple, which also means you need multiple people to operate them, which means you need multiple trucks. The batteries die after two years. So those batteries go in the garbage. There's currently no recycling program in New Jersey. They don't last forever. They, they take five hours to charge and discharge at best at this point, even still says that their, their best backpack battery blower, which is commercial, is uh, half as effective as a Red Max, which is a standard commercial. So you need two electric blowers for every backpack battery blower. Um, as far as Cameron DeLeon, I would like to point out that he started his company this year. 
as in 2023. And I would like to know what's ecological about driving from Hamilton to New Jersey to Montclair to do landscaping. The reason he got so much business and stole people's prices is because he doesn't know how to write an estimate. And he got Peter Iacobellis to get his, his customers through his position as the town counselor. So you can look into that yourself. But as a resident, I'm concerned about the health of our trees. They're not only they're not being replaced, and and this ban would only perpetuate disease cycles and damage the trees. People say just go back to the days before blowers, but that's when people got rid of their leaves in open burns, which is not legal and certainly not good for anyone's asthma. Uh, what also used to happen is that people would create compost piles and not have the energy to turn them, so there was a very large rodent population. As for the habitats, an ecological fact is that the biggest threat to habitats is not leaf blowers, it's the prevalence of deer eating our native species and spread the spread of invasive species, which largely happens because people don't take care of their properties and they let things spread from seed. West Orange has an opportunity to lead by example and actually use the tools first, rather than putting the owners on the businesses and squeezing the residents. You can go buy a few of these and try them out yourself. Um, in the meantime, if this passes, our taxpayers will be footing the bill for a lawsuit in this town because the Clean Air Act prohibits, prohibits anyone other than the federal government from regulating, regulating engines under 50 horsepower. And the pressure should be put on the manufacturers to focus, and, and the focus should be on teaching people how to use their yards differently so they can actually make the choices themselves. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Last call for council chambers, and then we're going to go to the Zoom audience. Yes, please come forward. Good evening. Joyce Rudin, Woodland Avenue. It's nice to see everybody in person. I'm a usual regular on the Zoom audience. Um, all of you probably got our myths and facts uh, sheet from our Green West Orange. And I just want to address a few of them tonight because much of this has been answered already by the eco landscapers that are here this evening. And I thank them so much for coming. Um, one myth is that we're making this transition too quickly, that we don't have enough time to do this. And this ordinance that is before you actually allows for a two and a half year transition time. And the, uh, the electric equipment is already available right now. So it's not like we have to wait for the equipment to be there. It's gonna, we have two and a half years to get up to speed to what the 150 other communities in our area already, al already are. Um, landscapers, by the way, do not observe geographical boundaries. If they're working in South Orange, Maplewood, or Montclair, they are already required to use electric blowers. And I guarantee you that most of the landscapers who are here have that equipment if they're working in other communities because they're not permitted to use it there. Every township around us is moving very quickly in the same direction that West Orange is. West Orange will only observe a summer ban, summer seasonal ban for the next two years. There's no reason to use any leaf blower in the summer. We don't have leaves. What are you blowing? The, there's another myth that the landscaping bill will go up. We've heard experts speak and say that they are charging the exact same price. So that is just simply a myth. If there are West Orange residents who are concerned about the price and their landscapers actually do raise their prices, our Green West Orange has a list of landscapers who will provide for you the same care that you're getting at lower prices. There's a myth that you can't mulch all of your leaves. Yes, you can. Mulching blades are on, on lawnmowers and they do the trick. Pulverized leaves decompose into fertilizer over the winter for your lawn. Mulching avoids bagging and hauling and leave and uh, hauling leaves to the curb. Finally, the last thing that I'm going to speak on tonight, because there'll be others who will pick up other topics, is that the myth that lithium batteries are not recyclable. These batteries are rechargeable and last a long time, but when they do stop holding a charge, Staples, Lowe's, Home Depot, Best Buy, American Royal Hardware in Montclair are among the retailers that accept lithium batteries. 
By the way, all of you have cell phones and laptops and tablets, and they all have lithium batteries. And most of the technological equipment that we use these days has lithium batteries. So the, the false cry that we are suddenly creating a huge market for lithium batteries is just false. We get it. Change is hard. It's hard for people who've been in the industry for a long time, but we need to slowly transition. It is necessary for the planet. Our planet is burning. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Sally Malanga, Ridge Road. I would like to call forth the October 4th, 2023 proclamation by Pope Francis. Francis implored all citizens to take action to protect the environment, quote, with the passage of time, I have realized that our responses have not been adequate while the world in which we live is collapsing and may be nearing the breaking point. Crisis and opportunity are the same. I'm calling upon my fellow West Orange residents and our landscapers, the proposed ban on gas powered blowers is inevitable. So where is the opportunity? You will be better off without these devices. Let's not even talk about the ear splitting noise and pollution or which is better, gas or electric. Let's talk about the business advantages of the opportunity at hand. Our Green West Orange members are calling for the abandonment of landscaping by brute force to be replaced by a collaboration with the processes of nature in which we rely on to survive. This is the cost effective way. Let's follow the example set by Westchester County, New York, one hour from here, similar population, trees and demographics. They are way ahead of us. They did not wait for the state of New York to take action and wow, have they benefited. Since 2010, landscapers, residents and the township has saved millions of dollars by simply this, leave the leaves. What they have learned is that leaves decompose into nutrient rich soil. Without them, we all must pay for fertilizer and mulch. Leaving the leaves is free. All your landscaper has to do is run over them with a the lawnmower and they will become small pieces that dissolve into the soil. No more struggling to pile them up, capture them, bag them and cart them away. Love them and leave them and on to the next client. I bet that will save landscapers 25%. So residents, start asking your landscaper to do it this month and give you a discount. Next season, there's no need for a spring cleanup using blowers. There's nothing to blow then, no charge. As to the cost savings for the township, it's enormous. As an example, since 2010, the townships of Dobbs Ferry, Scarsdale and New Rochelle, New York are saving between 100,000 and 800,000 annually in expenses related just for leaf and grass removal. By not blowing leaves into piles in the streets, we too could save our DPW labor, labor overtime, fuel, and trucking away piles of leaves. The workers can be redeployed to other important matters like park maintenance, and the savings can be used in so many other ways. Blowers, whether gas or electric, will be used sparingly. No more stinking like gasoline at the end of the day. No more driving around with extra gas tanks. This leave the leaves technique will help landscapers in the township avoid the possible liability of class action lawsuits for damaging the lungs, hearts, and hearing of township employees and landscape workers. This crisis will make you all better businessmen and women. As for residents, if you don't want to spend $200 on a small electric blower for your house, share one with your neighbor. I have one, it sits in my garage 360 days of the year. We use it just to touch up our walkways. The wind does the rest. And if you don't like leaves, I suggest another way of looking at them. Look up in the sky at the tree above you and have gratitude for its support of your life. For the roof over your head, 
the oxygen it provides you, the shade you are graced with, for the free mulch and fertilizer it rains down on you that supports the beneficial insects that provide your food supply. Gratitude will take away any of your anxiety about leaves. We are foolish if we don't learn from and take advantage of this crisis, both imagined and realized, and turn it into an opportunity for a win-win for residents, landscapers, and the township. Let's get moving now. There's money to be made with a strategy of leaving the leaves starting now. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Brent Draper, Scott, Nestro Road. Uh, I'll come tonight, um, having come to this council before on this and I can't believe we are still talking about it. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, Brent Draper, Scott, Nestro Road. I have spoken on this issue before and I'm speaking in favor of the ban. Um, I am one who a few years ago transitioned from a gas powered mower to an electric mower and mulcher. And indeed I do mulch and my grass, I no longer have to buy seed from Home Depot every year, every summer to start regrowing my grass because of all the things that Ms. Malinga mentioned. Uh, when you mulch the leaves, those nutrients sink into your, especially if we get some snow, sink into the ground and help your grass grow if that's what you're looking for during the spring and summer months. Um, I also have a, uh, not to give a plug, but a Roybe leaf vacuum. I don't blow the leaves, I suck them up. Uh, or sometimes I'll go out and rake them and suck them up in one big pile. Uh, this is a lot quieter, it's a lot faster, and it's a lot cleaner. I'm not blowing dust. I'm not blowing animal feces. I'm not disturbing insects that we do need in our grass. Um, I find it ironic that over the centuries, we constantly see this non-fake push and pull between changing. Uh, I'm from the state of Louisiana, where there's a place called Cancer Alley, where black men have the highest rate of cancer in the United States and indeed the world because of all the polluting industries there. But they all want to suggest, we can't do anything about it. We can't make any changes. You're just going to have to keep on dying. Well, I'm sick of it. I'm a citizen. I'm a voter. And when I have to listen and breathe the air from these gas-powered mowers, it is ear-splitting. It is distracting. I'm a college professor on one of the campuses, by the way, that has gone all electric, 180-acre campus, Mercy University, all electric and everything is doing just fine. So when I hear this stuff constantly, oh, we can't afford it. It can't be done. Our, our income is worth more than your life in the air you breathe. Quite frankly, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. My life and my, I paid a lot of money for my house and I don't wanna hear this stuff. It comes, I feel like I'm being invaded when I hear these mowers when I hear these blowers in particular, and then because I know what it is they're spewing out, you're harming me twice. You're harming my little boys twice. Pass this leaf blower ban now. It should have been done a long time ago. If the state of California, the 39 million people could do it, and not one landscaper has gone out of business there, I'm sure West Orange with less than 50,000 people can do it too. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, coming forward. Good evening, Gustavo Pereira, 100 Terrace Avenue. Members of the council, mayor, thank you for having me the opportunity to talk to all of you. I'm gonna be brief. I said it before when we got together here, I'm gonna say it again. There's no need to rush things up. Okay, everybody talks about and they have their own agendas and they're entitled to it. They all have the right to be worried about. We all love our beautiful town and uh, we all do the work that we need to do. The truth of the matter is this. The technology is there, but it's not for us as businessmen. I agree. There are certain periods of the year that perhaps we should educate. I certainly will do that with my own crew, that the, the, the blowers, okay, should be used for a minimum. 
or perhaps eradicate them during the summer months. Blowers are not only used to blow leaves, they are used also when we place mulch that we need to clean the driveway or the area. We're not gonna leave everything dirty. There are some people that would like to have it like that, but my customers, they want me to do the job the only way that I know how to do it, and it's the right way. I don't want to overexpend money blowing air. I shut it down and that's it. So I think, and this is my humble opinion, there's no reason to rush things up. There are certain towns that are going through Maplewood. This is the first year that I won't be able to use my backpack blowers. We'll see what happens. The job is not going to be done the right way. I'm not going to overcharge my customers for that. I'm just going to leave things as they are. They are. And they will be very concerned because the job is not going to be right. So what I'm asking is that you think about it. Let's wait and see what's going on with other towns because I also pay a lot of taxes here. I don't want my taxes to go up because somebody's coming over to sue the town. And it's something that you should consider. I respect everybody that are very concerned about the, um, you know, what the damage can be caused by backpack blowers. I understand that, okay? And I'm sure, okay, that once the technology is there, I'll be the first one to go and spend the money. But I can't spend the money right now because it's not worth it. I can't have, it doesn't make any sense for me to have a generator that is gonna cost exactly same pollution or even more. And then I'm gonna spend gas regardless running that generator to charge you know, my batteries. So it's, I think that we should, you know, take it slow and then eventually come to the right decision for everybody and not for just a few that are very concerned that we're going to be killing bees or we're going to be killing insects that is needed in our grounds and the mulching of the leaves. Yeah, you can mulch the leaves, of course, but you got to spend time to do that if you want to do the job the only way that at least I know how to do. And is the right way. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. I think that's it for council chambers. Now let's go to the Zoom audience. And if you'll tell us how many people are on Zoom. Uh, council president, we currently have uh, seven individuals with their hand raised um, on, on Zoom. And what's the total number on Zoom, sir? Um, it's 75, but the hands raised just went up to 10. Okay. Thank you. Shall I start bringing them in, Council so President? Please, for the Zoom audience, just be mindful that your comments are limited to this ordinance for the gas leaf blower ban on second and final reading. Any additional comments, we will yield to a later time in the meeting to hear your public comment. Thank you, Mr. Fagan, the first commenter. Edward Rickman, welcome to the meeting. Please state your name and address for the record. Hi, my name is Ed Reichman. I uh, live at 12 More Terrace. I'm in favor of the ban. Um, I work at home, even with the double plane windows closed, my colleagues on Zoom calls can clearly hear when commercial gas powered leaf blowers are being used in my neighbor's yards from like five yards, five houses away. Uh, I live in a very dense neighborhood, uh, you know, small lots, um, I would love to be able to work on my patio, but I cannot because of the constant noise uh, from the landscapers that are in the adjacent properties. And even from properties, one avenue over on either side. Um, studies have shown that typical gas powered leaf blowers noise carries more than 200 yards away. Uh, in my neighborhood, that puts approximately 200 homes within range of jet engine level noise. Maplewood and Montclair banned gas-powered leaf blowers year-round, effective this fall. Uh, Glen Ridge, Morristown are both considering similar bans. You've heard that there are other towns that have successfully implemented uh, these bans. Um, the electric acquirer, less polluting, require less maintenance, as was been pointed out. Um, there are alternatives. Uh, there are leaf sweepers that, you know, private individuals can purchase for about $100. There are commercial versions available for about $250, or there's mulching mowers, which is what I do. Um, I I have an electric 
mulching mower. I do not, I have an electric blower, but I've, I don't think I've ever used it on this property. Um, I mulch my, my leaves using an electric mower. It's much healthier for the environment. Um, there are existing lithium recycling companies already recycling these batteries, car batteries, your electronic batteries. So that's that's a falsehood that this the uh, recycling in these batteries is it doesn't exist. Um, mulching mowers don't blow leaf litter into the air like the the gas powered leaf uh, blowers do. Um, Customers don't have the luxury of dying hearing protection when their neighbors' landscapers are, are running their blowers. Like I said, I would love to enjoy the quiet use of my lawn, of my patio, to be able to work outside, but I ca currently cannot because of these things. Um, recent EPA studies note that there are there's a hundred there's a 65 uh, decibel difference between uh, a gas powered and an electric blower. Um, technology for electric blowers is well developed. There are alternatives like the mulchers and sweepers. They're being used successfully in all these towns that have implemented the bans. Um, it's just simply a falsehood that the, 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 the equipment is not ready. There is equipment that's already out there that's being used in, in states like California in over 110 communities um, in, in, this, in this area alone. So um, I would strongly urge the council to um to especially ban from you know the summer months but i would urge them to consider expanding that to year round like other communities have and adjacent communities have already done thank you very much thank you and i'm going to ask for our zoom um, audience as well understanding that there are nine additional people or at least nine additional people who want to comment um, please, we welcome your comments, and I'm not asking you to shorten your time, but if your comments are exactly the same points that someone has already made, please limit your comments to, to new points um, so that we can get through the commenters as well as our own uh, debate and conversation. Thank you. Phil Litwinoff, uh, welcome to the meeting. Please state your name and address for the record. Thank you, Mr. Fagan. My name is Phil Litwinoff. I live in Linden Avenue. Before I start, can you all hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I voted for five intelligent people to represent me on the town council. I believe we su I succeeded in that. I think you're all smart enough to realize that at least three people who spoke during public comments have threatened the township. They have referenced the lawsuit against Montclair, which has not yet been here, heard and saying that if they win, they're gonna turn around and sue West Orange. I think that is incredibly terrible for somebody to, to accuse, to, to pre preempt and in charge and scare the council of West Orange. Now, another rep, uh, landscaper, I believe from Livingston said, do the right thing and use common sense. So I'm going to tell you, I am 74 years old. I have lived in this town since 1977. The very first lawnmower that I bought was a Lawn Boy mulching mower. And my lawn never looked as good as it did then. I only hired a landscape when I came too old to basically do it for myself. The concept that electric is not as efficient is really erroneous. I spoke to my landscaper and in terms of the phrase of do the right thing, I said to him, why aren't you using electric here? He said, because West Orange doesn't care. They don't have the rules that Maplewood and Montclair and other towns that he represents do. So I said, let's make a deal because he said to me, it's costing him $200 a week in gasoline to run his electric, his uh, gasoline powered mowers and gas, uh, you know, and devices. I said to him, do the right thing. If I let you charge your EVs, your, your batteries at my house when you're doing the lawn, what will you do? He said, I'm not going to charge you anything more because as it is, the cost of the electric is better than the cost of the gas. 
And to the council members who have said about the disposal of the, the lithium batteries, as one other person said during the public comment, Staples, Home Depot, other locations will take those devices. And if you're really that worried about lithium batteries and what happens, I think the town council should ban Teslas and other EV cars from the township for the same reason. I think it's a ridiculous position to take. And I think the time has come that we take care of our, the next generation. My grandchildren who are four years old and nine months old have a right to live in this world without the environmental pollution that has been reaping harm on our environment. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Seth, welcome to the meeting. Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, yes, yeah, Seth Boyce, letter 17, Howell Drive, West Orange. Can everyone hear me? Yes, yes. please continue. Yes, so I would like to make a couple of points. I think we have good issues on both sides. As we have crafted other resolutions and stuff, there still seems to be a lot of questions. And other towns have been successful, but with a neighboring town with a lawsuit, I would agree with the gentleman who said, let's wait and see what happens. Because why would we want to set ourselves up with a lawsuit? There is another lawsuit pending already in West Orange. And now we would set ourselves up for another one with high costs involving only taxpayer dollars. The second thing is, I'm not sure if I read this correctly, but I remember in the first and one of the resolutions, there were some exemptions. I don't understand why we're exempting. I think it was the exemption of golf courses, which one is owned by the town and the others are owned by county and some private uh, companies or individuals. It's, it's all or nothing. No one should be exempt. This is a resolution. This is a, would be a law, and nobody should be exempt within the town borders. I don't know what the political motivations are there, but I think it's wrong to exempt. If we're going to do it for the residents, it should be done for companies and for other big entities, and they can adjust as well. I think we've had points made by both landscapers and people on the environment, but I also think we have a lot of homeowners who own gas blowers as well. And we need to find a way to help them transition to better products also. So I think we need to look at Westchester. We need to meet with other governments. What was in their laws? What attorneys did they use to craft this? What language are they using? How did they implement it? Let's be smarter and wiser. And I'm not sure why we're reinventing the wheel and rushing this through. Thank you. Thank you, Seth. Zosh Academy, welcome to the meeting. Please state your name and address for the record. Hi, my name is Zasa Academy, 4 Dawes Avenue, West Orange. Um, okay, so I, my comments have to do with answering some of the things that I heard that I, I don't know if they're misinformed or just misguided or whatever, but let's, can I address the Montclair lawsuit first, since that's on everybody's mind? Well, Montclair made a mis Maplewood lawsuit was a mistake that they exempted the homeowners. They, they fixed that, didn't exempt anyone. And as the last speaker spoke, no one should be exempt. We have already, our ordinance doesn't exempt anyone to change now. Uh, the golf courses, that was a mistake. I think that's been taken out. I hope it's taken out. But anyway, the M Montclair lawsuit right now is about that this was, two, uh, it's about two things, that they had a two blower limit, even for the electric ones. And and um, so on that, and that's already been taken out. So rendering the lawsuit uh, moot on that point. And the other thing, that, that precipitated the lawsuit um, was that there wasn't sufficient notice, sufficient time to transition because this decision made what was made in August to do a, a total ban in October, which is about a month and a week. So we're, we're 
what what the people who are asking you guys to do the right thing here and the right thing would be to slowly transition out of these awful dirty uh, uh machines is to have a gradual change and that's what we're doing no one needs to blow around dust on their driveway in the summertime with a gas powered blower and that's all we're asking for the next two years and the industry is changing quickly, driven by the California ban of sale of any two-stroke engine as of, of Janu January of this coming year. Every major manufacturer is hurriedly trying to transition to keep up with that demand of the largest state in our union. Okay, so um, an example of that would be that I think it was mentioned way, way before about a portable a battery charger that's also battery driven. This talk about gas power generators, um, I don't know where someone got the idea that that's how they would be charging their batteries, but most of the people who've transitioned do them overnight at their home base, wherever they keep their landscaping stuff, or they've converted their entire trailer to also do the wall. And those are free to instructionals on YouTube on how to do this. And now there's going to be little uh, portable chargers you can put in the back of your pickup truck that will charge four commercial batteries on the go. So I don't, uh, please get that idea of a gas power generator out of the discussion, out of the dialogue. It's a red herring. It doesn't exist and it's a terrible idea. Um, yeah, Mr. Gambini was worried about spring and fall cleanup. Well, we're not asking you to change a thing for this fall and next spring and the following fall and the following spring and the following fall. I think by 2026, you're going to be good and ready, saving up a coffee and a donut per day. You'll be able to buy three commercial backpack blowers and about 12 batteries just on that amount of savings a day in your in your jar. So... Um, that's another thing I wanted to address. Um, the other thing that's being threatened a lot, especially to seniors like myself, is that they're going to take this opportunity to drive the prices through the roof. Um, I guess another excuse to price gouge, because I happen to look at the studies on ROI, that's return on investment, and within 12 to 14 months, you'll be making only profit on these units should you invest in the sooner than the next two years, three years. So uh, for you to upfront charge the customer an elevated price, um, and then just, I don't think you're going to give them the money back when you're just making the profits. Or is that part of your plan to return the money when you're only making profits and not spending any money? Because I, I think that's a very unfair proposition. And we're not as stupid as we we look, okay? Um, <laughs> Um, there is, um, the, well, the lithium battery not being, your recycled. time is up. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. John Blanton. Welcome to the meeting. Please state your name and address for the record. John Blanton, 54 Farms and Road. In essence of time and what the chair said, won't speak long. I just want to say to you guys, um, someone else said, we elected you. I think you're five very intelligent individuals. Uh, make a decision. I'm not an environmentalist. I don't know if any of you are. Um, I got pros and cons from doing my own lawn and leaves and things of that nature, and I could go on and on, but it's going to depend on you guys to do what you think is the right thing. But I'll end by saying there was a gentleman who spoke, said that he was willing to work with, regardless what happens, of the landscapers to use whatever kind of equipment he has, because ultimately we all know it's coming. And I would challenge them all to get together, whoever this guy, uh, landscaper was, and whatever goes on to work with him to see how all this equipment works. And uh, he said he'd consult them and he'd be willing to do it. So that's my suggestion. No one had said that before to work with whoever the gentleman, I think it was from Princeton. Um, and he said he has a lot of equipment to work with them and see how we go. But again, we want to leave it to you guys, hopefully to make the decision. That's the right one. Have a good evening. Thank you. Nigel Richards, welcome to the meeting. Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, my name is Nigel Richards. I live at 920 Pleasant Valley Way, West Orange, New Jersey. Can you hear me? Can you repeat your address, please? 920 Pleasant Valley Way, West Orange, New Jersey. 
very muffled. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? We can we can hear you, but you're somewhat muffled. Are you on a speakerphone? No, yeah, you're on my Zoom camera here. Yeah. Okay, no problem. We'll do our best. How should the first order come out of the child? Uh, yes. Um, I'm. This is the first time I'm actually hearing about this. The we the uh -huh. the ordinance. Uh -huh. I have a leaf blower that is electric, and I have one that is gas powered. I bought the gas powered one in twenty, I'd say seventeen or twenty eighteen, and I bought the electric one would be about twenty twenty. Um, I would say the township should invest in terms of educating the other members of the community about this, maybe even like some flyers at the school. Um, maybe some people don't know about it. You could also have one whereby you have educational um, seminars for some of the businesses so that they can say that you didn't make an effort even if there comes up to have legal matters, um, I would say that would be a good way to go. Um, from my own personal use, the electric blower is easier to use. It may not be as powerful, but I don't have any leaves. I don't have any trees in my yard. Most of the leaves come from either off the street or from the neighbors. So um, I'm not one that has a lot of, of use for the electric blower per se, but <laughs> it's the first time I'm hearing about this, and I, I think that you would need to um, let more more of the residents know that this is coming and maybe, you know, even educate them about how they can move forward effectively. That's what that's what I, that's my thought on this. Thank you very much. Mel Valdez, welcome to the meeting. Please state your name and address for the record. Hi, good evening. My name is Mel Julie Valdez. I live on Elm Street. Um, after listening to both sides um, regarding this ordinance, I still have a few questions as um, after reading the ordinance that is provided on the agenda, it is poorly written. Um, the reason that I say it, it is poorly written is that comparing this ordinance as it is written today, um, comparing it to another ordinance that is that has already been approved and is on the books, which is the mercantile license ordinance. Um, the This ordinance does not explicitly say how this will be enforced. So if someone is in violation, it says that a, the homeowner or and business would be fined. So how exactly is someone supposed to report this? Are, you, are we calling the West Orange Police Department? Are we calling the township on the weekend? So how exactly is that supposed to be enforced because that is not explicitly um, contained in this ordinance. Secondly, um, I also live in a densely populated area near, near Covey Park um, and the house lots are very small. Several of my neighbors and landsca landscaping companies, um, when they're using their equipment and they're using the blowers, they're blowing the, glass clip the grass clippings and the leaves onto the street. Then when it rains, that clogs the drains. So what I would like to know is what's going to happen, you know, in terms of enforcement, if people are just blowing things onto the street, it happens now. And I don't really see anybody doing anything about it. Um, the other thing that I would like to know is why does this ordinance exempt the way it reads? It exempts golf courses, public, any, excuse me, no provision herein shall apply to any governmental property or public or private golf course. I'm not really sure why this statement here, as it is written, the sentence does not have commas on it. Um, it should have commas. Um, so whichever attorney wrote this should have, you know, um, corrected the grammar on this and included commas. But um, to the person from from um, the township that said that this would be very hard on the township, if this says that it exempts any governmental property then how does this apply to the township itself? Um, it seems that they're exempted in the language that I'm reading here. And also um, in terms of the fee, um, if you are in violation, it says fines for violation of this ordinance shall be applicable to both the property owner and any contractor doing work in the township and shall be fixed by resolution. I would like to know why is the fee not included in this ordinance, whereas other ordin ordinances that have been um, 
that ha that have been on the agenda do have the fee. So why is the fee not being proposed now? Thank you. Thank you. Pedro S, welcome to the meeting. Please state your full name and address for the record. And I'm sorry if I'm not mispronounced your name. Thank you. It's Phaedra Singelis, and the address is 6 Essex Terrace in West Orange. And Please I would, continue. And I would just like to um, second a lot of the things that have been said um, in support of the ordinance. So first, I'd like to thank how the doctor spoke at the beginning of the meeting for pointing out the health things. I would also like to mention that in addition to our own health, which is obviously very important, we do need to protect our environment. We have lost 3 billion birds, 30% of bumblebees, which are our number one and most important pollinator. 80% of Eastern monarchs have disappeared. And part of this is due to the fact that we are blowing our leaves away. And leaves is where the bees overwinter. It's where the caterpillars overwinter. It's where, and caterpillars feed the birds. If you haven't read Doug Ptolemy, I highly recommend it. It takes thousands of caterpillars to feed a small clutch of baby birds. So we need those leaves in order to have the caterpillars, in order to have the monarchs, the birds, and our bees. Um, and we need to protect those who can't speak. So that includes the birds, the bees, and the monarchs, but also the employees of the landscape companies. They don't have much of a voice in this, and we need to protect their health as well. Uh, another person here mentioned the another problem with our environment is the rampant escape of invasives, the overabundance of our deer, and that is true, as well as pesticides and fertilizers, and pesticides and fertilizers are used heavily on grass. And if we mulch the leaves, as other people have mentioned, that feeds the grass and it would save a lot of the pesticides and fertilizer use and our waterways. We have almost an acre here on our property. We don't remove any of the leaves from our yard and we have a lot of trees. Um, we don't have any issues with rodents, fungus, or anything else on our property. In fact, our yard provides a better habitat since we moved in and started leaving the leaves. We actually had three clutches of baby birds this year because we have the caterpillars and the insects to feed them. You guys have talked about the lawsuits in Montana. Young people sued the state for violating its their residents' rights to a clean and healthful climate. We should be also concerned that perhaps our youth who are very environmentally focused will also sue the state of New Jersey for similar. So let's be ahead of that game and protect the environment and protect their health. Our own golf course should transition, our public golf course that is owned by the city should transition to being green and be certified by the Audubon Society. And I think this ordinance should also include public property. I am for the slow transition. I agree that that is a smart way to go. And maybe we can add in the government property as part of this ordinance. Um, if not immediately, at least put it in there. That would be a great addition. If you would like uh, to offer education for homeowners, for landscapers, or the um, Public, empl public employees on leaving the leaves. I am a, a steering committee member of the Native Plant Society of New Jersey. We would be more than happy to do that. Um, I, I'm i gonna t turn over my time. My husband would like to say something. Is he allowed to talk? He will have to come on as an as individual person. Okay, so he needs to log into Zoom himself. No, I mean, he can, if he's right there with you, he can certainly speak, but it'll end your time and begin his. Okay, that's fine. I'll just okay. let him. Just I like great. Hi, um, my name's Paul Segner. I live at 6 Essex Terrace. Um, I'll be quick. Um, Fader and my wife uh, covered most of our points. Uh, I just want to say we live on, our property is just shy of an acre, heavily wooded, a lot of hillside, challenging terrain. I was using the big, heavy uh, gas-powered backpack leaf blower, 
And I made the transition to all battery, uh, lawn mower, the weed whacker, the leaf blower, and uh, and it's worked fine. I had uh, I had concerns about that it wouldn't be powerful enough, but um, it's it's been a it's it's been a fantastic move. Um, I use the same batteries for for everything that we're using on the property. As far as the leaves go, um, we grind up our leaves. We don't use a mower to uh, to uh, to shred them. Um, I have an electric shredder, and so we just produce our own our own mulch. We don't have the city cart off anything. In fact, we actually clean leaves off our street. We take our neighbors' leaves and we grind them up and use them on our property. So. Um, I'm all all for moving to uh, to batteries. I think it's the way to go. Uh, I agree with Phaedra and, and other people on the call. Um, doing this in an orderly fashion and in like a transition period is definitely the way to go. Um, and that's that's all I have to say. Thanks. Thank you so very much, Rachel Mecca. Welcome to the meeting. Please state your name and address for the record. Hi, my name is Rachel Mecca. I'm a resident of Maplewood, New Jersey at 11 DeHart Road. Um, I'm a member of the Environmental Advisory Committee and founder of Quiet Maplewood. Maplewood banned gas-powered leaf blowers year-round, effective January 1st of this year. Change was not easy. Over the span of 20 years, there was several ordinances and a lawsuit. However, Maplewood Township Committee has persevered, creating policy that challenges the status quo and propels us into the future. They have set an example showing neighboring towns that town leaders can take the necessary steps to protect the health of its residents and workers. Since the ban's implementation, Maplewood's residents and workers are free from the damaging gas leaf floor pollution, just as they are from secondhand smoke in public buildings. Workers and residents are also free from the damaging noise they create, leading healthier, better quality lives in Maplewood. And lastly, spring is once again and fall a time again to get once again a time to get outside, hear the birds, and smell the fresh air. James Fallow, one of the founders of Quiet Clean DC, wrote about the lessons learned in the successful successful implementation of DC's year-round ban. I found Maplewood's achievement was contingent on the same key factors: having a champion matters. Our township committee woman Nancy Adams was educated on the facts and knew that this was an important public health and climate initiative. She understood this policy is for the sake of the public good. Her concern was not popularity, but to do the right thing. She showed true leadership. Showing up matters. Residents were vocal at township committee meetings and wrote emails in an effort to educate leaders as the reasons for the greater restrictions. Facts matter. The information presented to the Township Committee this evening, um, some were myths, um, but it's important to listen to the facts, the science from our most trusted institutions. Health professionals volunteered their time to come um, and relay the facts. The focus on public health and climate our township committee did not let feelings and opinions get confused with the facts. And finally, technology and timing matter. Understanding that technology was on our side. Electric equipment is a safe alternative that has become increasingly affordable, providing a win-win for all. Many towns have implemented a complete ban on the East Coast, Large Mount, New York, Washington, DC, and most recently, Maplewood and Montclair. In New York and New Jersey, bills that ban the use and sale of gas leaf floors are making their way through the Senate. I encourage West Orange to be one of the examples for them to look to. The question to ask is not if West Orange will prohibit gas leaf floors, but when, a decade from now, will West Orange be proud to have protected their workers and residents today? Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Todd DeBove, welcome to the meeting. Please state your name and address for the record. Thank you. Uh, my name is Todd DeBove, 10 Burnett Terrace in West Orange. 
Um, first, I'd like to say I'm in favor of this ordinance, um, but I'd like to address a few things. First, it's being said that it's been rushed. Uh, this hasn't been rushed. It's been discussed for many months at various levels in town. Um, I think Richard Trank has received proposed language months and months ago. So this has been uh, discussed for quite some time. And it's being phased in over the next two years. So it, it's not it's not a rush uh, in any way. Second, um, yes, there's an upfront cost to businesses, but there's been no acknowledgement by the landscapers that have come that they'll be able to recoup some some or, no, or maybe all of those upfront costs through lower ongoing maintenance costs and 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 gas, the savings on having to buy gas. So uh that has to be given uh you know careful consideration third i heard somebody suggest that agza uh is not in favor of a total ban uh couldn't find that on their website but it, they do have right right front and center they offer training for landscapers to implement the the changes that are taking place in that industry and it's right on the first page before you click on anything um, so, uh, fourth batteries are recyclable as others have said, that's, that's just it. They're recyclable. And last over 150 municipalities in the U S have already instituted gas blower bans with more obviously coming online. And lastly, West orange as the home of Thomas Edison should be on the front end of this movement, given its heritage in the field of electricity. Please do the right thing and vote in favor. Thank you. Thank you. Claire Silvestri, welcome to the meeting. Please state your name and address for the record. Thank you. Claire Silvestri, 20 Grandview Avenue. Um, there have been countless residents and experts who have spoken tonight very eloquently. Um, I just want to add my voice to support of this ordinance. I think it's very good for the environment. I think mulching is really important. And we certainly don't need um, gas blowers over the summer blowing um, leaf, um, grass clippings around. It's also good for the quality of life of our residents, as we've heard frequently. Um, and I can um, attest to the same thing, the noise and the emissions that uh, are it, uh, emitted throughout the course of the year is uh, is definitely a detriment to our quality of life. And unlike so many of our legislation in this town that seems to require immediate action, I commend the council members for taking the time to get this right and certainly to allow a um, uh, plenty of time for landscapers to transition to the new electric motors. So I would just urge the council to vote yes on this ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin Malanga, welcome to the meeting. Please state your name and address for the record. Thank you, Mr. Fagan. Kevin Malanga, Ridge Road, West Orange. Good evening, council president, members of the council. I'd like to offer a brief fact check pertaining to three comments that you've heard tonight. You've heard that batteries cost $1,000 each. That is simply not true. A 12 amp battery, which is the largest amperage that one can get for a backpack leaf blower is $400. Not inexpensive by any means, but it's not $1,000. And of course, volume discounts are available. You've heard that gasoline powered leaf blowers are only 15 decibels louder than an electric leaf blower. That is also not true, but more importantly, a 15 decibel increase, if we take at face value that number, a 15 decibel increase means the perceived loudness is three times as great. Lastly, you've heard that if West Orange is sued over this ordinance, 
that the township and therefore the taxpayers will have to bear the expense if West Orange loses. That is not true. The U.S. follows what's known as the American rule. And in the absence of a statute whereby the victor has its legal fees paid by the loser, each party must bear its own legal fees. I urge you to vote in favor of this ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Council President, I am seeing no other members of the Zoom audience with their hand raised. Public comment is now closed. Now would be the time for my council colleagues to make their commentary. Councilwoman Scarpa. Okay, we've heard a lot tonight, and, and I've, I'm really glad we did what we have really been trying to do for months to educate the public. And so I'm going to be brief because you've heard all the arguments, but there are a few things that I just want to pick up on. Um, a number of people were concerned that we rushed this, and we, we did not. They were concerned that um, we haven't written, haven't written it very well. I want everyone to understand that Councilwoman Nancy Adams sat down with our environmental group, with our Green West Orange, and with Mr. Trank, and they crafted something that they felt was really in our best interest. Some of the things that people are concerned about, the golf courses, they were taken out. The, some of the, the language around golf courses and governmental property. Mm -hmm. So those are not real issues. I've gotten so much information from many people in our town, more who are for the ban than are against. Many people have sent me all kinds of information. I have some information here. A lot of it is um, a summary of what's happened uh, and what we've heard tonight. I'd like to just enter it into the record. Um, it's information that I've gotten from our Green West Orange and from other people. And I think it's important because this is all about education. Education is the key to understanding this issue. I am, I hope that we could continue to educate the public. I love the idea that was bounced around where our landscapers could possibly work with other landscapers who have come here tonight to share their experiences and show them some efficiencies or the way that they have managed this. I am very sensitive to the small landscapers and the small business people. I know there will be costs for you to do this upfront. But I would urge our administration to immediately talk to our grant writers and to see if there's something we can do to get grants to help you. And I, I believe that with the two years window that we have to get you up to speed, it's going to be manageable for all of us. And of course, we are going to be looking at this annually all the time to make sure that no one is getting hurt. So that's about all I have to say. Thank you, Councilman Rutherford. Uh, thank you, Council President. Um, I was asked a direct question by um, Mr. Militella, um, and he referenced my uh, visiting one of the suppliers for the landscaping equipment. Um, so a couple of things stood out to me in that in that meeting. And, and I'll say that I went because I think it's important that um, we be informed when we make all of our votes, not just this one. Uh, so um, his demonstration was quite thorough. He showed me five different um, leaf blowing pieces of equipment, three gas, two electric. Um, there is a clear difference in the power that the gas um, units have, and they had clearly have an advantage over the electric units. And this is not news. Um, when I used to do my lawn myself, um, I've had the kind that you even plug in. Um, so, you know, I know that there is a, there is a difference in the amount of power between gas and electric. One of the electric models, though, did seem to have sufficient power. The issue about that particular model was, I think it was like $1,100. Uh, it was a, it was a, it was a nice number. Um, and I think the comparable gas powered model 
uh, was about $700 or in that neighborhood. So to get about the same amount of uh, force uh, would certainly require uh, more money. And I'm sensitive to that for our business community in particular and those that are um, less financially well healed. Having said all of that, the reason this is important to me is because of climate change. I understand the health issues. I understand the, the noise issues. I'm not trying to minimize them. I, I get it. Um, I do think we have to do everything we can to address the impact of climate change. Um, and I think that has to be our top priority. So how do we, how do we craft an ordinance that isn't um, punitive or oppressive to the businesses and the uh, part of our community that has um, less financial resources to, to make the transition. Um, I think um, phasing in, in the ban over a significant period of time, and right now we're, we're talking about um, the full ban up in uh, not until 2026, uh, I think carving out parts of the year where we know the heaviest um, materials um, are on the ground and need to be blown um, and allowing you to use gas equipment at that time of year um, certainly will address that issue. And so we can talk about the dates um, that are proposed um, um, you know, to, to allow gas powered equipment. We can also discuss, and, there, and we're going to get to it, we can also discuss uh, how the turbines are used as well. Um, but I think at the end of the day, what I want us to, to take away from this moment is, um, you know, we've got, we've got residents on both sides of the issue. We've got business owners in town that are all on one side of the issue, and we have some out-of-town business owners in the same business that are on the other side of the issue. And I'm not trying to minimize uh, your commentary today. Um, it's it's just, you know, we are a local government. Uh, we're not doing things statewide or countywide. Um, what we do here tonight directly affects the residents of West Orange and the businesses that work in our, our domiciled here. So I do think we have to listen um, and be reasonable in how we craft the ordinance. And I want you to understand that that's what we're trying to do. Uh, we're not trying to be heavy handed. Someone made a comment um, and asked, is this to stiff the mayor? I, I find that offensive. Um, if, if politics are being played here, they're not. That's not what this is about. What we're trying to do is address some issues that have been uncovered as a result of people working from home primarily, but also the data uh, with regard to these particular um, leaf blowers uh, certainly shows that that it is harmful to our health and our environment. So we're trying to address that issue. I, I will tell you, the smell doesn't bother me. Um, I have allergies, but when I smell the leaf blowers, it reminds me of dirt bikes um, that we used to, you know, two cylinder dirt bikes back, you know, when we were kids, but they were banned too. You can't, they don't make two cylinder dirt bikes anymore. They do? Two stroke. Okay, well, all right. I'm glad to know that. I'm glad to know that. Uh, no, I, I don't think you can, unfortunately. Um, so it's not necessarily offensive to me, but it is not about me. What the five of us have to do is figure out how we, how we craft an ordinance uh, in the best interest of the largest number of people, of which landscapers are a portion. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to do tonight. I'm happy to listen to uh, my colleagues and what their recommendations are. I'm happy to offer mine as well. Um, and I've spoken with people on both sides, landscapers, uh, suppliers, residents, some of whom have uh, health challenges. Uh, I've, I've looked at the science myself. Um, and so I, I think at the end of this process, um, what I hope, whether you agree with what we do here tonight or not, you at least agree that we are thoughtful and considered um, and listening to the concerns of the entire uh, West Orange population that will be affected by this. So, you know, I'm looking forward to getting into the actual uh, ordinance. I'll, I'll leave my uh, 
my comments at that. Thank you, Council President. Mm -hmm. Councilwoman. Good evening, everyone. I want to echo my council colleagues' uh, sentiments. Um, so first off, to the gentleman who wanted to comment, you can comment because there will be public comment later in which you can say what you need to say. So this isn't Thanks. the end. You're welcome. Um, so there seems to be some confusion. I know you hear some people talking about um, official ban in 2026. I think compromise is very important. Um, the way this ordinance is written on second reading, I don't support. And in fact, what my council colleague, uh, Ms. Scarpa, referenced earlier about a meeting with uh, Nancy Adams, the councilwoman in, South in Maplewood, as well as uh, Mr. Trank, our township attorney, and members of our Green West Orange, Joyce Rudin, I was on that call. Um, I wanted to make sure that you know, we do the right thing for everyone involved while being environmentally conscious, health conscious, as well as not hurting, um, you know, our business owners and landscapers. Um, and in that call, Nancy was able to help us. The way this is written up, we are set up for litigation. And we were able to work effectively to have another ordinance put on for first reading tonight, which helps us in terms of litigation the ban would be effective January of 2026. And so that would give two years of a transition in which in 2025, we can revisit and see what's happening. Um, I was surprised to hear yesterday, I received an email that Mr. Trank was pulling that ordinance um, on first reading because there seemed to be confusion. And so I just wanna let you know that tonight I, do not support this. And I'm hoping to make the necessary uh, amendments to it where it will protect us. And I do agree. And I said it last time. So I want to apologize. I wasn't here in the last meeting in person. I have significant spine and, and back issues and I had a procedure the next day. So I was home um, on Zoom, but I am here tonight. And I just want to let you guys know that I don't think it's fair to exclude township government or um, the golf courses, and then expect our residents and our landscapers to have to um, completely go electric. So in the revisions, it's removed. Government's removed. There are, there are no exceptions um, within West Orange government, public or private golf courses. Um, now, there's also a registry that will take effect, hopefully, if this new ordinance goes through um, in the next, whenever the next meeting is, hopefully we can make the changes tonight to do what's right for everyone. And if we can't, because there's too many changes on second reading, then we'll have to implement, have a discussion amongst ourselves and make sure that we're in agreement to have this ordinance on first reading in the next meeting. And that's something that was discussed. Um, and because there's several changes, we'd have to change the chapter from 17 to 21 because it's an environmental issue. We would have to um, remove the um, exception of like turbine blowers. Those are allowed to be, should be allowed to be used. There shouldn't be restrictions on them. Um, those are $20,000 uh, equipment. So most of the homeowners in town are not going to be using them and, and the landscapers won't be using that equipment on most of the homes here. It's really for large, really large properties. Um, so there, I don't think there should be a ban on that. So that will be removed. Um, the dates would be, it would be permitted, the gas powered leaf blowers until, again, if, if this is what the majority of the council decides, the ban on gas powered leaf blowers would be um, permitted March 1st through April 30th. Councilwoman, yes. if I can interrupt you, please. Can we talk about the amendments once we get to a new ordinance? Can we just talk about the ordinance that's on for second reading? Sure, but I want to just give the history and let people know. So, But you're talking about changes that aren't proposed as yet. So, Okay, I hear you. Thank you. Okay. So anyway, I just, I wanted to give some um, background and let you all know so there isn't confusion. There is no support, my understanding, from the majority of the council, if not everyone in the council, for this ordinance the way it's written tonight. We want to be fair. We want to work with everyone. And 
our hope is to have the official ban in 2026 and do two years and revisit it in 2025. So that's it. Thank you, Councilwoman Casalino. Sure, thank you, Council President. So thank you everyone for coming in with all your passion, with all your uh, information. Uh, I learned a few new things this evening as I did the last meeting. So I always talk about balance in our community. I appreciate our fellow colleague from Maplewood, uh, who I'm very good friends with, uh, Ms. Adams, uh, Councilwoman Adams, for uh, working with us. And I know she's extremely passionate about this subject matter. And um, I also know, and I appreciate the other Maplewood resident that came on to for her passion. But I also know we represent West Orange and we have a, uh, a larger township. We have a lot more business owners and we have um, a, a lot of business owners and residents that would not be able to go out and afford at this particular time to go buy their own new electric leaf blower. I've got received numerous calls. I've seen people in ShopRite and the, the the bank uh, at, a, at a community events asking me, "Are we? am I really going to have to go out and buy a new leaf blower? Um, and I know we talk about phase-in, and we have not talked about enforcement this evening. One person did uh, bring that up. I know in the other towns, I forget which one it is, um, but the way they enforce it is they take a picture of their neighbor or of the landscaper utilizing a gas blower. And I am not going to be one to ever, ever, ever support anything that ridiculous because all you're going to do is pit neighbor against neighbor. And that is just not fair. That is just not fair. So how we are going to enforce this, we need to come to the table for that discussion because that's going to be hard to figure out what people, people are going to call the police department or people are going to call the health department who are they who are they calling so we need a thoughtful if we're going to do this and this is what you want to do then you need a thoughtful process on how it would be realistically enforced take taking pictures of each other's neighbors is is just not going to work out. There's going to be a lot of angry people against other angry people. And, and I would never support any, anything of that nature. Uh, we talk about leaving the leaves and letting them fall and not doing anything. And I get that. That's great if you live on a private road or somewhere where it doesn't affect your streets. But we have a lot of trees on our ma with major streets, uh, busy thoroughfares. And um, if we ever left the leaves in the street, that would be wet leaves in the street be a major issue. There's also many people that have allergies to wet leaves, I being one of them. So there's a lot of people when the leaves do fall and they're not cleaned up, uh, get bad allergies. I can't keep a Christmas tree in, in my uh, house uh, or anymore because of my allergies. And there's a lot of people that have also shared with me there, those type of allergies. So we, again, we have to be respectful. I, I totally, totally am concerned about our environment. I always have been. I, and I appreciate all that are so passionate about it, but we're implementing a mercantile license that, that has got off to a, ro a rocky start. And that was another mandate from the state that we have to implement. We keep talking about California who implements many, many uh, cost, costly infractions upon their residents and, uh, and many people are leaving California because of that. So I'm just, you know, got to find that balance. I don't believe in, um, I, I would support revisiting this next year, the year after, but to put a ban in effect for a council for 2026 may be a different council that may be sitting here you should never, never, never pass legislation for a future council. So I hear, I hear that the technology is not, not to, not to phase in the way they want to phase, phase it in. Um, the technology, I think, will change. You know, we look at perfect example. Look at televisions. 
how inexpensive those large TVs have uh, have become. And I think the same will happen here. Well, there this won't be such a burden on not so much the the commercial business owners. A few of them I, are, you know, they could find ways. Grants will not help them. Grants will help us probably with buying equipment. And the Board of Ed is probably going to have to go out and get a couple grants on their own too to be able to afford this. And the county, if we pass it uh, for all the public properties, but um, that will not help the the, the residents um, or the small business owners. Um, I appreciate the the vendors um, that sell the equipment that spoke this evening um, and, and offering their help to our local landscapers. Um, thank you for traveling the distance you, you have um, to educate us. But again, you are in the business of sales. And, um, you know, respectfully for, you know, there's both sides to this. And I know a lot of speakers were here this evening that are in support of, of doing the ban immediately. But I'm gonna tell you folks, there's a lot of people in town that are not for this. And I wish they would come on the call so my colleagues could hear this and you could hear it. But unfortunately they always don't. They call us or they grab us in public. Uh, and a lot of them don't even know about it. So I think if we are gonna move forward something like this, it has to be well advertised. So folks get the opportunity to hear about it and, and be able to voice their opinion. So no secret, I have not been a supporter of this. Um, and I moving forward, not to say I won't in time if I see the technology improve. I'm still, again, we talk about batteries. I, I hear the facts uh, about the batteries, but still they're, they're expensive. I was just Googling some of the pricing on it. Uh, they're expensive and two years. And I trust a lot of testimony that was here this evening, how they have to go out and so they get recycled, but they still have to go out and buy new ones. Cell phone, I try to hold on my cell phone as long as possible, because I think it's ridiculous. I don't appreciate where the lithium batteries come from, uh, where they're mined and the resources that are, are used uh, in these other countries. And again, so there's a lot going on here and I respect all my uh, homework that my colleagues have done on this. I just, for one, I know I would disappoint the uh, a lot of people that spoke this, e this evening, but I, I just can't cannot support this at this time. And uh, hopefully the technology will be there. Again, I'm going to go back to the um, to the plastic bags. Everyone wanted us to push to be the first ones to ban the plastic use of uh, of the uh, plastic bags, and we stuck, we stuck our ground and eventually the state came out. And now we all use the reusable bags. We're used to the change because that was the point, you know, they're very annoying. We're all in our routines. I know for one, I'm constantly having to buy an, a new bag at uh, ShopRite because I leave mine at home, forget to put it in the car. It's an inconvenience, but hey, if it helps the environment, it's worth it. And now we're hearing how these reusable bags are not helping the environment. So when we say take our time, I I agree in the fact where let's see where all this, this goes. And I think we should revisit this in about a year or so, if, especially if you're not gonna enforce it for two years. I think we should look at it next year. And also the lawsuit. I'm curious to see how this lawsuit plays out with the other uh, towns before uh, we move forward at all. Thank you. Thank you, Council President. Thank you all for uh, for letting me uh, entertaining my my commentary. Thank you, Councilwoman. Noise, health, climate change, small businesses. Noise, health, climate change, small businesses. So I've had tremendous amount of small business owners come in for the past two meetings and talk about the impact that this would have on their small business. And then we have environmentalists who support making sure we protect our environment and protect the environment for our children and our children's children. Yet what I don't understand is how we aren't listening to the people who go out and do this every single day. The technology isn't here for them. They can't do their job in a timely manner. 
the health impacts that we're arguing is hurting their workers. We're saying their workers are being hurt, but they're here. They own the company, they're out in the field, they're out in the yards, they're carrying the equipment. I just don't understand the urgency in passing legislation that's not going to take effect until a year or even two years from now. The technology isn't there for what is required on a commercial basis. So what is it that we're not doing and what, do we, what is it that we're not hearing? I understand the need for us to move toward this direction, but there is no urgency when the materials, the equipment doesn't accommodate the people who use it every single day. So I implore my colleagues, just as the public has implored us, make the right decision. Make the right decision for the business owners who are showing up and telling us they can't function. It's not that they, I have not heard one business owner say, I don't want to go green. What I have heard our business owners say is that I can't afford to do this now. So my comments are, are simple. There's pending litigation in our neighboring communities. We want to go green as a community. All of us do. The people who work, the landscapers, the residents, we own equipment, we're transferring equipment. When we buy new equipment, we go battery operated. But to impose this type of financial hardship on not just our businesses, but the residents who have no idea that they're gonna go out next year and spend 250 or $300 so that they can be able to maintain their yard. When we talk about a tax increase, when we talk about a sewer bill increase, when we talk about a mercantile increase, what are we listening to? And how do we justify what's most important and a priority? Again, the technology isn't there, but we wanna impose restrictions now. And it just doesn't make sense to me. So right now, of course, I can't support this bill, but when we come back with the technology not being present for our business owners, I can't support this bill. Yes, a partial ban perhaps, but not yet. And not till the technology has caught up with the needs of our community, of our residents, and of our, of our small businesses. That's, that's where I am. So, Madam Clerk, if you'll call the vote. Sure. Is there a motion to approve 2817-23? I'm sorry. Everyone has had an opportunity to speak. This is, this is not about that. This is, are we... So tonight, since the ordinance that was presented for first reading is no longer being considered, un unless, yes, I'm, right. um, unless I'm mistaken, yeah. are we- You have to do something about that. We need to make so you are to we that. going to amend this one? You can, it's gotta be re Because there's if, too many changes, right? Because, if it's substantive, well, it goes back to first reading. Yeah. No, no, but Councilman, give her Michael, he's correct, that's why I sent the email yesterday. Mm -hmm. This, is materially different than what she wants to uh, the input that Councilman Gary Michael gave me last Monday night or whenever with committee first and Adams. So if you are in support of that, then at the end of tonight's meeting or immediately after this vote, you can if vote, see if you have a consensus to put that, or you could say tweak that and put something else on it. So tonight is only about what's on for second reading with advertised, which is the ordinance. Uh, that you adopted on first read. So I agree with Mr. Trank, because I've also- we, uh, yeah. <laughs> This is like world record. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, it's true because this sets up us up for litigation. And that's why I work with the councilwoman in Maplewood. The way this ordinance is written on second reading sets us up for litigation with, ex with exceptions that shouldn't be in here. And we don't want that. And we don't want to rush this. You know, we, I am very supportive of the ban during the summer months and then doing a full ban in January of 2026, which gives two years, which is more than enough time. And if not, again, we can revisit in 2025. And just so you know, any ordinance can be revisited at any time, right? It's not just this one. This goes with any ordinance, any resolution. If the majority of the governing body wants to make a change for the sake of the residents, right? For the people that we represent, we have the right to do that. Just like you'll see tonight, there's changes for an ordinance for the older person's advisory board. And, you know, there's talks of, I've heard someone say that 
um, if we that we should be passing legislation that's going to impact future governing body or, or, or members. We do that every day. We do that all the time. That's our role, right? We pass legislation because it's not just for right now. It's for, for the future. And that governing body has that right to amend any ordinance, any resolution. So this isn't cut dry in stone. And we want to do what's right. And we, we want to compromise. I believe in compromise. There has to be a happy medium for the sake of the people. And if other states are doing it, if other municipalities are doing it, then we should also do it. And I know that people are referencing the lawsuit. The lawsuit is, again, because this their ordinance was not written well. How do you give the people less than a year to adapt with the full ban? You can't do that. That's not fair, right? We all took an oath to be fair and just. And that's why we're all here. I don't believe in fear mongering. I believe in statistics, facts, and data. And there's been some presented tonight and I hear both sides, but there is no support for this ordinance. I think you've heard everyone state that tonight. Thank you, Councilwoman. I also wanted to just respond and acknowledge there was an inquiry regarding why there is no enforcement and fee set in this ordinance. And I just wanted to respond to that because that was a question that was not answered. Um, but if you will notice, we have moved all of our fees away from the ordinances and put them in a resolution format. And that is so that the provision to make any changes does not require a first and second reading. It can be done immediately by resolution if there's ever a need to change. So I just wanted to clarify that. And I think Mr. I'm sorry, Councilman Rutherford, you wanted to say something? I did. Um, so it just... I, I thought we were going to, we've been now three years that I've been on council when we've dealt with ordinances and had to make amendments. What has been said in the body is that if the amendments are not substantive, then it can continue. If they're substantive and it's on, it, it has to go back to first reading. It has to be advertised. So obviously the changes are substantive. What I thought uh, what we were going to do or what we could do is make the changes that are in the other one to this one and bring it back for first reading. But that's fine. It's, if that's not what we want to do, that's fine. I do want to. I want to want to say um, there were two other things. Um, the the enforcement piece. Uh, we we've talked about that privately, so we know that that is a gap. Um, but what we're also looking to do is extend the amount of time that we have to transition so that we can adequately address it because of enforcement is going to require funding. Um, it's going to have to be some money put behind it so that there are people that can do it because I echo what Councilman Castellino said. I don't want to set residents up to argue with each other. Um, but the affordability issue, it's always going to be a gap between the gas and the electric technology and you're going to have to buy something at some point in time and still use the existing equipment that you have. So that's always going to be an issue, whether we do it now or down the road. And last thing I'll say is, um, and I, I thought we were going to get into it during the back and forth over the ordinance, so I didn't say it earlier. Um, I think uh, understanding what the outcome is in Montclair is important. Um, I also think understanding what the outcome was in Maplewood is important. So, you know, I have no problem um, going through a process that incorporates whatever comes out of the Montclair uh, lesson. Whenever that happens, should that be in a week or two? Great. Should it be appealed or should it not happen in a week or two? That's fine, too. We can always take that into consideration uh, once they have that outcome. Uh, but to, to stop our process waiting for them to finish theirs, I think, is the wrong move. That's it for me, Council President. Thank you. I call for the vote. Is there a motion to approve 2817-23 on second and final reading? There could be a motion to defeat. And there doesn't have to be a motion at all, yes, right? Yes. There has to be a motion. Okay, so I'll if he, to but it. I have a procedural question. If there's no call to make a motion to approve, doesn't it just defeat <laughs> itself? Again, the council had a consensus to put on the agenda. It's going. It's on. Okay. So I move to. I move for the motion not to pass. It's Second. Motion Second. To motion, motion to, to defeat. defeat. Second. Okay. So. Okay. Let me take the roll. Councilwoman Castellino. Yes. 
Councilwoman Gebber Michael? Yes. Councilman Rutherford? Yes. Councilwoman Scarpa? Yes. Council President Williams? Yes. Thank you. The motion fails. All right. Now we want to. Thank you. Okay. Now we want to go back to public comment. Um, so at this time, I will entertain public comment on all other issues. Thank you. Good evening, Council President and members of the Council, Bill Sullivan, Scrincy Hollenbeck, uh, and uh, West Orange resident. Uh, I'm here this evening uh, with Jen Hardell. Uh, Jen is uh, the managing member of Blue Violet Row LLC. And uh, we're here this evening, as you know, I spoke with each one of you individually, but we're here this evening to really to introduce Jen um, and her business and to talk about or begin the dialogue of potentially of lifting the moratorium on uh, cannabis licenses in town, at least with respect to cultivation. Uh, that uh, we, we want to have um, really to begin the opportunity to um, talk about the fact that um, that her business has signed a lease for a property that was the subject of a prior letter of support. Uh, that uh, potential operator is not going to be doing that project any longer. And so the property owner has signed a, a lease uh, with Ms. Hardell's business. I don't want to take up any more time because we only have four minutes left. So I want to introduce Jen to talk about herself and her business. Hello. Nice to meet you all. Um, put my glasses on. Can't really see. So, you know, I'm Jen Hardell, owner and founder and CEO of Blue Violet Grow, a cannabis cultivation and manufacturing business. I'm also the senior vice president of operations for a cosmetic beauty brand. Um, I've been running manufacturing um, in the cosmetic industry for about 28 years. I've um, built factories, worked with engineers, architects, uh, finance, marketing, um, from beginning of concept to uh, full operating businesses. Um, I've been working for other people for you know, since I've graduated college in 1995. And when cannabis, uh, recreational cannabis became approved in the state, I saw an opportunity to try and move out on my own and, and start a business of my own while still running another business full time. I'm also a mother of two children, 11 years old and nine years old. And, um, you know, have been working for the last two years to try and, and get this business up and running. Um, I'm, it's a women owned business, you know, and, and it's cultivation and manufacturing. It's not retail. Um, I'm looking to um, try and be on the forefront of, of changing what cannabis looks like in some of these retail stores. I'm, you know, being an early license holder, I have an opportunity if I can keep this moving forward to to change kind of what everyone sees the business as. I'm trying to change and put a more mature um, product out on the shelf in the retail stores of this town um, and surrounding towns around us. I'm more focused on the healing properties of the plant, um, uh, trying to focus in on uh, micro dosing of the product and clean ingredients, clean stories, and try and get a better product out there for the local community. Um, I'm, besides my own experience, I am also have a lead advisor and one of my main investors of my business who built um, and sold his cannabis company in, in Connecticut um, to Green Thumbs. He's my main advisor on this project and is helping to um, advise in every aspect of there. Uh, my current business is also part of the advisors on my new team, the finance, marketing, directing, and sales. They're going to help and in, in push this all through. A little bit about Blue Violet Grow. Um, 
Uh, oh yeah, right. So I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just very nervous. So not really good at in front of people. I'm more behind the scenes kind of person. Um, so I originally received my approval in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Um, my letter of support and resolution from them. I used that and I got my conditional licenses for manufacturing and cultivation. Um, after that happened, my real estate ended up falling through. The landlord sold the property in Elizabeth um, after I even submitted my conversion application. So I'm, I needed to find new real estate, and which I did here in West Orange. And I signed the lease in West Orange. So I went from having my letter of support, my signed lease, my Your time my is finance. Up. Was up already? Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity to continue this Thank you. So Thank you, you can, very much. You can email the council at council at westorange.org with your thoughts. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment? Good evening, Council. Michaela Bennett, Old Indian Road. I just want to, I, I had no intention of speaking tonight, but. Um, at 9.45, I posted that we were still talking about an ordinance on second reading that you decided you were, you were going to kill. There's a way to manage a meeting so that seniors don't storm out because it gets too late. There's a way to manage a meeting, Council President, where if you knew that you were going to either table or kill, you could have gotten that accomplished. And people from West Nyack, New York, where I grew up, people from Princeton, could have left and been home. I, I, I find it absolutely, I find it absolutely incredulous that you did that. You wasted everybody's time. I, when they're ready, to, when they're ready, when you're ready to hear the ordinance, then you can hear what people have to say. But you lost seniors, you have 29 other resolutions, you have five other ordinance on second reading, and you weren't prepared to move forward with that. I, I, I just think it's tremendously disrespectful. And there was a different way to go about this where, you know, the community who, who that ordinance matters to could just come back when you're ready to move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in council chambers for public comment? Yes, please come forward. Everybody laughed at me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And by the way, if I had to mold all the leaves that fall upon my body, you would not be able to see me. Okay? <laughs> and I am serious. I live down here, so I have these beautiful trees. Tell me the address. I'm on 87 Kirk Street. Thank West you. New Jersey. <laughs> but anyway. I do. I mean, I shovel. I use my snowblower. I have a corner property. I am not lazy. I'm going to be 70 years old next month. I and I do it all. Okay. My neighbors know I am not lazy. I did retire though. Okay. So my is a, I mean, sometimes I do, I do rake my leaves and I fill up so many bags. As a matter of fact, I have to go back to Costco to get more. And it's okay, it's okay. I cannot see mulching all those leaves. Plus, where I live, there is no car. I have a third, I have a three family home and my third floor, I can't even rent it. Because the first thing people ask me is like, where am I gonna park? Where am I gonna park? So I, it's been two years, I'm not renting it anymore. I can't put up with tenants, that's it. So now I get this town ordinance, that's uh, whatever it is, it's been uh, accepted by the town, this mercantile license, I mean, this letter was issued on the 28th of September, and it says pay by October 1st. Well, it got to my house October 2nd. Did anybody think about this or letting us know ahead of time what was going on? At first they said, okay, it must be the state. I called up my sister in Caldwell. I called my nephew in Grossland. I called my friends in East Orange. Seems to be that it's only West Orange. It's only U.S. Orange. I mean, my taxes, I've been here since 1966. 
I bought my house 30 years ago, 45 I paid. Now I'm almost up to 16,000. You wanna just get me out. I mean, my family's been begging me to move out of West Orange, but I refuse to leave West Orange. Why? I don't know, but anyway. <laughs> No, I actually love it. It's closer to everything, but we have our problems. We do. I mean, everything has changed. Everything has changed. It doesn't matter. I used to live on National Avenue. It used to be beautiful, full of trees. Then they built 280. They knocked down. They took down all our trees. It's horrible. But anyway, I still go visit. And um, all right, so I live by Lady of Lords now. Okay. I just, I am upset. There were people here that um, we're gonna talk about this. And I think it's totally unfair. Did you think, or did it occur to you that I live also in the house? It's not that I have another house and I rent, I rent my house, it's a three family. So and now I'm gonna be paying $100 for myself. I'm already paying taxes, so $100, and then $20 and $20 for the next floor. I don't know how this is possible. I have other friends, one that lives actually a block away from here, she didn't come. And she, she has her daughter that lives downstairs. She lives upstairs. She's like, so I'm gonna charge, I don't charge my daughter. So how is this happening? Who came up with this formula? Why am I paying a hundred? I'm already paying taxes. And this year you raised our taxes twice. Now they're going to come by and they're going to say, okay, your house is worth a million dollars. Am I going to pay for a million dollars? I'm still there. Maybe my nephews, my nieces, whoever I leave behind, they might enjoy that money, but not me. Yeah. I mean, I don't understand. Why, why was this passed? And it just that West Orange adopted ordinance 2778-23. I mean, I mean, we are already paying a lot of money in this town. Again, I mean, my tenants complain about where do I park? They're giving tickets constantly up and right. Don't don't move here. If you have a car, don't move here. It's 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 so for two years I have not rented the third floor. I could be getting money. And I'm also the type of person, not because I want to say this. I have a tenant that's been with me now for 19 years. Last year was the first time I raised his rent. He only was paying me 1,100 because I knew he didn't have it. And I know what it's like, okay? But at the same time, after so many years, it has two beautiful bedrooms, gigantic living room, gigantic dining room, and a kitchen. I know I could be getting at least 2,300, but I don't charge that because I figured, okay, he's been with me all these years. It's fine. It's I'm helping someone. So, I mean, if we have to be fair. We have to be fair. I know what I could charge in the third floor, but I don't want to. I'd rather cut my own grass. I'd rather Time is up. My own snow. Thank you, Miss Anna. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so I hope we can change this. I really do, because it's not fair. Just October 1st, it's going to happen next year. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know where we answer her at the end. Yeah. So if if we we respond to all the public comment once all the pub commenters are complete. Okay. So we'll have a response for you. Yes, thank you. Yes, please. Sheila Lefkowitz, 703 Pleasant Valley Way. Thank you to Mayor McCartney and to our town council for taking a leadership role to ensure a public response to the recent Hamas terrorism on people from many nationalities in Israel. Thank you. I am the representative for a group of Pleasantdale residents who came to a town council meeting on September 5th meeting to advocate for the paving of their streets, Hoover, Cleveland, and Lincoln. Funding to pave these streets in resolutions 2813-23 and 2814-23 was rejected. Design for this project has been completed, but funding has not been appropriated despite PSE&G 
having given their portion to complete this project. The petition, <laughs> this petition, which I'm going to present to you tonight, is close to 80 signatures and demands the repaving of Hoover, Cleveland, Lincoln, that it move from a priority two status to a priority one status in funding, so repairs can commence without delay as soon as spring 2024. PSENG dug up these streets some three years ago, and the residents have been living with eroding patches and hazardous and perilous roadways uh, since that time. In your response to public comment tonight, I'm requesting number one, your commitment to reintroduce 281323 or 281423 or new legislation to specifically pave Hoover, Cleveland, and Lincoln and move these streets to a priority one status. And two, to acknowledge that the town has received funding from the for the specific purpose of fixing Hoover, Cleveland, and Lincoln, and that this money remains available for the sole purpose of repairing these streets. Please comment as exactly where this money is being held in our capital budget. Seniors make up some 20% of the West Orange population. Many seniors faced increased isolation, especially as we approach the winter. The Toby Cat Center should be increasingly available to serve the needs of our seniors as a pleasant meeting place uniquely situated within natural views and a peaceful surrounding where seniors can meet for a few hours to have friendly conversations and eat lunch and engage in a fun activity. As a member of the Older Adults Committee, I support the seniors that were here and are not here now because this meeting went on and on and on. I support Seniors United now, and I wish them good luck and success in the expanding, in expanding senior services, and I hope that they will give, be given the time and respect that they deserve at some future time. At no time should these new meetings conflict with any existing groups or meeting times. I know that that had been a concern in the past. I've come to be have come aware that the cannabis business seeking to open on Ashwood Avenue has lost sight control. I remind all in chambers tonight that there is a moratorium on any new cannabis businesses in this town and that no new cannabis businesses should be given any permission to open at this or any other West Orange location unless previously grandfathered. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else in council chambers? Come forward, please. Uh, good evening, James Jackson, One Ashley Road, West Orange, New Jersey. Uh, first and foremost, I want to say uh, thank you all. Um, as much as people don't appreciate it, I appreciate you all for doing the work. It does show commitment and it does show that you care what happens in West Orange. Um, I'm just here this evening um, uh, representing uh, as the CEO of Your Canna LLC, uh, an approved uh, cannabis cultivation business here in town. Uh, I saw tonight on the agenda... Um, that there was there is uh, a resolution to uh, open contracting to hire a consultant <laughs> uh, I'm, I just had a few questions um uh, one I just wanted to understand and and I want you to understand these are true questions um uh, that I'm hoping I can get answers to I'm not asking these in any condescending way I truly just want to understand just because there wasn't a lot of uh, information in, in in the resolution um First, I want to start by saying, you know, um, you know, myself and other people in town that have been that have been approved uh, by West Orange do have a lot of knowledge in this industry. Right. Um, my application for state that I've been approved is being used by the NJCTA as best in class application. Um, uh, I humbly uh, we humbly have just been awarded actually as of last week, um, the first N NJEDA grant. 
um, from the state of New Jersey for cannabis. Um, now I say all this to say like, you know, I'm not trying to, to, to brag. I'm trying to humbly ask that, you know, things continue to get introduced in cannabis. Um, and those that you have chose to pass forward and, and have some trust in to open in this town. And I understand there's more steps and this hasn't opened as quick as everybody has wanted. Um, that we just be included in the process in some way. That's really all this is. It's just, is it is really that. Um, and just wondering, um, you know, what is, I guess, the vision of said cannabis consultant? You know, what will actually be their role? Um, is that a role that's being taken over by somebody who is already doing that day to day? Um, in addition, um, you know, we talked about tax increase. Where are we getting the funds to be able to pay for said cannabis consultant, considering that that is not normally a cheap role to be able to hire somebody for? Um, I, I just want us to, to, to be weary. And, and I'm not coming out to say I'm against this. I'm just I'm, I'm coming here to, to, to ask questions because I want to be informed in this process. Um, but I also do want us to be weary in opening and selecting this person um, there are a lot of people that are said experts in cannabis, right? Um, that we do do the full due diligence. If this is the direction that we choose to go in, um, in selecting somebody in this role, um, and that they are an, an advocate and a help to this process, um, rather than somebody that could cause somebody to, uh, rather than somebody that could then cause another hurdle for cannabis businesses that have already been through so much, um, in this town, but you know, in general, trying to to, to open a business. So, um, just humbly a request that in some way we can be included in the process. Uh, that's really all I came here to say tonight. Um, and 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 again, appreciate all of your work. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Mr. Good evening, City Council. Good evening. What are you folks doing tonight? I tell you, you guys got a really difficult <laughs> I tell you, I thought I had a hard job. The uh, reason that I'm Can here, you state your name and address oh, for the record? My name is Pierre George. I live 42 Mead Street. When I was here previously, I talked about the marijuana store that's trying to open up on Washington Street. Today, I heard about this, uh, something, a growery, which they do plants on Ashford. Now, I was told financially they're not able to do it, but able, they would like to get other people to come in. My question to the council, is something like that transferable? Is that like, I guess it's like me having a liquor license and I cannot run my business financially, and I ask someone else to come in. So I guess that's my question to the council. If this Ashford location is, if they're financially unable or financially stable, can they transfer this title that they have to open up this business as a grower? So I guess that's probably my question. Uh, I know, uh, and my last question is, I have some petitions that I want to give to the city council about Mead Street. Uh, what's the best time to do that? Do you have them with you now? I don't have them with me today, no. You can drop them off at the clerk's office. We're here at 8.30 to 4.30 Monday through Friday. All right. You folks have a great night. I, I just wanted to clarify your question so that we can answer it properly, uh, Mr. Jordan. You said that can a business transfer their location? Well, no, it's not so much the location. It's what they're trying to do on Ashford Avenue. They presently are a glory, but if they're financially unable to run that business, can they bring somebody else in to transfer? And I'm just using the example okay. of a liquor license. Oh, we got it. I got it. I okay. have it. Thank you. And we'll respond. And we'll respond. All right. Yeah. Good evening. Brent Draper Scott, 70, uh, 75 Nestro Road. Uh, I want to um, say a few things. I never heard so many downright lies from two members of this council before about uh, the- um, I'm the sorry, bank. I didn't hear what you I said. I said, I had never heard so many lies okay. from two members of this council, yourself, council chair, and Ms. Casalino before 
regarding the gas blowers. It is just mind blowing. Okay, so I'm Mr. There. Mr. Scott. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking, please. But I'm the council. Yes, and I'm chair. speaking. So I'm going to remind I you. I have never of, heard. If you'll so give me a moment. Truth stated by two public officials. Okay. You two be right at home in MAGA world. I'm a remind. I was told totally disgusting. Now, the last thing I want to say is I want to um, support. I want to support the seniors of this town. They're 20 to 25 percent of the population of this town, and they deserve a senior center. Uh, they pay a lot of taxes, which you and Councilwoman Castellino voted to raise just recently. Again, for Councilwoman Castellino, it's her second time voting to raise my taxes. Uh, the seniors in this town deserve a senior center, and that should be the Toby Cat Center. I am fresh from New Orleans for my mother's 90th birthday. My mother lives in an assistant living community independently. She gets around quite well, and she needs that support of being able to go out with friends, being able to see friends, being able to meet younger people. And what has been proposed is an intergenerational center at Toby Katz, and that should become law. It is galling that so many people, including the mayor, who sat on the council for decades and did nothing to advance this, and Councilwoman Casalino, who has also sat on this council for a decade now and done nothing to advance this. So here are these people trying to block this when and trying to decide how it's going to be done when they never were for it to begin with. Mm -hmm. We need that senior center, that intergenerational center for West Orange seniors who are paying the high taxes that you, Councilwoman Williams, and you, Councilwoman Castellino, voted to impose upon us. You didn't leave it for a future council. You didn't say it was going to expire in one year or two years. Madam you Chair, put it there and it's permanent. The quorum where people cannot attack individuals. That's okay. Let him go. Let him go. He Madam, Chair, all day long. Madam Chair, as you know, I agree that this person shouldn't even be our town attorney. All right, that's it. Thank you. So I want to point out to you. Sir, time. can you I please ask to the clock, Ms. Williams, and you know it. Yeah, Ms. Williams, I still have the clock. Well, Ms. Williams, I still I have the clock. Stop. No, you don't. Yes, no, I do. You do. It's two minutes and 24 seconds. And I am ending your time and now. You can do that. Okay. And I hope that the town, the yes. people in this town, end your tenure. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in council chambers for public comment? Mr. Fagan, is there anyone on the Zoom audience for public comment? And can you also advise us how many people are on the Zoom at this time? Uh, yes, Council President. There's uh, 52 people on and seven people raised uh, their hand. How many on? 52. Oh, 52. 52. Okay, thank you. And seven have raised their hand. Raised That's correct. Okay, thank you. And uh, in the interest of time, I will forgo my report tonight. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. There's a lot of information that you need to share, but okay. I'm sorry, Council. I was saying, there may be some information that you, you should share, but that's Oh, okay. I, I can do it. It's it's that's not a okay. problem. Let's I... get through public comment. Let's okay. see where we are. Uh so it went off. I'm sorry, Phil, it went off. I uh, inadvertently uh, lowered your hand. Please re-raise your hand and I'll bring you in on public comment. Thank you. The computer is slow. No worries. We all need an opportunity to regroup. Mark Lieberman, Liebman, please uh, welcome to me and please state your name and address for the record. Uh Sure. Good evening. My name is Mark Liebman. I'm an attorney with Kiesa Shahanian and Gian Tomasi. I represent Silla Realty. I know it's a little bit out of order, but I've been on the Zoom since 630. I'd like to offer some comment on uh, second reading for 2815-23, if I could. Mr. Lieberman, could you please repeat who you're representing? Sure. It's Sila Realty, Inc. They own the Crest Ridge Apartment Complex. Sheila Realty. Sheila, S E L A. <clears throat> the owner of 200 Mount Pleasant. Oh, okay, Park thank Pass. you. And I don't know why my camera's not activating. <clears throat> I apologize for that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, uh, my comment is obviously, I've been in contact with Mr. Trank. I think you probably all know that we've been in communication with him. 
uh, your rent control ordinance has been expired for some time now, and you're getting ready on second reading to adopt a 3% increase. And I'd like you all to consider taking this off your agenda and tabling it to study it further, because we all know that inflation has far exceeded 3% for the last several years. And by limiting the increase to 3%, it's just unfair to your commercial landlords in town. Uh, the other thing is, I'm sure you know that there's a, a litigation pending against my client to increase the taxes on the property. Your rent control ordinance says that if the property owner gets the taxes reduced, they have to refund to the tenants any taxes that they get refunded by the town. But you don't have a corresponding ordinance that allows us to pass those costs back to the tenants should you successfully increase the taxes on the property. And I think that there's something wrong with that. So uh, we object to the ordinance in its current form. We don't object to rent control. And I will tell you that despite the fact that the ordinance has been ineffective for over a year, my client has not changed the amount that they're increasing the rents. They have maintained the 3%. Uh, so we definitely want to work with the town. Mr. Trank can tell you we want to work with the town. But 3% is just completely too low in the current economic environment. You could put money into a treasury bonds at over 5.5% today. 3% is not consistent with inflation and it creates an erosion in value. Thank you for your time. Thank you as well. Nigel Richards, welcome to the meeting. Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Nigel Richards. I live at 920 Pleasant Valley Way, West Orange, New Jersey. Pleasant Valley Way. Pleasant. Can you repeat your address, please? 920 Pleasant Valley. 920. Way. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> can everybody hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I mostly just have general questions. Um, my questions would be, I would like to know, like, I've seen, a, I, I, I watched a lot of you uh, made presentation about cost. I would just want to know how are these um, stuff or if it could be more public or if there's a way to make it more public for some of these things to be reached out to some of the residents. My, I have kids um, in town. My, my son goes to Mom Pleasant and some of the parents, I mean, myself, we're on the PTA, we're trying to, you know, make the town more, I guess, more, more friendly for our kids. And we just want to know, like, you know, where the tax is going and you know, how, how we can improve um, the, not only the education, but also the playgrounds and some of the stuff that's there. And also, uh, my wife was very curious about some of the, um, the new construction. One of them is very close to our home. I believe that's the storage facility that was approved. You know, um, how that's going to impact us here, as well as, you know, some of the new construction that's going on, how that's going to impact us and really get, we would like to be more involved and like to know more. I mean, many of the residents, some of us younger, we sometimes don't have the time to dedicate to always being on a town hall or a meeting or a council, but we would love to be more involved. And if you reach out to us, we would probably be able to assist as also, I am also an investment advisor. And while the person before stated you can get 5.5% on a treasury bond, it's not widely available. Everybody could access that amount of interest or, or even access that amount to get that capital. Usually you have to have over a million dollars to go to the bank to even access that you could buy a treasury bond, but most people don't even know that you could buy a treasury bond from treasury.gov. But it's not widely accessible. It's not wide, widely new knowledge, but you know, it's something that I believe you know the town can work with its residents to get better solutions. There are a lot of people who are willing. So that's all I have to say. I, I got a little too. Okay, night. thank you very much. If you don't mind, would you please um, send your comments to us in an email with your points? Um, it was very difficult to hear you. We could hear you, but you sounded extremely muffled. So we want to be able to respond to your comments. 
Um, so if you would just please send us an email and you can direct that to each of us collectively at council, C-O-U-N-C-I-L at westorange.org. And we'll be able to respond to more, more in detail to some of the things that you were asking us. I know I certainly was able to hear about the storage unit on Pleasant Valley Way and your yeah. concerns there. Um, but And then making sure there are activities for your children. Um, but outside of that, it was just very, very difficult for us to hear. So if you would please just send us an email, we'll be able to respond. Thank you. Sasha Academy, welcome to the meeting. Please state your name and address for the record. Hi, it's me, Zas Academy, again at Four Dawes Avenue, West Orange. Um, I I really want to go to bed. I thank you guys for all the hard work you're doing, but um, but I did hear a council member. I don't remember which one asking and discussing the idea of uh, more recreational fields and astroturf. I think I heard that. Uh, maybe I'm mistaken, but I would really would before I can actually. Um, in good conscience, let this go. I would strongly urge the council and the town, while it's wonderful to have recreational fields, we all want that, but to try to do a little research uh, that's readily available through the NIH, Nas National Institute of Health, and PubMed, that's, that um, artificial grass and astroturf is known toxic toxicity and a carcinogenic neurotoxicant, mutagen, and endocrine disruptor, terrible for the environment. And as the sun beats on it, it emits even more toxins into the air that are bad for our kids and bad for our, our environment. So I, you know, I guess the general, I guess the general theme here is that anything we do going forward, we have to take into consideration. Uh, Mother Earth, because we are living on it. And even AstroTurf can be very, very toxic. The life of it is only 25 years, and then it ends up in the ocean or a landfill. Again, toxic, not good for anyone. Maybe we can go back to grass. Just a little research. I would appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Claire Silvestri, welcome to the meeting. Please state your name and address for the record. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Claire Silvestri, 20 Grandview Avenue. I have some questions about a few of the resolutions on the agenda tonight. Regarding resolution 362-23, having to do with the combining of certain bond ordinances. Could Mr. Gross please explain what exactly is going on here? Are you using the $21.3 million borrowing to refinance the bond acquisition notes those one year financing that has extremely high interest rates right now that which paid for work already done in town and you're converting them to 15 year notes that have a lower interest rate or are you borrowing to spend on projects from 2018 19 and 20 that were never executed but you want to follow through on now in other words does this resolution save the town money on interest costs, or are you taking this opportunity to finance new capital projects and increase our debt and debt service costs? And could you also provide us with the interest rate on the notes and what is the interest rate you expect on the bonds? And if this proposal is approved, how much will our debt be both approved and borrowed? Also, I have a question on resolution 355-23 on the pool improvements. Wasn't this a project approved in the 2021 capital budget for $375,000? Why has it taken so long for the repairs to be made? Because in the ensuing years, it appears the cost has increased by $100,000. Regarding resolution 352-23, the emergency storm sewer repairs on Harrison Avenue, for $36,000. This is exactly the type of expenditure Councilwoman Scarpa and many residents asked Mr. Gross to provide from the 2022 budget as evidence to justify the need to collect $6 million more in sewer fees over and above our joint meeting obligation in this year's budget. 
Mr. Gross, I ask again that you provide any additional expenditures in 2023 that have gone towards sewer maintenance and repairs. And this leads me to a, uh, a few questions about the capital budget presentation that was made this evening. I saw that there was a proposal to replace a pumping station. I guess that could be considered sewer and maintenance, uh, repairs and maintenance. And the question is, if we've got all these $6 million for sewer maintenance and repairs, why would we be bonding that? And also ringing in my ears while I was watching that presentation were the words of Mr. Gross at one of the budget hearings saying that because our financial situation was so dire this year on the municipal budget that only essentials would be included in the capital budget. So last last meeting, the council approved two bond capital bond ordinances for $6 million set for road repairs and some remediation. And I assumed that those were the essentials. But now this evening, the mayor presents an additional $11 million. This is a, a great wish list, but it's it's not um, uh, the kind of, of budget that should be presented in these difficult times for taxpayers. I urge the council to recognize the, the huge increase in debt and debt service that we are currently experiencing and carefully prioritize and uh, projects and significantly reduce this capital budget. And one more thing, um, Mr. Gross says that the $11 million capital budget will only cost the taxpayer, the average taxpayer, $1.93 a year for 15 years. At Is that at current interest rates? That sounds really hard to believe. I'd love to see um, the, the backup for that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, John Blanton, welcome to the meeting. Please state your name and address for the record. Good evening again, John Blanton on uh, Forest Hill Road. Um, I'm sitting here as I watch. I came earlier with a lot of the other seniors. Um, and we had our nice little T-shirts on tonight that said, Seniors United Now, Son. Um, and I just want to say uh, to you guys that um, each of you have to have, if your parents are living, they have to be either my age a little older, which puts them in the senior category. And from sitting and watching our elders tonight and looking at the way, and I'm going to say we were disrespected that you spent three hours basically talking about nothing to put an ordinance again on hold while you had a bunch of people that wanted to speak tonight that were seniors. Please be respectful uh, of us. Uh, the next thing I wanna say is, um, I have three sons, three grandchildren, and I love them all to death. And but each time I hear us talking about expenses and how much things cost in this town, we keep increasing expenses around the children. I get it, and I understand the increases in the budget, but somewhere along the line, where do the seniors in this township get a return on their investment? Uh, we have a West Orange Department of Senior Services whose mission say that the Department of Senior Services programming uses the umbrella of the World Health Organization's eight domains of livability as guidelines for addressing the needs of seniors outdoor spaces and buildings, transportation, housing, social participation, respect, and social inclusion, which we were not able to do tonight because men or seniors had to go home and go to sleep, work and civil engagement, communication and information, community and health services. And I think you guys need to really start paying attention to what's going on in seniors, not only here in West Orange, but all the statistics that are being produced uh, throughout the country. And as we came tonight in regards to something that's on the agenda, children don't pay taxes. Children don't pay mortgages. Children don't pay sewer bills. Children don't pay taxes, the parents do. 
And I know there's a lot of children in our town, but there are also now a lot of seniors in our town. And you cut positions within the senior services department that addresses the seniors' needs. So my question is, when do you guys start putting things in the budget to increase the participation in the things that happen for seniors? I would hate to think that we would become the community that is known as the Dr. Kevorkians of seniors. And last but not least, I'm very concerned about what just happened with uh, one of the speakers where I saw the police officer get up and I don't know if it was the action to remove him from the town council chambers because you didn't like what he was saying. And if we're gonna start that, we need to be consistent in people who are being removed because we've had public officials threatened that weren't removed. And then because some you don't like what someone says, you're gonna have a police officer remove him. That is not leadership and it's very inconsistent. And the last thing is, if I could have Mr. Grove explain the item that's on the agenda for 25 Lakeside Avenue, the remediation that I think is a, almost $200,000 that is going to be spent on remediation to get some clarity on what that's all about. Thank you guys so much. Uh, don't want to be in your seats, but thank you again for all the hard work you put in. <laughs> thank you. Todd DeBoli, welcome to the meeting. Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, good evening, Todd DeBovey, 10 Burnett Terrace. Um, good evening, members of the council and Madam Mayor, if you're still in attendance, can't see you on the screen. Um, I've got some observations and questions relating to several of the uh, resolutions coming before the council this evening. Um, starting with resolution 350-23 which seeks approval to conduct further environmental red, red remediation investigation of the town's public works property. The reason for this work is stated that there are, and I quote from the resolution, 21 new areas of concern, quote unquote. The concern is not whether this additional work needs to be done, obviously it does, but it begs the question of how did this occur in the first place? What's the source of the contamination? The presumption is that given the prior investigations that have taken place on that site, sources have likely been identified. Um, and it also suggests that if the source of the contamination is on site, then there's not been proper oversight of operations and activities on the site for a very long time. And the responsibility for that is whatever administration's in place at the time. Um, that lack of oversight is the biggest cause for concern here because it speaks to a failure of this in previous administrations to oversee town operations. Um, I also want to address resolution 359-23 and 360-23, both of which relate to the removal of underground storage tanks with above ground storage tanks. Um, that by itself makes complete sense. But the issue here is that this was not put out to bid because the contractors are already engaged to perform other similar work for the town. And pursuant to state local public contracts law, that kind of practice is allowed. However, this administration has shown a history of not refusing to, but uh, executing on single bid uh, contracts or not putting out work using that that law as is the excuse. It's a it's a pattern of behavior, which basically causes people not to trust what's taking place at the government level. Um, ultimately, the practice ends up costing taxpayers needless expense just because it's legal. Um, I would recommend, recommend voting no to this resolution so that proper bidding can take place for this work, especially since it's costly. Resolution 369-23 relates to hiring an, an economic development person. I've said repeatedly that an economic development person is putting the cart before the horse. Instead, as I and many, many others have repeatedly said before this council over the years, 
This resolution should be for the hiring of a full-time town planner. An economic development person's job is to sell businesses and developers to come to West Orange and invest their time and money here. Um, but that can't happen while there's nobody overseeing the master plan that, that's in place, which would be handled by a town planner. Um, so on this, I also request that you vote no on the re resolution and hire a town planner, which, by the way, a town planner, a good town planner, would actually fill the role of the cannabis director that you're considering tonight, which I also think should be shot down. Um, resolution 370-23 relates to additional costs to purchase and install a fence on the future library site. Question here is why wasn't this and many other items not included in the original RFP since we have now seen in excess of 18 change orders, which is an excessive number of change orders on any job. In addition, what about the parking lot? Was that included in the original library budget or will that also be another future change order? All this speaks to a lack of proper planning and oversight of this project from day one. And it shows because we don't have an open library. Uh, and it can't open with the, with the condition of the, of the parking lot as it is now. It's a safety hazard. Last and but not least, and probably the most important, is Resolution 363-23, 363-23, for the emergency extension of the trash and recycling contracts. Your time is up. Thank you, Mr. DeVoe. Amy Gallant, welcome to the meeting. Please state your name and address for the record. Oh, that's me. Hi, I'm Amy Gallatin. I'm at 1068 Smith Manor Boulevard. First and foremost, I want to say with a giant heartfelt thank you for myself and on behalf of a giant grieving there isn't even a word to describe the pain that we feel. The community of the Jewish community for your support and your unequivocal stance against terrorism, sheer unequivocated terrorism. We all, or, or at least I'm speaking, but I, I, I know that I'm speaking for so many that the innocent lives of Palestinians are in our hearts as well. And they are in yours as well. And I know that Palestinians are not Hamas, but Hamas is a terrorist organization. And I am so grateful that our township recognizes that Israel is a democracy that recognizes the rights as we do in here in America and of, of women, of men, of LGBTQ, we are an embracing society or Israel is an embracing society as we are that would not occur in a land controlled by a terrorist organization like Hamas, which is happening. So I understand that this is a very conflicted thing in our town. And I, and I feel for our Muslim neighbors who out, who are our friends, who are peaceful partners. And I just want to say thank you very much to, especially to our mayor, Susan McCartney, who had the fortitude to stand up and say, yes, we stand with you and to raise our flag. And I wanna thank the St. Patrick's Day Committee for their stance. And I wanna thank the Italian Heritage Society, and I'm sorry if I am boggling your name, but uh, the formal name that is, but I wanna thank that community for standing up and allowing this our flag to be flown right now in, in solidarity. That is all I have to say. 
I pray for peace. I pray, pray for harmony. We are one. And thank you. Thank you. Uh, Council President, there are no other hands raised for public comment. That will close public comment. Thank you very I much. I would gladly give my report if you so permit. Yes, please do. I can do it from, from here. Uh, tomorrow in, in uh, council chambers here from 6.30 to 7.45 is a program uh, for uh, domestic violence. October is Domestic, domestic Violence Awareness Month. And uh, this is a, a program that will allow individuals to experience what a victim of domestic violence has to, has to deal with once uh, they decide to reach out for help. So the challenges and frustrations experienced by women affected by domestic violence will be will be discussed, and uh, there also will be ways individuals can help. This is kind of short notice. This has been on our website and has been promoted on social media, but it is happening in council chambers uh, tomorrow evening on October 11th. Um, we also had this past week uh, what in the past has been uh, a coffee with a cop this year it was faith in blue a uh, coffee with a cop and it builds builds bridges to more inclusive uh communities um and what it is is uh, people come in dunkin donuts uh and and there's uh, uh several police officers there where they can sit down and they can discuss their concerns uh and, and issues uh with with police officers obviously the mayor was there and councilwoman Gabriel michael was there uh, i'm not aware of who else might have been there uh, but that's uh, that's that's a program that we hold annually and only in the absence of COVID did it not take place. Uh, I also want to uh, bring uh, to attend to West Orange residents attention, uh, more so a public service announcement. Just remind them that we have uh, uh, three uh, don't block the box to keep traffic flowing here in West Orange. There may be others in other communities, uh, but what that box means is that do not enter that box. Uh, keep that box open uh, regardless of if, uh, where you are in traffic to be aware. If you can't pass through the box and a light turns red, then you need to stop before the box. And uh, there's one here, uh, Town Hall Driveway. There's one on Pleasant Valley Way. And there's one uh, right by Aspect on Prospect Avenue. Uh, also, we have uh, on Saturday, October 28th, is you can turn in your unwanted expired medication. That's really a... Uh, a National Awareness Day, uh, because here in West Orange, we have a collection box inside the police department, and you can drop off your unwanted expired medication 24-7, uh, uh, 365 days a year. So certainly you can take advantage of it uh, on October 28th from 10 to 2, but anytime uh, you're welcome to bring it into the police department and utilize uh, the collection box inside the lobby at 60 Main Street. Uh, coming up, on um, October 25th, uh, there's a free concert by the West Orange Community Band, and this is sponsored by the, uh, the, the West Orange Community Band is sponsored by the West Orange Recreation Department with additional support from West Orange Schools and Liberty Middle School Auditorium, 1 Kelly Drive, October 25th uh, at 7.30 p.m. Uh, also on our website, uh, we have our leaf fall collect or fall leaf collection uh, a schedule. Um, there's different, uh, if, if you live on a town road uh, or if you live on a county road, both this information is posted on the website. Uh, the important days to remember uh, is that leaf, leaf pickup will begin in West Orange and uh, on Monday, October 30th. And the last day public works will be picking up leaves is Wednesday, December 27th. As I say, if you check on our website, there is the county schedule on there, uh, county roads, that is, uh, and they may be operating on a slightly different schedule. Um, we also have a West Orange Shredding Day coming up on Sunday, October 15th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, this is, I think, a semi-annual event at the uh, West Orange Environmental Center, 590 Mount Pleasant Avenue. Uh, the next scheduled date is uh, in uh, April of next year, 2024. Um, and this is for receipts, financial documents, uh, personal information, no junk mail. 
no plastic bags, and no previously shredded paper. This is a free event for town residents, but ID is required. Um, many people may not be aware that the West Orange uh, Arts Council building, the West Orange Arts Center, is uh, is closed. Uh, I believe it was last winter, a pipe burst, and they are undergoing repairs, and they are, are still running uh, programs. Uh, so you can check their website at woarts.org uh, to support them and find out how you can support them and uh, what events that they might be doing. But their building is is closed and undergoing repairs. Um, there were several events, proud West Orange moments this past week, West Orange High School Marching Band Invitational. There was the uh, West Orange Hispanic Foundation Partnership. I believe that was at Washington Street School with RWJ Barnabas to provide free flu vaccines. There was the Italian American flag raising and uh, the OSPEC Jazz Fest can was canceled. That's certainly not a proud moment, but uh, it was... Uh, it, it, there was a rain, it, it rained on the initial date. It was rescheduled and unfortunately had to be canceled a second time. So they, they will be back in full force uh, next year. Uh, the health department is um, giving, uh, giving out free COVID-19 test kits. Uh, you can call 973-325-4131 uh, to find out availability. And you can also pick them up online. This information, by the way, is on our website uh, at westorange.org. Uh, first come, first serve, while supplies last, that's always true. And um, uh, finally, uh, this past Saturday uh, at the uh, corner of Mellon Avenue and Pleasant Valley Way, uh, the uh, uh, honorary street sign was unveiled for uh, C.J. Morgan. Uh, he was a 20, uh, 2015 graduate of West Orange High School and certainly a standout wrestler, and he continued his athletic career at West Point. Uh, as you all know, he was tragically killed in a training accident on June 6, uh, 2019. And the unveiling of the street sign where he grew where he grew up now gives Mellon Avenue the honorary distinction of being known as C. J. Morgan Way. Um, as fate would have it, as the sign was unveiled, the skies opened up with a pouring rain, and uh, it, it almost symbolized. Uh, symbolically represented the many tears that West Orange has shed over his uh, his tragic death. He certainly was beloved by the entire community, and despite the rain, it will not prevent sunshine from ever warming this corner in the hearts of all that knew him. Uh, and that, uh, Madam uh, Council President, uh, concludes my uh, report for this evening. Thank you, Mr. Fagan. We appreciate your information. Mr. Puglisi is not with us this evening. So uh, no, he is not. Please check the county website uh, for detailed information, additional information from the county. Um, so responding to public comment this evening, um, Ms. Lefkowitz just wanted to point out that, of course, while it has not been uh, voted on and or approved, uh, but the 2021 street improvement phase two plan does include Hoover Avenue, Cleveland Terrace, Lincoln Avenue, Mount Pleasant Place, Lancaster Terrace, Normandy Terrace, Manchester Road, and Chestnut Road. And those are priority one. Um, so I am happy to report as long as uh, this budget in some capacity is passed, then your wish uh, will be that of a command. Um, also, uh, Mr. Lieberman, the representative for 200 Mount Pleasant Avenue, 3% rent control ordinance, um, certainly agreed. Um, however, 3% is consistent with most of the um, restrictions in our neighboring towns. Certainly would ask the administration um, to confirm that information. Uh, the ordinance, as it was explained to us, um, sunsets, um, every couple of years and therefore um, ours did sunset. And because we have had some concerns uh, from the public, we wanted to make sure it is put back into place. Um, as far as the uh, response to the bond ordinances, what is being combined? 
interest rates on notes and bonds. Certainly we will give the administration an opportunity to respond to that. Also wanted to, again, when we get to the ordinances, just in the light of time, we will deal um, with the comments and the discussion at that time. Um, as far as being respectful to our seniors in their time, um, I will offer my apologies. Um, we do and support um, our seniors and their need for a senior facility. Um, however, in not disregarding their time, uh, we knew that we had a hot topic item on the agenda. Um, I don't foresee any uh, challenges with the senior ordinance. We all uh, put that on second reading and we're willing to um, support the changes as well as support the needs of our seniors throughout the community. Um, we also talked about cannabis entities. Again, as you know, we do have a moratorium in place. So whatever is the will and pleasure of my colleagues collectively, um, we can address any additional cannabis entities. Um, it was our sentiment collectively that we wanted to see an entity open uh, before we made uh, too many additional changes to the ordinance. As far as the cannabis consultant is concerned, um, we are looking to, based on the recommendation from the chief of police, hire someone who is absolutely knowledgeable and has experience in the cannabis uh, realm. Um, certainly those costs will not be incurred by the municipality. Um, those costs will ha have to uh, come from the entities that are looking to open. And again, until we understand what that is going to look like, we can't communicate any costs at this time. Uh, but that is the direction we want to make sure. And certainly while we understand um, that the cannabis entities that are coming into our town, that you all are knowledgeable and, and certainly must abide and comply with the law, um, there are certain things that our chief of police has you know, identified to us that he just doesn't have the knowledge and the capacity um, to understand and enforce. And what we want to do is make sure that just as much as you all are good business partners, that we are a good business partner. We want you all to be successful. Of course, there is a financial incentive for you all's success. Um, but as a municipality, we want this to be done right. Um, we have a tremendous amount of concerns from residents in the in the town. We've heard that over the past two years that we've been discussing having a business open. Um, so at this point, we're just looking to make sure West Orange is a model um, municipality and that we help you all to the best of our ability, navigating the unknown um, and that you all in kind do the same for us as a community. So I appreciate your concerns, mm -hmm. but nothing to harm uh, the businesses, certainly just to help escalate um, you all doing the best that you all can, as well as us as a community doing the best that we can to support you. So I hope that answers your questions. But if not, we can certainly yield to the chief of police and he can provide a little bit more clarity. And I don't think he would uh, be opposed to doing that. Um, and again, several questions about the budget, but we'll get to those. Those items will uh, more than likely um, be removed from the consent agenda. I'm certain uh, I have several questions and I'm certain my colleagues will have them as well. I think that will um, complete the gamut of my responses. If there's anything I missed, um, certainly uh, my colleagues uh, may be able to pick up on that. Councilwoman Scarpa. Yeah, thank you. Um, let's see, we'll start at the top here with Michaela Bennett. I have to agree with you. Disrespectful is the same word that I had, that Sheila left with Brent Scott, John Blanton, it is incredibly disrespectful, not only to our seniors, who we know are vulnerable, but to Anna Carbone and everyone who came here with her to talk about an issue. They thought the public comment was at seven o'clock. For them not to get an opportunity to speak until like nearly 10 o'clock is just disrespectful. And I wanna ask that that never happens again. The, the information we got on the blowers was important, but it should have waited. It should have waited until the public had an opportunity to comment on whatever they needed to. When I saw Lee Saul walk, shut down and walk out of here so dejected, my heart broke. And I don't think this is the way we should be treating our seniors. You know, it's kind of indicative of the way we have to date. 
And I think we need to show them a little bit more respect. Um, Anna, I have, I know I've spoken with you and I do have concerns as well. Um, I had asked our clerk to get me the statue, the New Jersey state statue, which she gave me looks like it might be an abstract from the entire thing. I don't think it's, this is the, is this the entire statue? Like that. It looks like it might just be the, in, because it's not very specific. It's a short paragraph. Um, we need to research this. And I have a lot of questions. I guess they would probably be for Mr. Gross. Um, I would like to know, I don't see any specific guidelines here from the state about fees or software or reporting. Um, we need to understand exactly, I need to understand exactly what we are required to give to the state and in what format. I mean, we've given 30 year tax abatements to commercial real estate developers for years now. And now we're trying to balance our budget on the backs of small business people and people who own two and three fam four family homes, this is not right. You know, this went through in the heat of the night at one o'clock with a number of different ordinances. And we just, we need to look at this more closely. I would like to know what the, exactly what the municipality's responsibility is in reporting to the state. What software programs other municipalities are. I know we're, using a third party firm, perhaps that's a very expensive way to do it. You know, most software pro, this seems to me like it should be a fairly easy software program to have that just kind of figures out, gives you spits out whether someone has renewed a license or not. So I want to understand the cost of this third party because we're charging over a half a million dollars. Uh, we're generating about a half a, over a half a million dollars of revenue from this. What is the cost of this third party to us? What uh, software are other municipalities using and how are other municipalities implementing this? I also wanna understand why is this not in chapter five with licensing? Why did we need to create a whole new chapter, chapter 33 for this? And why are the fees scheduled from October to September? Typically this would be like annually, January to January. January. So those are kind of some of the questions that I hope you can answer for me and um, for the rest of the people who unfortunately did not get an opportunity to ask you their questions. Uh, Ms. Lefkowitz, um, thank you for coming out. You know, uh, we're all in support of the Jewish community. I, um, I, I think all of you know that. Um, I appreciate it's, it looks like we do have some priority for your streets. So I think we're gonna have some good news on that front. Um, and I wanna thank you again for advocating for our seniors and all you're doing on the Older Adults Advisory Board. Um, our senior, all of you are right, Brent Scott, our seniors are over 20% of the taxpayers of this town and they are not getting a return on the investment of their tax dollars. The sewer tax has disproportionately affected our seniors. They are not well represented. They are not give, given a lot of money in the budget. And they do not have a senior center. And we have the Toby Katz Center laying dormant at lunchtime most days. The seniors need a place to go and to be able to speak with a friend and to be able to relax and we have something there that they can utilize, which will not cost the taxpayers any money. And it is the very, very least we could do for them. And I wanna speak directly to Mayor McCartney. We appreciate so much that after a decade of advocacy, you have finally understood the needs of our seniors and have finally worked to give them a voice and a board, but they, overwhelmingly have come here tonight. Rosary Morelli has gone to many seniors meetings all over town. They want a senior center and they want it now. They cannot wait. And Toby Katz is laying there dormant 
at lunchtime. There is absolutely no reason why we can't, uh, can't get this open for them. I know Laura Van Dyke doesn't have a lot of staff, and that is exactly why Sun Seniors United Now, which is a group of 30, 40, and growing seniors in this community have gotten together to be volunteers. They want to volunteer to be part of this community to help all of the existing programs that are there. They don't want to displace Pastor Adams. They'll be able to help him. They don't want to displace anybody who's already there. We want everyone to be able to rent out the CAT Center and continue to make the revenue that we do. But it's only fair that in those hours when that is dormant, there is some time and space for them to be there. And I've, I've said this to you before, I have watched so many of the seniors that I love, many that I go to the pool with around town that I've been friends with for a decade, deteriorate with COVID, but now they still do not have enough to do. Laura Van Dyke and Noelia are doing a wonderful job with all of the programs. I know how hard they work, but we are united. The seniors here are united and want their fair share and they wanna help Laura and you to do what's right for the seniors in our community. And they want to, the Toby Center, Toby Cat Center opened now at least two or three days a week so that they have somewhere to go now that the pool's closed. Um, Madam right. Mayor, we right. can't but hear you. It cost anything. It's laying there dormant now. Mm -hmm. So All that's, right, thank that's you. where the seniors are. Um, uh, Pierre George, thank you for coming out again. Um, I I think Council President spoke to this, but we do have a moratorium on cannabis. Uh, no, the license cannot just be transferred. And uh, we were very clear when we constructed that cannabis ordinance that we wanted to um, limit the number of cannabis entities that we have in, in this town. So to Sheila Lefkowitz, who was in, instrumental in helping to draft that, um, I believe that most of the residents in this town are would like to keep, maintain the limit on the, uh, on the cannabis entities. Uh, let's see. James Jackson, um, you asked about our cannabis. Um, consultant. Uh, we, that you're right, that cannabis consultant RFP or whatever it is, is so vague that I can't figure out what that person does. And I don't see the value in that job description of what that person would do for us. We don't have the budget for that person. And quite frankly, we, our cannabis businesses are not even up and running. We don't know how much money they're going to make. And I don't think it's fair to hit you guys up with, for more money already. Well, we don't even really understand clearly what the need is. What we do know we need in this town, I agree with Todd DeBovey, is a town planner. So I would like to see our resources go for a town planner. So I will not be vo voting for that environmental person and I will not be voting for that economic development person either because what we really need is a town planner. And I think if we had one, some of these other uh, problems would be mitigated. Um, Claire Silvestri, thank you so much for um, your scrutiny of all of these uh, bond ordinances. I had similar questions. I am going to... Um, leave it to Mr. Gross to answer those questions, but I just have one other question. Um, typically we get a supplemental debt statement when we have these bond ordinances. I didn't see it, I don't know if I missed it, but if I did, you know, let me know where it is, or if not, I would like to see it and I'd like to understand that borrowing this money will do to our overall debt. Let's see. John Blanton, thank you again for all of your work with our seniors. Um, I think your questions about 
like the Lakeside Avenue uh, remediation are very, very important. Um, as Todd DeBovey was asking as well. So again, that's something I'm going to ask Mr. Gross to talk to us about. We all have concerns about what's going on there and it's not well understood. Uh, Todd, I do think we have to understand how we got there. Uh, in terms of the storage tanks and um, your other questions that were not bid out, I had similar concerns. Uh, I always said that I would not vote for ordinance or any resolutions that were not bid. And um, I know in the past, Mr. Gross has seemed to want to use engineering firms that have started the work or not, or he has some relationship with that he knows will do the work well, but I'd like uh, Mr. Gross to address that as well. So that's about it. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, good evening to all of you who are still here with us uh, this late in the evening. Um, thank you for your advocacy, both in person and on Zoom. I'm going to try and make my remarks brief, especially because a lot of the topics mentioned we're going to discuss again when we actually go through the resolutions and the ordinances, and it's 11.40 p.m. So first off, I am in support of opening the moratorium for cultivation, 100%. I think it's important. Uh, there's revenue there. Um, other towns are making money and we can be making money off of it. And cultivation is a great way. There's no in and out foot traffic. It's You're just growing in there and that's it. The only people in and out are people who work there. Um, uh, the mercantile tax, uh, we will, council president already addressed. Um, regarding the street repairs for Hoover, Cleveland, and Lincoln, that's on the, for the capital budget. Cannabis coordinator, I am in support of. We do need it. Uh, the chief has mentioned it. We have read his emails on the record as to why it is needed. And I'm hoping the chief will speak more to it um, as we discuss that ordinance. Um, your Canna, congratulations on receiving a grant for 250,000. Very excited for you guys. I have to be honest, I did not hear about it, nor did I know about it until after the, the fact. And I wish the, the mayor and the council were we're aware of it. I, I mean, let me, I actually, I don't know if you were aware, Mayor, so let me not assume, but I wish we were aware of it so we could have been there as well to support because it is hopefully going to be a West Orange business. Um, Crestridge Properties, I'll defer to our attorney, uh, Mr. Trank. Um, regarding the bond notes for Resolution 362, I'll defer to Mr. Gross. Regarding seniors, I am 100% in support of the CAT Center as a senior center, but not just that center. Why Why does it have to just be that center? There are other municipalities that are um, larger than West Orange that have multiple senior centers, and we should have them at where the mayor wants it, which is the new library location. We should have one also where the new affordable, senior affordable housing unit is going to be. We have that vacant, right, 7,500 square foot space that can also be another senior center. We are a large municipality. It is not easy for seniors to get around easily um, throughout the town. And so to, to offer more locations is just, I think, a great way to service to service our, our seniors. Um, and then regarding the economic development coordinator, um, I am not in support of this uh, resolution because I believe, you know, the majority of the council made it clear in the last meeting that we, um, West Orange needs and deserves a full-time planner. We are technically a city with over 50,000 residents. We need a full-time planner and I support with economic development experience, which is important. Um, and the questions about the library and budget, I deferred to the administration and then all the resolutions um, that were mentioned, I will discuss when we get there. I too believe in um, you know going out to bid or getting multiple proposals and, instead of just going with the vendors um, that we already work with, so. And that ends my remarks in three minutes. Thank you, Councilman. You're welcome. My turn. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Sullivan, uh, Ms. Hardell, uh, I echo the sentiments of my colleague, uh, Councilman Geber Michael. I think uh, we um, will have to revisit um, both the moratorium, but also the process for um, reviewing applications and um, having a better understanding of how to move through that process. Uh, one of the things that was that I said on the record at the last uh, hearing we had was that uh, we should have the the cap on licenses 
uh, tied to the type of license. Most of the complaints that I have heard uh, in town with regard to cannabis have been with regard to dispensaries. Um, cultivators don't bring the same uh, quality of life issues. So um, I think that's something worth exploring, but we do have a very packed schedule. It's already quarter to midnight and we haven't even gotten to the agenda yet. Um, so I don't know when that'll happen, but I do think it, it should happen and eventually it will. Uh, Ms. Carbone, thank you for your advocacy. Uh, you certainly have brought this up um, to me in the past and, and again tonight, and I think you did so eloquently. Uh, I look forward to um, Mr. Gross's response um, to your questions regarding the mercantile tax. And I think it was the council president, I could be wrong, uh, said that it's a state mandated thing. If If it is state mandated, I'd like to know I, I just want to know, is it state mandated? And if so, the uh, my council colleague, um, Council Ms. Garpa, uh, says that the information that she's been provided doesn't provide that level of detail. So certainly would like to see what the state does expect of us. Uh, Ms. Lefkowitz, thank you again for your advocacy. Your concerns have been uh, addressed. I will say that um, I think Toby Cat Center is a good intermediate step um, for our seniors. I don't I don't uh, think it is ideal long term. I do think they need a larger and uh, dedicated space, uh, but it's something that we can use now. Um, Mr. Jackson, thank you for thanking us. <laughs> this is such a crazy space sometimes, so it's good to get that kind of feedback. Um, the one question that was not answered yet that you raised was where is the money coming from? What we've discussed in here to pay for the the consultant, what well, we've discussed in here uh, every single time this issue has come up is assessing the licensees uh, for what the expected fee is going to be for the consultant, running it in a fashion similar to how uh, we handle the consultant that uh, addresses the recycling center. Um, again, that consultant is a township employee. He answers to the township, but his uh, compensation is paid for by the recycling center. Uh, Mr. George, I think, um, so if I understand your question correctly, I believe they would be allowed to have new investors. I don't know, they, they can't transfer the license. Um, the way I understand the ordinance, they would be allowed to have new investors or replace old investors. However, they would have to let us know. Uh, so there's some some uh, disclosure requirements with regard to the ownership um, of the of the property, the business, uh, but they certainly are allowed to uh, take on new investors. Um, with regard to Mr. Scott, I think um, I think the approach we took with him um, and, and Mr. Blanton uh, spoke to this as well um, was reactionary and short-sighted and inconsistent with how we've handled folks in the past. Uh, Rachel Hersey, uh, at one point in a prior council meeting was um, required to leave. Um, Mr. Uh, Scott was uh, requested by council president to be removed. Um, but folks that have said and done far worse in this chamber we're allowed to stay. So if we're going to go down that road, we need to be consistent and we need to be fair. Um, one of the commenters tonight um, at a prior council meeting said some really horrible things about me. Um, and I didn't object to him being able to say them. I didn't like it, it wasn't true, um, but the public has a right to express themselves and it is, you know, it comes with the territory. So, um, you know, while it's uncomfortable and sometimes um, egregious or sometimes um, full of malice and sometimes inappropriate, um, that's part of what we have to deal with as elected officials, whether it's fair or not is a whole nother discussion, uh, but to remove people because they uh, don't express themselves, unless they're being threatening um, or using, you know, inappropriate language or uh, being completely disruptive uh, and not um, heeding the calls for order, 
Uh, I think they should be allowed to stay and express themselves even when we don't agree. All right. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing some feedback on the rent control ordinance. I will say that I have reached out to other municipalities to get insight on how they handle rent leveling. I met with Mr. Smoraldo about that, um, trying to understand how we can um, provide resources for um, landlords and tenants uh, when there are disputes and how we can do that fairly. Uh, so we're working on that. That is a separate issue from the rent control ordinance um, and the 3% increase. I can understand landlords wanting to be able to increase it more, especially when property taxes go up sometimes by 3% or more, uh, but it is really meant to, um, to be fair to the folks that are having the hardest time, at least in my opinion, um, with some of the high rents that are in town. I think our average rent middle of the road is about $3,000 a month in West Orange, which is very difficult for young people in particular and folks that are challenged financially um, to meet. Um, can't tell you much, Mr. Richards, about the storage facility other than it is uh, being built as we speak. I've shared my concerns about that project, the suitability, of that type of business in that corridor, as well as the appropriateness of, um, of uh, you know, building on that particular site with the steep slope behind it. Uh, but nevertheless, it's going forward. So um, they're, you know, they're going to be neighbors, they're going to be constituents, and um, we're going to have to deal with them and, and be fair with them as well. Um, Ms. Kademi, uh, her, your concerns were addressed with the exception of the turf and the artificial grass. Um, I, I was not aware that they are toxic. Um, what I am aware of uh, are that injuries um, to athletes are more prevalent on turf and artificial surfaces than on natural surfaces. Uh, I am for more amenities in town. Um, I think part of our concern should be the health and welfare of the athletes that use it. Um, so I, I think that's a part of the consideration whenever we get to it. Um, Ms. Silvestri asked for some explanations on the bond ordinances. I'll leave that to Mr. Gross. Uh, and I understand Ms. Silvestri thinks that now is not the time to uh, borrow additional money, although I am also aware that in her 15 years or so of advocacy, there's never been a good time to borrow money. Um, Mr. DeBove, you ask a very good question. How did we get here with regard to the contamination uh, on Lakeside Avenue property? Um, Mr. Blanton asked some questions regarding that as well. And I'm interested in Mr. Gross's response. Um, it's either, you know, at the end of our uh, commentary or when we get to the ordinance. Um, I, I wanted just to make uh, a statement about uh, my presence at events on Sunday. So this past Sunday, uh, there was an LGBTQ pride march uh, along South Valley. Um, Harper's Cafe was instrumental in organizing it. I, I've, oh, no, I'm sorry, that was on Saturday. On that Saturday, I found out about it. Um, after I completed my obligations at the church, I stopped by, but it was a little too late. So do apologize to those that were looking for more elected official support. Um, we are certainly allies, and I think I can, and you know, very rarely can any of us speak for all of us, but on, on this, I think I can. Uh, all five of us are allies to the LGBTQ plus community um, and just, you know, either, lack of um, timely communication or, or schedule challenges prevented uh, our presence there. But with regard to events on Sundays, it, it is almost impossible for me to attend events on Sundays. So for those of you that schedule things on Sundays uh, and you wonder why I, I may not be there, um, there are a few Sundays where I can, but the vast majority of them um, I, I cannot attend uh, community events on Sundays. It is my Sabbath. I am a pastor of a church. I have responsibilities there. 
Uh, so while I would like to be at many of those um, events, I, I just cannot. Uh, that concludes my comments. Thank okay, you. Councilman, Councilwoman, Casalina. Thank you, Council President. Uh, Anna, thank you for coming out this evening. I caught you in the beginning of the meeting, and I, I hope I saw Mr. Smeraldo. I hope you were speaking with you out there. But I also hope we, which I had asked earlier uh, today with the administration to give a quick rundown on the merchant uh, mercantile license. A lot of questions, a lot of kinks in the system, especially first time rolling it out. And I think where the pricing um, comes into play and hopefully administration could, could enumerate this for us is other towns may charge one fee, but they're charging multiple fees for 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 different reasons, and we're charging one fee. So if you could articulate that, not only for the residents' sake, our business owners' sake, and and for us, because I I get you know just to follow the bouncing balls is a little complicated with this one. So I appreciate that, and I uh, appreciate everyone's frustration with the with with the rollout because um, again a new process. And uh, it's it's been uh, challenging for all. Okay, let's talk senior services. So I don't um, I don't mind Mr. Uh, Scott's theatrics this evening, but what I do mind is um, I don't want our seniors to feel that we are not doing all we can for them. And I see the Seniors United now and the shirts, and it makes me, I'm gonna be honest with you, kind of sad that that you need shirts to, to, to feel that way because we have done nothing but try to improve the programming for the sake of our seniors. And let me just give a little rundown uh, for all, I think Mr. Scott stepped out so someone could fill him in on this rundown. So 2015, when I came on board, um, there was talk of lack of programming for our seniors. So I immediately went to Partners uh, for Health with uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Roz has steered me to them and we received a $10,000 grant to initiate a town-wide senior citizen survey which we implemented. It took about six months, very thoughtful. We worked with all seniors in every uh, every uh, neighborhood of the community. We got the high school involved to help us input. It was a great, it was a great um, programming and exercise. From that, from that uh, senior citizen study, we had determined from that study that our seniors in desperate need of improving our transportation, for them, and also they were in need of housing as well of additional programming. So immediately we expanded our senior uh, jitney services, which um, obviously we have that for the commuters, and we extended uh, we extending services during the day to uh, our seniors. Anyone here could call into the program. And, and be transported. There's different locations that were added. Unfortunately, this year, and again, it's a, a, a tough budget year, I did not support it, but 11,000 from that senior transportation um, uh, budget was uh, deducted from this year's budget. So again, we wanna add for our seniors, but we also have to make sure we add the money in to do so as well. So um, we'll see how that pans out. Um, so with that, we, we, we hired, uh, from, uh, we went for another grant, uh, and received a grant to hire Dorothy Sanders as a senior livabilities coordinator and all with, um, when we go for these grants, it's very, very, um, labor intensive. So I appreciate it. Uh, and I appreciate all the, uh, support that the staff had given to get these grants and we were able to enact our Aging Well West Orange program. And with Aging Well West Orange is the name of our senior program. Um, we have taken that and we initiate other grants and Ms. Van Dyke has been very successful with the master gardening program, um, multiple other programming that she has implemented. Uh, we also went and received a grant for outdoor spaces 
um, which for recreation equipment, which will, uh, be, uh, which is installed or being installed uh, on the other side of the Toby Cat Civic Center. So let's talk about the Toby Cat Civic Center for a moment. So um, that building is used for a lot of the programming, the yoga and whatnot. And uh, the master gardening program was put thanks to Unico with the, uh, the gardening beds uh, so the mastering gardening program is held at the Toby Katz uh, Center, uh, where the gardeners come up. It's a senior program. They garden all summer. And then at the end, they have a beautiful luncheon. And it's a great program. And uh, they have uh, someone from Rus Rutgers Masters uh, programming there to assist our seniors. Uh, with that, again, like I said, we uh, were installing the money from the grant for the recreation equipment for our seniors on that side of the building, on the other side, the opposite side of where the garden is at Degnet Park. As the mayor mentioned earlier, she put in a plug. There's a lot of uh, renovation uh, uh, projects that need to be had at that building, especially with uh, the stair in the front of the Toby Cats. Um, I know myself tripped up the stairs when I went to one of our um, our uh, dinners for our, our disabled program, which I thank Pastor Adams for hosting for that. But to my colleagues' comments, we have multiple locations. We're very fortunate here in the township because it's gonna be exciting times with this new uh, senior building coming across the driveway here. We'll have that 7,500 square feet, which we'll be able to utilize. And again, we are growing, growing, growing um, for our seniors. So if they wanna have uh, open it up every day, I would recommend that committee should have a proposal, a thoughtful pr proposal uh, to which I thought that was the whole idea of the committee was the committee supposed to be getting together to have their proposals, but I'm just going to call it. I'm coming to the next senior meeting. I know only two of us could be there, so I haven't been there yet. So I just want to give my my colleagues a head up. I'm going to be at the next one um, because we, you know, again I've mentioned uh, multiple times too that you know it, it'd be a great drop-in center. And uh, I'm gonna buy the uh, Keurig and the and the coffee pots for it. So I just, you know, again, you, you need to- we'll, we'll make it happen, but that's why you have the committee. So I'm a little confused why you have folks come here, make them wait to talk and feel frustrated and make them feel like we don't wanna give this to them. And that's very disappointing. And uh, I, hope, I hope that gets straightened out because a lot has been done into the programming Ms. Van Dyke, uh, Ms. Perez, they 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 work tirelessly, and any time they could do it, they could do. It, but they're two, they're two, two employees, and they also handle multi other responsibilities, not only just with the seniors, but uh, for other other uh, items as well. So again, um, our seniors do not feel like we're not hearing you because we are, and anybody telling you different. 973-865-3347 is my phone number. So please give me a call because you should not feel like you're being neglected from this council or this community or this mayor. So with that, I'm going to pivot now to, I hope administration could explain the bonds because that's important. Um, I think everything else is on the resolutions and Mr. Sullivan who I always love to hear from. Um, you're in great hands, Ms. Hardell. Nice to meet you and very impressed with, um, with uh, your background. Um, so just so you know, the location that you um, are at now. So the prior applicant had, had that spot, okay? So that license doesn't automatically get transferred. I think the landlord thought they were automatically uh, able to have that site. Like he, like that landlord, I think thought, I'm not gonna speak for him, but from my understanding, thought that he was able just to be a grandfathered in. That wasn't the case. It was the applicant, not the location. Now, just so you know, that location, um, when, uh, cause I was on the task force and one of the asks that we had for that location was there's a, um, an entrance from Park Avenue 
And there's also one from um, Ashland Avenue where the kids get on the bus and there's a playground right there. And the ask was, and make sure that could happen, that the driveway, the entrance into Park Avenue we could only be utilized for the trucking, not Ashland Avenue. So I'm not sure if that's the case or not. We were told it could be at the task force at that particular time. Um, I'm full disclosure, you know, cultivation, we should have taken a step back and we were four entities, we grandfather. So now we have seven entities approved, whether the other three, and I hope I know one is getting their location and congratulations on your grant. Um, but again, you know, we have to reopen, reopen the cannabis conversation, uh, which hopefully always gets done around midnight. So <laughs> Yeah, um, it, it's it's just it's it's a big ask for me. So I'm just gonna let let you know that now for multiple reasons that I, I don't want to get into it at midnight once again. So, but anyway, good luck with 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 the process and and to all. Um, I think everything else is a resolution, and I thank all the speakers for calling in and you know environmental issues on the. Um, PDW building again, Edison Battery uh, building. But if Mister, if administration could really explain that. Oh, my last comment. I did want to thank Amy Gallen and and Sheila for your comments. Uh, my my heart is is with the community. Um, you know, I, I work for a, a, a Orthodox company, and just talking to the people in the office today and uh, yesterday and. You know, just having their kids in in um and and not being and being nervous for them and just listening to to the news has been very stressful. So our prayers go out to to everyone in that region um that uh, are, is being affected. So um thanks for your your comments tonight. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Madam Clerk. We will continue with the rest of the agenda. Thank you all for coming this evening. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Mr. Gross, yeah, there are several, yes, several, several, several things. Yeah, just, just waiting. Yeah, I'm sorry. sorry. We're going to we're gonna do the mercantile response. If you just give us a minute. Yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you. So if you could give us an explanation on the mercantile rollout uh, updates, Why the rationale that? on the fee sure. being $100, how it's imposed in our neighboring community. Sure. And what's required by the state. Okay. Uh, we'll start with that. By, by law, um, the, the the state passed um, a law that, that basically passed on to every municipality the responsibility to make sure that every business in in the town, and that business includes not just bricks and mortar businesses, but also includes um, residential rentals, uh, that they have liability insurance, certain levels of liability insurance. Um, when we looked at that uh, requirement, um, one of the things that we knew is, is, first off, we didn't even have a list of businesses, of uh, you know, a single list of businesses that we knew of. So, West Orange never had a mercantile law before. Um, so we we made a recommendation to the council to that to, to look at it and to view this through the mercantile process so that we would we would gain the, the ancillary benefits of of, of um, having a single list of, of all of our business and call it whatever whatever we called it didn't really matter, calling it mercantile. Um, that that process requires us uh, not not just um, during it, 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 the renewal period, but during the year to confirm that every business has valid um, and enforced liability insurance. So that's a process. The process that requires um, it isn't just a matter of collecting a fee. You know, a process of collecting a fee. There's there's a review to make sure that 
um, the, the 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 entity is, is keeps current with its liability obligation insurance obligations. Um, so that that process during that process we and looking at that um, we looked at what we thought it was going to cost us in terms of you know manpower and and, and the such. And we also were looking at other inspections that we agreed. Well, as you, as you know, we looked at a lot of our costs over the past year, um, and um, and and attached a value to them, a, a fee. One of the things that we did not do that with, which is um, which which is goes to our most businesses, um, which is the non life hazard. Uh, fire inspection. So we didn't charge for that, but we did charge and, and include the charge for the mercantile. Um, so there's some overlap there. Um, Can the you explain what that is? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. what is that? What you just said, some the inspection, the non fire, non... Okay. We, our fire department does non-life hazard use um, inspections for? Uh, for all businesses. Okay. Um, and 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 one of the thing, one of the recommendations that we received from the fire department this year, when we were looking at at revenue sources um, uh, dur during the budget process, was to um, um, charge for those inspections, which we'd never did before, similar to reinspection fees and things of that that that, that we don't charge. Um, <laughs> What about for residential? You can ask, but if I can ask, what about for like two family homes? Right. They well, pay I'll for get to that section. I'll okay. Get to that. I'll, I'll get, no, I'm, I'm yeah. trying. You're, you're asking about yeah. mercantile, which is, you know, yeah. a broad picture. Right. But with the mercantile, you're stating that there's a free inspection or an inspection that's included by the fire department. But if we're talking, you're saying businesses. But the mercantile license applies to single, I mean, multifamily homes. I, I, let me, I'm, I'll, let me get, okay. let me finish, and then okay. we can come back. Okay. So, so the the non life hazard uses or as part of, of of the of um, some of our costs um, that we're not charging fees for. Um, we 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 took a look at what other municipalities charge, and and Mr. Smeraldo can address that specifically to see what other municipalities were charging for similar um, services that that were provided. Um, so he can talk that directly, but there, there's not like I said before, there's not a standard uh, title for this, but but all most municipalities charge. Uh, in different levels uh, for for these types of inspections and or, and or registrations. So, Mr. Brown, if you want to talk a little bit about what your findings were in terms of the fees. Yeah, we, we searched around the state because um, this was, and just for the record, people know this was Public Law 2002, Chapter 92, um, which was signed by, enacted through Governor Murphy and the state legislature. And so we had to build our system based upon that. And um, so when we looked at the law and the law says that we have to um, collect the data for the insurance for all residentials and businesses, um, certain thresholds of 300,000, 500,000, depending on the business. So we looked at, we looked into that and um, it says in the law that the municipalities can charge a reasonable amount uh, a, minute, a reasonable administrative fee. So I was tasked to look around the state. So I looked at uh, places that actually had mercantile licenses. I tried to look at places similar to West Orange and Nature and, th and, and so on and so forth. Some places don't call it mercantile, they call it business, but they still have registration. So as a synopsis of several towns that I looked at, um, Atlantic City charges $200 flat fee for, for mercantile. East Orange charges $250. Ocean City, New Jersey charges two hundred starts at two hundred dollars, can go up to twelve hundred dollars, um, and they they charge for various different uh, fees. Asbury Park was a hundred dollars, but their fees go up to two thousand um, dollars. Union starts at about a hundred. City of Newark, which is one of our neighbors, five hundred dollars for residential units starting at five thousand square feet. Um, Six hundred dollars for businesses starting at five thousand square feet. 
Cherry Hill, which is very similar to our kind of uh, structure, they start at $50. However, um, but it, they have a lot of add-ons and typically it goes up to anywhere from $500 to $1,000. And their commercial start to 70, which goes up to only $700. It was kind of odd that the business, the business commercial was less than the residential. I don't know why. Um, we also looked at the city of Neptune or Neptune, uh, not Neptune city, but Neptune borough. They were a little bit lower. They were about, um, 60 bucks i think it was 50 bucks but then it's 50 dollars for every unit so there it was comparable in the sense to what we were looking at so we thought a reasonable fee would be a hundred dollars and based on the law the additional 20 dollars per unit was in line with all the other municipalities in the state that or, or actually less than but similar in in administering so that's that's how we came up with these numbers so my question would be when we look at the comparison between the other municipalities, is this an annual recurring fee? Yep. It's an annual recurring fee. For, for the businesses as well? Yep. So this isn't a fee that's typically paid when you open a new business and you do your business application. We're absolutely certain that other businesses, because I, I have not heard or seen this type of fee being instituted? In in most municipalities, they call it a business license fee. It's an annual. Um, and, and the ones that I found, there may be others out there. There's 565 municipalities, but the, the ones that I looked at, this is what I typically found. And I tried to do ones that specifically had mercantile. Um, and these are the ones that I found online. In fact, when I called Ocean City today, because I, it's a, it's a town that's similar in operation, staffing, and, and and buildings and things of that nature to West Orange, a little bit smaller in size, but but um, but their fees were much higher than ours. They are a resort community, so like they they make their money, but they're a full time community year round. So, um, but um, you know, looking at places like Asbury Park, um, that's a full time community year round. It's not just a short community. Uh, so, um, you know, just looking at different places that we're trying to compare it to, that's all. And based on what the law was, it says a, you know, a reasonable administrative fee, $100. And most of these communities, by the way, we're talking about what uh, Mr. Gross was talking about, they also charge for many other uh, items. It's almost like a, a, a menu, so to speak, and a non-life fire hazard use was also included in many of those towns which we don't do. We charge for life hazard use, which is required by the state. Um, but the West Orange Fire Department is traditionally, I can tell you for certain, the life hazard use has been trying to be pushed by the fire department since at least 2004, and still has not been successful. So I can tell, say for certain that that has never been approved. What, uh, what's included in that inspection? A non-life hazard use is basically a business registration. What, what the fire department's intent is with the, the non-life hazard use is to go into businesses to find out who's operating there, what's operating there. But we're only really going to see what's in the business. We're not collecting the data of the um, the insurance. The fact that, that we have a state law now that says that we have to collect this data, this is probably a more um, easier statute to administer than the non-life hazard use, and we're still gonna provide that service to the fire department. I hope the chief doesn't get mad at me. I have a quick question. <laughs> Are most other municipalities using third-party vendors, or isn't there some software? It we, seems like it should be a simple software. Council, when we look into everybody. software, uh, we are being charged currently $4,250 for the software. We had it built specifically for this. It was a nominal fee based on, on the needs of the township. What we did was with our current provider that you that the council had approved for us to update the whole system, we went to them and said, look, we need this. This was after the fact. This was after we purchased our software program. We had this approved. We went to them and, and they don't have that module. They gave us a discounted rate based on the fact that we're their first customer doing this. So we negotiated a deal with them to get a better rate for them so that we so can administer this. the first this. one charging? Nobody else is? No, the first one to, they're the first one to have this program, software program. What is everybody else using? Like Montclair, all the I, surrounding communities? Well, they're, I, they're, they're, they're either using some software or, they're, or they are uh, doing it manually, which yeah. works yet. Do um, so you think so, they have proprietary software? Or I mean, do they? You think they have proprietary software? It seems no, like a no simple type of software, software that, package. I that mean, could do look, this. we we're the software that we're that we're talking about is the company that we're working towards. That's going to be to take all of our products online, but that's that that's a little bit down the road. We basically said, okay, the first thing you got to do is 
you, you got to do this successfully for us. And it has been a little bumpy, um, and, but we're only a couple of weeks into this and it, and it seems to be working fine now. Um, we, 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 you know, first to admit that um, we could have done better in terms of our, of our communication, the, the, um, the, the time frame that's in the ordinance is October, or October one to September thirtieth, and so you know the the we 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 sent out the the information at the end of September, and we did put in in there in the Q and A that that they had till November first, but it wasn't up top, so it wasn't you know uh, obvious that the that there was a month on it. So so you know we're we're going to work with everybody to get this done, um, and like I said, we we. First to admit that we could, you know, we could have done better. But I would be curious to know what other townships are doing surrounding. Well, I don't know if any. I don't know what, what other of, towns are actually in doing the enforcement on it. I mean, West Orange, you we're know, leading the, the down, we're leading the, the charge. Law, on the law this. came down, and we're complying. I mean, that that's you know, we're a big town. We we don't we 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 don't, we don't say. Well, they're not doing it, so we don't have to. No, it just seems to me as someone who's been a business consultant that there should be a very simple software package for something like this. Councilwoman, Councilwoman, to your point is that we we went to our our provider who we contracted with. Our system is going to be based on block and lot. What our software provider did in this particular case was they were able to develop a program that nobody else had before that in their system. We worked, they worked with us. So that runs parallel with the system we're building. So as soon as our system is up and running, we're going to insert this right in there and all that information is going to be collected. We're going to have all the data. Tonight, I'm hearing everybody up here on the council saying they want data. We're, this is a data-driven program we're doing. And once we have all that information, so the, for for the fee, and I'm not saying that $4,250 is cheap, but for a software packet to go included with, this was something that we were able to get into our system that's going to make, in a year from now, two years from now, this system's going to take two or three years to be fully up and functional. That's how waste systems so should be built. This is part of a larger this is, a, this is part of a larger too. picture to give you the and when yeah, and when this comes good. through, you're going to get the information that you require for so we can tell you about the dog license. We can tell you about their their uh, non-life hazard use inspection. We can tell you how many times this house has been sold. Mm -hmm. If there's a tank in the ground, all this stuff is going to be built up. But this is this is a in the process right now from the ground up. Mm -hmm. Then this particular program we bought purchased is an integral part of that system. Okay. And just the other question I had out of curiosity is why isn't this a chapter five licensing? Why is it have its own chapter 33? Uh, that, and when, when that was a determination that was made um, when when legal put it together. So I, I is there a I'll, rationale I'll for that? To, I, don't know. I mean, again, if you want to move it, we can move it. No, I, I'm just <laughs> curious. It is placed under the, the, the planning and development office. The zoning office, our director of planning and development is in charge of it. It's in her office. And just so so we're clear, and, and Mr. Gross has pointed out, we did have some bumps. We did have some concerns uh, with several people or our bosses had concerns this week. So we were able to address some issues, including putting in a standalone station in the planning and zoning office so that if members of the public are having difficulties and challenges, they can come in and deal with one of our personnel to deal with it face to face. Mm -hmm. It's it's made to be user friendly. It's made to be um, that it's accessible online, on the phone, whatever. But there are still people who have challenges. They can come in. We can assist them. Thank you. Are there any other questions regarding this? Because we're actually going to get to it in the agenda. I, I do have a question since you're here, Mr. Uh, Smeraldo. I just wanted to be clear. You know, you cited East Orange and Newark. Do they charge for single family or two family or three family residences? Or because Newark has a carve out at five thousand square feet. So the way I understood your commentary, anything the, the law that? was written out. I don't know how they do for one or two family. The law is written out if it's a business owner or a property owner, a landlord who's renting out the property. So if the landlord is renting out a one fam, one family, uh, yeah, one family home, then they can they have to comply with that under the under the law. How Nork administers that, I'm I, I'm not certain. Okay, um, and what is the name of the software provider? Um, we're using it's called City Squared is the name of the software. If you go on to, if you go to our website right now, you yeah, can link on to it. Um, but um, we are using, and I'm trying to blank right now, John Truck because we use so much. Uh, 
our, our parent company. Muni, uh, is uh, it Munich? Municipal is the parent yeah, company. Yeah, Municipal. Their, their, their face on the website is, is uh, City Square. Yeah. And their parent company is ICC, International Code Council. Thank you. Okay, we will ask additional questions. Um, Chief, if you could speak to the cannabis consultant and give a little bit more detail. I just ask one more question sure. to them on this subject. Thank you, Council President. Now, I just don't want folks to feel that because a question came up earlier in the day. Um, if if someone like if you don't register, you're going to get fined. Well, let's talk about that part when we get to okay. the actual ordinance. Okay, I'm just going to say, you, because yes. we've had bumps, are we going to work with people? We're well, not going to. We're, we're absolutely going to. We, we're going to do. We're going to work with people. Working with people. I mean, we're you know, if 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 we we need to take action to 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 get everybody over the the uh, finish line, we will. Okay. Well, the biggest concern is we just don't know what the finish line looks like because we don't have any idea of how many businesses we have. So let, let's just move on and we'll get there. And <laughs> what else do we have um, that we wanted to, the task force? So, so the, the concept behind it, just, pardon me, the, the concept behind the cannabis uh, consultant is consultant. as a consultant council. Council is going to be licensing people very soon because this is a two-step process. And there's a, a number of issues. There's regulatory compliance, there's licensing assistance, community engagement. All our applicants talk about all these things you can do in the community. So we've got to make sure they're actually doing that um, and security and public safety. So I'm talking to police chiefs around the state where municipalities opted in and they're all kind of in the same boat where everything was put on them and they're all having the same conversation. That I don't think about this business. And I'm really not even a, a facility security expert. That's a whole realm outside of police work. You know, it's like if you're opening a bank, you wouldn't go to the police chief and say, hey, advise me on the security system and, and how to run it. You'd bring in a security consultant. So, again, this person is really for the benefit of counsel. It's a, it's a pass-through expense so that it's not absorbed by the taxpayers. And these people are going to advise you. And, and you're going to have questions going forward. Like we had somebody in here tonight that's looking to lift the moratorium. That's the decision of counsel to be made. You're going to lift that. You may want to turn to the consultant and say, give me your thoughts on this. What are your thoughts on this? Um, there's nobody picked out. This is an RFP. We don't know who's going to apply. You may get law firms apply. You may get individuals apply. Um, that's the idea behind competitive contracting, that you have a, a broader pool of applicants. It's not it. There's no specific license even available, so you can't do professional services contract. And you know, we're gonna we're gonna call it down to you know. Listen, we might get five people not to call it down to one. We may get one person only. That one person may not even be acceptable. We don't know what the market is out there. We don't know who the candidates are. So, that's one. Can I answer a question? So, so one of so one of the items that I had issue with the state was how are we gonna be able to determine the two percent tax that we're charging from the entities like how are you like as because you know there's cash involved cash business how are we going to determine how we're going to get our share of of well, the tax? but again just to, to that when the chief was speaking he didn't mention that but to to one of the reasons we know this is if, uh hopefully a business that will um uh, do well is it will generate money so to go to your point um our ordinance requires financial statements that are certified. But to your point, different businesses report income in different yeah. ways. So by getting someone with this capability, it could be an accountant, by the way. Uh, you know, that's why it is a competitive contract so we can see that. But I totally agree with you that we want to be able to make sure we're getting the, the revenue that we believe is uh, appropriate. So that is a whole, analyzing financial statements is a whole set of facts under its own. So if I see that, and I would also have to know that this person is going to be charged with kind of like what you do with the ABC licensing is every year, make, but with the, the LLC documentation yeah. to every year ask for that uh, operating okay. agreement, make sure it didn't change over. And keep in mind, our experience in this town has been positive. You know, again, notwithstanding what 
people's name, the, the, the having the environmental compliance officer, Mr. DeFeo, yeah. to recycle when there's an issue, you know, the mayor picks the phone and calls him immediately, whether it's Saturday, Sunday, whenever it is, in the middle of the night, you got to go there and find out what the immediate issue is. Um, and, and we have that for the contract compliance officer at Rock Spring. Uh, you know, we, we get, you know, we get information. You all see the color the pictures and the reports Mr. DeFeo prepares. Um, and, you know, again, no one's ever raised any issues. So. And last question. So so I, I get you're going to charge the entities, but to Councilwoman's point, like the entities aren't um, no in, in, inactive yet. So how, like, so obviously we're going to front this money no. to pay for this person. No. And then, well, then how are you going to get I mean, them paid? We don't know how, again, the chief makes the reason. We don't even know who the person is or whether we're fine. But by putting the net out there, we want to be ready because we believe there's two that now have locations that you've approved and have their state license. So we believe, um, I always forget the name, but the one at 26 South Valley, I think will be back in here within the next month or six. Did they submit their forms, uh, Mr. Rosen? I we, we, yeah, we, we would expect yeah. uh, that that any approvals would, would have contingencies, uh, potential contingencies. Well, and one of the might be setting up best grows. To, to fund the, the service as needed. Well, so, yeah, but we need to get that person because certainly within the next 60 days, yeah. so so that person would be segue to the businesses as they open. So again, what the chief and I have said, but I, I talked about, but it's gonna be for the proposing entity was hypothetically in the first year, maybe the decision is we want these locations inspected once a month. If they're operating in, in, so maybe that costs whatever, two hundred and fifty dollars, you know, a month per location. After the first year, if they're all operating without an issue, then maybe you say we only need to do once a quarter. And then my my last item, I'm not sure if it's in for this resolution, but I think it's for the application because I remember seeing the application. Mm -hmm. I had asked to be added to the application. I had support from my colleagues that when. Um, they first apply for that location. So now we have the ones that are grandfathered. If they go for a new location, we don't have the same issue that we had on Washington Street where the residents all came out mm -hmm. and were upset because they didn't know that that location. So we were adding in that um, they would be noticed at 200. Uh, they would have to notice 200 feet when they apply for the new location. I completely agree. I talked to the chief about this. Or that needs to be happened. Yeah. So for example, for any location, so we have a new entity that showed up tonight. She's going to put an application in. Um, if she moves forward with, with her application, everything else checks out. Then before an approval is granted, it would have to get notice to 200 yeah. feet. So people know that there's an application because once the letter of support is given, as we know, there's no going back. Right, and I do, do believe that, that obviously the planning board in the process, they do get 200 feet. You know, but this is too late. late. It's too late. It's too late. It's too late. This needs to be done when the, just when the Board of Ed gets their notice and 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 um, who else? Everybody else gets their notice. The downtown but alliance or, the notice Guys, this is, what, this is really discussion that we need to be talking about when we get to the We'll make sure that. Well, I just want to make sure. It's back. Back. I understand, but yeah, this so. is very important because we, we not discussed it already. It just wasn't yeah. put in. We, we don't want to have Mr. Pierre and his neighbors here with comp with petitions yeah. after the fact. This is something we agreed upon, and it wasn't put in. And I'd like okay. to see it in there as well. It was in the section where the board of ed get, gets their. Okay, right. were there any? We've done that. Were there any other questions from Mr. Gross? It's 1230. We haven't even. Yeah, but I'm at, a, at all. We'll be now. <laughs> all right. Madam Clark. Oh, we, we didn't talk about the, uh, oh, we're um, about the resolution. Yeah. Okay. Um, approval of minutes of previous meeting, public meeting of. Uh, oh, I put the wrong date. I'm so sorry. I put oh, yeah, tonight's put date. Tonight. Look at that. What was the last meeting? September 19th. Consent. Consent. I'll change Consent. that. Thank you. Uh, report of township officers update on the West Orange Public Library project. Mr. Smeraldo. Oh, I'll go. keep this quick. Um, <laughs> Two minutes. To, no, it's going to be under two. So, so actually, we haven't had a meeting since our last meeting is tomorrow. 
Um, I had them report that the final parts for the air conditioning and rooftop units have been shipped as of today or yesterday. Um, they are firing oh, nice. them up. So um, they will be um, hopefully getting those done and completed next week or two. I spoke with the uh, the president today of the board. Oh, They're still really trying cool. to anticipate the November 1st opening. They have 122,000 books they have to sort through. So it's really more up to them. Um, as you can see these pictures here, they're very nice pictures. And uh, other than that, we're, we're the the satellite is going to be closing October 31st. So this puts a real push on for them to get complete open on or about the first of November. It's really pretty much up to Mr. QB's hands now and the and the board. They have everybody working there. We finished the um we did finish the outside patio and we do have a change order tonight and for the new fencing to, to finish off because it was it became a safety issue to Mr. Biotti. So I have that uh, on there for the, if you want me to speak about that real quick. That's a change order because it's a safety issue. We want we don't want our residents falling off the newly uh, formed uh, deck outside. So other than that, and then we still have some change orders that not change or some uh, issues with the glass for the doors. We're still waiting for that to come in, but we anticipate on or about November 1st. And who's fixing the parking lot? Because uh, one of the comments tonight was about the parking lot. We received our report just the other day from CME. We're still evaluating it to see how much it's going to actually cost us, what we need to do, and things of that nature. But we did receive the report. That's been submitted to us for review. And so the paving will be done before the library has its soft opening? Okay. Or no? Um, we're we we're going to have to take a look at that. I don't know. Well, again, Mr. Uh, Chief Abbott, Mr. Smaldo, and I have met with B and E, and they're prepared yeah, they're to, to do the paving. But what we're talking about now is EV chargers and the lights, the lighting. Because again, while they were staging the dog park and the new apartment buildings, they used part of a parking lot, and the, they agreed that because they use our lot, they will repave it. But get a time the repaving. So the timing, the timing is paid, and they have to put the conduits in. So yeah, we're, we're looking at um, alternatives to do something to make it um, a little less, more pretty of a, a, a lot, but we're still working out with, with B&A right now. So pretty I, is. I, I'll have a better report for you for next week. Yeah, that's no, not, not so much pretty. We, we want it safe. Well, that's, uh, yeah, we, you know, it's, <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be safe, uh, but, but we have to take it the concerns of the lighting and the islands and the, we're, we're looking at all the safety components of it. That's why. So I'll have a better report for you on the parking lot next week. Next week. Uh, next week. Thank you. Right. Did they start on the dog park over there, or when's that? Right. When will the yes. dog park? Yes. Dog park. Everything. The dog park. Will yeah. Be done I, by I, this spring, and I, they they cannot get a CO without delivering us the dog park. They, oh, I like we that. will have a rendering. We've asked for a rendering that the mayor will share with you as soon as we hope cool. to have it in a couple weeks. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Okay, reading of petitions and communications and bids, correspondence from Dr. Robert Bagoff, Planning Board Chairman regarding Ordinance 2819-23, Proposed Amendment to Land Use Regulations, Chapter 25, Section 11.14. Consent? Consent. Thank you. Uh, bills. Uh, are, there, are there any questions on the bills? No. Uh, yeah, I need to pull. I need to pull bills. Um, bills, not the resolutions yet. I'm talking about bill the bills. List. Bills list. Yeah, I need to pull the bill for the uh, um, for the uh, attorney that's on there. Genera. I'm sorry for the what? Oh, uh, yeah, the attorney Genova. Genova. I'm sorry, Genova. Not not Genera. Genova. Wants to pull that. Genova. Genova. All right. Well, okay. Um, okay. Now resolutions. Resolutions three sixty nine dash twenty three is being pulled by the administration, being pulled off the agenda. Three sixty nine. Yes, three six nine. It's the resolution authorizing the competitive contracting process for a professional and experienced economic development consultant firm to function as the township's economic development consultant. Great. That's I mean, being I just asked why out of curiosity. What's that? They're pulling it. She would like to know why. Um it, it's I was informed that 
um, you did not receive some documentation right. on that. That's the backup right. was written right. so. yeah. yeah, right last meeting. Thank you. Okay. Oh, and uh, are any other resolutions being pulled this evening? Yes, yeah, yeah. I would like to have some questions yeah, answered, questions. please. Um, 345-23, question regarding the amount of $425,000 for this project and the funds were appropriated in the 2023 capital budget that we have not approved, so they have not been appropriated. No, you did approve this one. For the, what is this? This, so you that, that this this was included in the previous the, so this is in the six the, million dollars. I'm sorry. This is in the in the in the two ordinances that were approved at the last, last meeting. at the last yeah. meeting. Okay, and then for thirty. Well, well, can we while we're still on that? I just on the last page in the uh, spreadsheet, the itemized the, the itemized list of the expenses. There are one, two, three, four. Mm. Uh, five uh, items, 54 through 58, I believe, that deal with tree removal. Are we giving any guidance with regard to tree removal? We have everything. Everything goes through the um, forester. Our, our forester has to approve anything that we're doing. All right. So, I mean, we've had multiple discussions in here regarding removing uh, trees for street repairs. And the general census of the majority of the council is that we don't want to do that anymore. So is that is that the guidance that the forester is giving? Yes. Okay. We're, wherever possible, we're you know we're we're not we're not doing that. But you, you but but when you go out to uh, award a contract, you have to award whatever's possible. I got it. No, as long as that's the guidance, I'm good. Thank you. Thirty three forty six dash twenty three. Um, this is for Grabowski for. For snow plowing, salting, and removing removal, but and snow hauling is included, but snow hauling was not included um, in their resolution because of the bid being high. So I just wanted to have clarity whether or not it includes snow hauling or does not. I was going to pull that one. Well, just wait until we get. There. I want my question answered. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking. So you can continue to look. Are we pulling it absolute? Well, or is the could the question suffice? And the... I have another question about it. So okay, I'm looking for it. Should I answer my? Yeah, if you have about question. the same one, yes. It's, yeah, it is. So, um, for the benefit of the public, if someone can please explain why we accepted the higher bid and rejected the lower bid. If you see what's awarded um, for Grabowski per hour, it's 415, 400, 405 for some of these routes versus the other um, company charging 275, 220, 200 per hour and 345 per hour. Just some clarification for the general public. We go back. Come back. I did okay. have uh, Mr. Lapore on earlier, but it's late. It, it right. lost him. So let's just pull three forty six then. Yeah, my question on three forty six is: Is it the same price as last year? All right. Well, Was there an automatic escalator mm -hmm. with the additional two years? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that, so we should just pull it. Yep. Yeah, all right, we'll pull it in the table. Um, 349-23, resolution authorizing the issuance, issuance of raffle license. One of those is for the uh, MSU Foundation, but the event looks like it was scheduled for tonight. Right. We have an ordinance in place that allows me to go forward and process the applications and then present them to the council. Um, that way, you know, people... They don't have to wait. The organizations don't have to wait to be approved by the council prior to their event. What would happen if we didn't approve it, though? It's never happened. So if you didn't approve it, then <laughs> and how would not be every, every application is sent to that I, I have to approve. 
So based on no. Well, the silent auctions, yes. Silent auctions. This is through the state. So the state, actually, I'm mandated by the state to wait 15 days before I can release their license so that the state has time to review everything and approve. If I don't hear back from them within that 15 day period, then I then I approve it. Um, and then it always goes on the agenda. So if it happens to fall, if an event happened tonight, it's already been monitored by the state, approved, and then the license was given. My next one uh, well, what, question is 351. Does questions? anyone have a question before we get to 351? Well, we've skipped a few. So I, I had some questions on some earlier ones. Sure. Uh, just a quick question on 342, which is the turnout gear for the firefighters. Is that a part? It's only 20, well, you know, it's 24,000, but is that a part of the, um, what budget was that a part of? Was that no, last that's from last year's budget. That's last year's capital budget? No, or? not yet. Okay. Uh, thank you. And then 347. Um, I am unclear if you read the first paragraph, the last sentence, it says the award was for service for two halves of the township of two quadrants each. I I don't I don't understand what that can you just clarify for me what that well is? I again I this is more of a, a, a Mr. Lapore detail, but you know they 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 the town is broken up into sectors and sections and, and whether whether it's quadrants and you know there's different sections. So the awards are based on the the roadways in those sections. So that that that's what that describes. If you need more detail than that, then okay, I'll have to. Like uh, some may be more hilly than others, are more complicated. Got it. Anything else before three fifty one? Uh yes. Same here. I want to pull three fifty. What's that? I want to pull three fifty. So when looking at 348, and I know some streets are more difficult than other, others to do, um, but 348, it was awarded to Grabowski, uh, was awarded to Grabowski. I believe, am I reading this wrong? And others. Yeah. And they're others. different and routes. Others, right. They're different routes than his other Yeah, they're all labeled the streets on all of them. Right. So these... These streets are half of what the other one is. I think 347 is also, which one was it, 346? Yeah, 346. Sir. 346 and 348 are both snow plowing, et cetera, salting, removal, snow hauling. 348's cost is half of 346. Is that uh, one is in the valley, one's in the hills? What is the, and it, why is it? Well, again, I, I can I'll, I can get a description on that for you, but I can tell you, these are all bid based based on the actual bids from previous years with with, with, the, with the ability to extend them. So they're, they're, they're not, um, they're not negotiable. They can either reject them or accept them. All right. All uh, right. And then now you're getting up to three. We should be at 350 now. 350 has been pulled. 351, I have a question. Let me let me explain 350 before you pull it. <laughs> there, there, um, we have a LSRP who's in charge of that site uh, and has been working with the township for longer than, than I know. Um, the, the recently... They found a few, a few, not 50, a few new spots um, of concern, areas of concern. Um, the, the, the assessment plan that the LSRP has come up with, uh, who, who is responsible to the state uh, on our behalf for this, um, resulted in, in 50, you know, 50 um uh, spots where they want they want to test because they want to see. Question is, is this coming from on site or off site? Uh, you know, where's it coming from? You know, the, these popped up new, so it is it is an, it is of concern, um, but it is you know again there's it's only a few sites, not fifty. Fifty is is you know they basically they they surround the sites to try to find out where where it's coming from. So 
I understand that. Um, and I'm happy to see there's an NTE in the resolution. I'm curious as to why they submitted the proposal in April and we're yeah. just now acting on it tonight. Am I misreading that? You're not misreading it. Um, we've been trying to, frankly, juggle funds um, to to get to get to this point. Uh, so, all right. So, um, on page five of eight in their uh, CME's proposal, <laughs> uh, fourth paragraph or third full paragraph, the wells will be completed with a flush mount cover. Drill cuttings will be placed in drums, so on and so forth. Uh, <laughs> development water will be drummed for off-site disposal or properly treated prior to on-site discharge. Okay. What does that mean? Well, if what they pick up is of a nature that can be turned into water or can turn into something that can be released on-site, they can do that. Um, you know, if, it, if, if, for instance, dirt sometimes. Sometimes it's just a matter of cleaning the dirt and then you leave it there. Um, so it, it, it is, it's, it's strictly, it's, it's a DEP standard that, that when they notify you before they do the, yeah. or they notify someone in the administration. All right. Cause that's really what I was getting at. And then at the bottom, uh, second paragraph from the bottom, if groundwater contamination is delineated, additional groundwater sampling may be performed. Is there an additional cost for that? There's always an additional cost. These are we 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 refer to these as annuities uh, for a reason um, because you don't know you can't you don't know what you can't see. Okay, so I have some questions if we're going to do this now instead of three fifty. Yeah, three fifty. Um, uh, we it's pulled. Well, so let's well, we're talking about not or unless uh, he's trying to keep us from. I'm saying. I, I mean, this oh, is. Okay. Okay, might, okay. might be able to satisfy okay. your questions. Um, so I hear you saying that they've done work with us before, but I feel like now that we have passed this budget, there are a lot of, like, all these resolutions. And we don't have a choice on this. We don't have a choice. We can't get She is the LSRP, now. the state. We would have to petition the state to make a change. I mean, this, this they, like they have, and they have, for instance, they have all the history of the site. So okay. if you bring somebody else in new, Starting then you're going to pay up. to bring that person up, up to speed, speed on this years of this site. It did, just, but did you at least look into what the cost is, see if it's less to kind of negotiate with them, or are they just giving their price up the, for ninety no, thousand? No, no, no that, that, this is what, 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 as long as we're yeah. One, we're one, sure one of the deal. one of the reasons that there is some delay is there's been a lot of discussion about ab about it, and uh, Lenny has reviewed it and he feels that that this is appropriate okay so it's, so other companies would also similarly price is what you're saying well, it's Len fairly, Lenny, fairly priced uh, that's lenny's opinion yes. okay then we don't have to pull it that's okay thank you his opinion 351-23 this I is some questions would you like to go with your this tools? is this is an as built change order this is the last change order um, of, of of this project, um, and basically, you know, it, it, it's the cleanup. There's there's whenever you have a, a project, this project is a you know a, a this is nearly a, nearly a million dollars. This is a wall repair. This isn't a cleanup. This is a wall repair that was done when the tracks when the cart paths were. As well. were, were analyzed. This was said to be something that needed to be addressed. It wasn't addressed. And then the cost is $15,000 to do the wall repair. My question was simply when we, and I don't expect you to have an answer for us now, um, but this is just moving forward, what we need to, to be more conscious of. If we're doing this type of repair for the cart pass at our property, when we identified that the wall was subject to deterioration, I'm certain it wasn't $15,000 because it wasn't an emergency repair. Can we just be mindful of those type of repairs, especially on the properties that we own when they we know that they're in disrepair? And I say that specifically because we know that there are a tremendous amount of capital improvements that need to happen at Rock Spring because of little things that continue to break. So if there are things with, that have been identified, I would just <clears throat> hope that we can put those things in the budget 
so that they don't have to. I mean, 15,000 is nominal when you look at the big gamut of things, but if 15 could have been 10, then I would rather us spend the 10 and not the extra five. We need every penny of every um, budget that we can have. And, so. and I, I'm, I agree with you. And and when I when I my reference to cleanup wasn't that it was cleaning up the site. This is cleanup in terms of this project. This is the last thing on that needs to get done for this project to close it out. So is this is all right. So my question was not along that vein. Um, last year raised questions about the quarry being cleaned up, all that debris removed. And uh, Mayor Parisi, uh, then Mayor Parisi, uh, stated that uh, Grabowski did that for free because they were working on the cart path. So is this the contract that he was referencing when he said that they cleaned up the quarry uh, for free to stage their equipment to clean, to do the cart path work? It is. They did that. They did that when they were there on this contract. Yes. This is that contract. Yeah. Is there, do we have anything in writing from Grabowski stating that they, uh, there's no charge for cleaning the quarry uh, and that they did it to stage their equipment? No, we didn't ask him to do it. There's no, they, you know, there's something that he did. Um, so they did it without prior um, approval from certainly, the administration? Certainly without my, my knowledge or approval. So I they think. just went and cleaned it up? Mm -hmm. Brandon that works for Kemper asked them if they would do that why they had the machines down there and, and Paul Grabowski just said sure no problem did it. That's what I was told by Joe was. So are we open to litigation because of that? Do no. we have to pay them for that work? Okay. No. No, and, and according sure. to Mr. Keo. No, they were in, they were not engaged to do it. Yeah. Right. But if they would have done that without proper authority and something would have gone wrong and someone would have gotten hurt. West Orange would have been liable, no? So because we well, own everybody, property. everybody would have been liable. Well, but they had we they, Grabowski has insurance. That's what I meant. We they they, they would they would have been they would have had their they would be able to say, well, we're doing something extra, so we don't use our insurance. But it was happening yeah. on our on our property, so wouldn't we also be liable? We we always get sued, I guess, you know. <laughs> All right. So I just wanted that on the record that this is, in fact, the contract that Mayor Parisi was referencing when he said that the quarry was clean for free. That's it. Mr. Keogh also told me on another occasion that same contractor, when he was doing work on one of the parks, did the same thing where he cleared out an area and didn't charge us. Grabowski is a long standing yeah. uh, constituent. Yeah, and um, I I don't I, um, I I just wanted to put it on the record in case any of that. Sure. is on 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 true are there any questions regarding um resolutions 351 through 355 no were the residents questions yes. answered yes. on that yeah 350 slack is a state contract it's not it's, it's not a no bid contract there it's a it's it, it is a competitively bid contract through the state and which municipalities we we do all the time we utilize state contracts. Okay, so I, I I hear you. Let me. So I was ask, is this under state contract? Because the way it's written, it just says. Okay, what are we talking about? The back up. The, the state contract number is actually on. 423. Okay. Right? So my question yeah. is, I had a state question contract on doesn't mean it's always the lowest and the best bid. Right. So are we just in case getting proposals out just to find out and make sure that we're getting the best deal? Because well, this is a lot of money. Hold on. This yeah. case lock, you have one resolution for eighty-eight thousand, another one for two hundred and sixty thousand, and a separate resolution for a hundred thousand. That's a lot of money. I mean, three separate contracts for one company. We should get proposals just to make sure that they're charging us a fair price. Because again, first off, we couldn't get proposal. We would have to bid. Okay, we'd have to, and so we'd have to pay somebody to develop bid specs. Okay, so we would probably add another 20% onto the cost by going through that process. One of the, 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 the idea of utilizing a state contract is, is that, that that has okay. all, a lot of those costs have already been borne by the state. I understand that. Again, just because it's state contract doesn't always mean it's the lowest and the best price. So 
Thank so are you suggesting we spend another 20, 20%? I'm not. That's why I'm asking, again, for the benefit of the public, because that's a lot of money. I well, know is it really? Money. I mean, you know, uh, yeah, 20% oh. sounds like a, that was like $400,000, yeah. three, $400,000. Almost, almost $500,000. Right. right. It's not going to be $100,000 to create the bid specs. Yeah. Right. Create well, generally speaking, if, if you're going to go out for a bid, right, you you're, you have to um, you have to do the bid specs, and then you're going to have contract administration. So if you if you choose to go down that that road, this is all built into this. If you go down that road, it would that you it, it's a it's a twenty percent cost to do all of that. Now twenty percent of what? And that's your question: whether or not that that whether or not it ends up being the same price as this or more or less. But 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 we have to risk that twenty percent to find out when we know that the state has gone through and done their due diligence. And we know that it's a competitive price. The, the idea is to go through a competitive process, which would which this is. So I understand. Okay. You know, I mean, I'm satisfied with that. I, I you also save time on the on the process. Yeah. I'm I'm curious on 353, there's no NTE, and some of these don't have NTEs. Is it possible to have uh, cost overruns? And if so, I would like them to come back. Well, the three the PS and G, that is the price. 353. Can okay. we put in not to exceed because we've been because they give us exactly you know, but right. we've requested that all fees have not to exceed. So can we add the NT clause? Well, Mr. Gross is saying that there's no way it can right. be more than that. That is the it's like buying a widget. Right. If you only if you prove it as it is, we can't go over it without coming back to you. Okay. Okay. Uh, are we I, question 55? I noticed that there's some new language in some of these resolutions, um, whereas the Township Council, Council concurs. Which, which where are you reading In from? the foregoing. I'm just reading one of the resolutions. I know, but where are you reading from? From resolution 352, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, whereas several of these resolutions, about five or six of them have new lingo, whereas the Township Council concurs in the foregoing. And I'm just wondering um, who decided to add it and just why, because we haven't had that in other um, I, uh, so in other resolutions. The author, and it's a very common thing that you find. Mm -hmm. By definition, if you adopt it, it's true. Okay. Right. Just wanted to make sure if they haven't it's seen it. Typo on that one made. What After did you say? 52. Right below where Councilwoman was reading. Yeah, the, the dollar amount supposed to be. Yeah. A couple extra euros. Yeah. Extra dots. Yeah. Yeah, that was supposed to be fixed. The amount's 36. Yeah, but only it's That's correct. What was the other? Oh, it's the zero. Is that one satisfied or it is. move on? It is. Yes, All right, so on 354, yeah. just have a question. How do we know there haven't been leaks? How do we know what? There haven't been leaks. So we certify on the first page of uh, Slack's proposal. It says some scope of work, and this is the second full paragraph. Scope of work is based on the information provided to T Slack by the client. T Slack therefore assumes the following: A, there were no discharges of free product. How do we know that? We don't. And if we pull it out, and there is a discharge. Then, then, then we then we're, we will have we a, we'll be back to we'll be back to talk to you. Okay. So what this is then saying is that no matter what happens once they pull it out, it is not their fault. They, they're not responsible for any um, unless unless in that problem like, we do this. We 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 watch them when they do them. Right. So they so if they puncture it, it's on their end. You know. Then then we get into a debate on how much is you know it it, it, it it's it's a usually it's a process. All right, so so okay, I'm good with that. But usually, your holes are on the bottom underneath your tank, and you can't identify that until it is lifted out. They usually cut it before they start pulling it out. Uh, I'm good on three fifty four. All right, three fifty six. Mm -hmm. Resolution authorizing the submission of the application to the New Jersey Department of Transportation Safe Routes to School twenty twenty four. My concern is that. Um, Zayabeth is the responsible charge in the language in that resolution, and Zayabeth is not here. 
I know we have an anticipated, per perhaps an anticipated date of her return, but I was just wondering for our own protection, if we could identify another name for this program under D um, for the responsible charge. So, yes. So there's been two meetings with the Jersey and the Sajid Yeah, she, she, is, she is functioning. She's just not here. We we don't have a problem with that. Mayor, can you? Yeah, I I spoke to her earlier today, and she said she has her laptop home and she's been working from home. I, I'm clear. I I spoke to her as well, but she's not back. So my concern is again reiterating with her being the the full time employee of the township of West Orange and will be responsible charge for the proposed federal aid construction project. In the event she is not able to return then we have a problem because we've identified well, only certain certainly if she didn't return at all we would be able to substitute in on that sure of course okay well that's not what it reads so that was my question thank you I, um I, I have a request on 355 uh should there be any change orders please when they are submitted attach this resolution and any supporting docs to the change order should there be any I'm not pulling it. I just want to make that request. This is the one for the Ginny Dunkel pool yeah. improvements. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we do have change orders, give us so that we don't have to go back and get it ourselves. It'll be, and if you want to submit it digitally so that you don't print it out, that's fine too. I just want to see the whole thing uh, when we get it. Okay. The change order along with the resolution, this resolution. The whole thing, yeah. So I get the whole, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so then in 357, uh, change order number three for the public library. Uh, my concerns were that they didn't have a not to exceed clause for 357, 358, 359, and 360. So, the, so I, I have 357 is basically the, their their contract is is run is run over, um, and that's not all their fault. Um, there, the amount that we negotiated this at five thousand dollars a month is a is a very good amount. So what do we I get for that twenty five thousand dollars a month? No, it's five thousand. I'm sorry, but so this is five thousand dollars, but you're asking for twenty five, so that's five thousand dollars for five yeah. additional months, up to five months. Right, and what do we get for five thousand dollars a month for the twenty five? They're managing the project. So they get this is this their is the design team that's yeah. managing so, well, the project. their design and contract administration. I right. want to pull it to that, vote no. I, I'm sorry. Can I? You can. I'm just letting you know. I want to pull it to vote no. You want to pull this? You want to pull it? Okay. Wait, before you vote it, I have a question. Sure. Well, we're not voting. Yet. Well, I was not no, finished. So go ahead. All right. So what do we get for five thousand dollars a month? I know they're the design team, but this is also no, no, no. They're not the they're they're contract the administrator. The they're the ones that watch over the project to make sure that the contractor does it right and puts, you know, it, it, it fulfills the responsibilities of, of their contract. So they're the, 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 the architect manages the job. So that's what, that's what they're, that's what we're paying. For. And then Mr. Smeraldo manages the architect. No, 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 he works. Mr. Smeraldo works with work is is our is our our, our, our our project manager our project manager basically as as the owner to make sure that everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. But the architect, nothing gets paid or goes anywhere without the architect having any job. Okay. And Ivino has been the architect since this, they were paid by the library. So when they gave us a a waiver of the fees, why did they decide now that they're going to start charging us $5,000 a month? Because it went too long. No, they didn't charge us for a few months. They did. And, and, but, but, but because the project has gone on much longer than, than they felt that they could continue on. Including the, the delays on just supplies based on the supply chain, you know, challenges there. Well, that's, all. that's not their fault. Well, what's our fault? It's not about fault. Okay. You know. Our fault either. I mean, I, I, I want to pull the vote now. So wait, I well, before we pull it, I have still have a question. The math is not adding for me. This resolution is for twenty five thousand dollars. Mr. Smaralda said the pot up to, but Mr. Smaralda said the project's gonna be done November first. Uh, I don't see that it says up to here. It just says in the amount of 
$25,000. So why would we pay that? It's five, September, October, November. I mean, two months should be $10,000. Maybe if we don't open by November 1st, that would extend another month. It should be $15,000, not 25 on here. It does not say up to on here. Well, so then to me, reading this looks like we're paying them $25,000 when they said it's $5,000 a month starting August 31st. So there's definitely a typo in there and that doesn't protect us. As a I will look at that. Thank you. So we're going to pull that. Yes. Yeah, All right. Pull. Council Thank President. Council. Yes. Uh, our township engineer, Zazra Beth, is on the call. Okay. And she has her hand up if you do have a question yes. for her. Um, Zyabeth, can you hear us? Yes. Zyabeth, yes, can, can you hear me? us? Yes, can you hear me? Yep, please continue. Hi, good evening, everyone. How are you doing? You have questions for me, Council President? Uh, well, I did, but one of the questions was that you're not here and you're identified as a responsible charge, but they explained that you are still working, which I was clear on because I know you respond to my communications as well. And certainly your name is on every resolution on the page, but I'm just concerned, um, you know, that we don't have an, an engineer that's working and we have a lot of things that are going on, not, not working. So I don't want to misspeak, but on site. Well, for the responsible charge for this resolution is to apply for the application. If the application it is indeed awarded, then it will be the person with responsible charge. Given that it's a federal project, we will not see any construction on this project probably within two to three years from now. And that's when the responsible charge person will need to sign off on it, which would be me at the, if, if that's the case. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. We didn't realize that it would be two to three years before any work would be started. Again, just understanding the difference in, in actual approval of funding and then when the funding and the work actually takes place. So thank you for that clarification. No problem. It takes a long time with federal grants. Going back to uh, 357, the not to exceed verbiage is in there on the second page. On 357. Mm -hmm. Now, my question on 357 was regarding the $25,000. What yes. what does it mean? What are we paying for? But okay, I'm fine with that. That question was answered. Yes. But on 358, 359, and 360, we don't have not to exceed yes. clauses. It's in the letter. You got you got to add it. You missed it in the resolution. Can we? Can I make a? Um, well, you pulled it, so I guess we'll discuss it then to make the motions and then we now. Yeah, we have to get, wait. We have to get wait. to be a not to exceed fee of five thousand a month. Not, not to exceed five thousand. Correct. But Mr. Smaraldo said the project's ending November. That's two months. No, but you're not. You're not. But it's, it's not, not even from five, here. It's not even five thousand a month. It, it, it's it goes back. It, it, it goes back. It doesn't go back because right here it says we have voluntarily chosen not to request the previous month's additional services. But must do so for a time moving forward. Yeah, what, yeah but what's, the date, what's the date of that letter? But, but it also says principal what's architect 160 September project. 14th. And then okay. it also states that so, so, they're not so, going to start charging us until August 31st. Right. The five, yeah. right. September, uh, two, September, October, yeah. November. So that'll only be three months. Yeah. It's only 5000 a month. I'll but stipulate it, that, it, put that in the resolution. But it's not. It it's says not. here it's not to exceed 5000 a month. And it gives the prices of the 160 for the architect, project manager 125, draft person 85, administrative 50. Yes, so it was at the than... very end of this. So this is where you need clarity exactly. for them so they feel comfortable yeah. because I interpret it to be that they're not going to need not even close to 5,000 a month because they're almost done with the project. So a lot of that drafting and all that other items were, were done. Correct. So that's let's why. could we get just clarity on it? Like would that help you? Because the lingo here well it's, it's not to exceed five thousand That's what I want to do. I want you to don't have any resolution. Well, you can yeah. add that to the resolution. Yeah. I'm telling you, I'm not paying. 
And oh, yeah. like the way it's read and you read it here, it says that we are requesting a change order in the amount of $25,000 to be awarded to them. So to me, reading this says, we're giving you $25,000. Yeah. So it's very- It doesn't confusing. match. It doesn't, well, that's, it doesn't match. that's why I asked, what are we paying them $25,000 so, so for? The but do we get to 25, say not to exceed $5,000 once starting September. Okay. Okay, we can get let's move on. We're gonna yeah, we're right. gonna send the amount okay. anyway. Let's move on. All right, so we're 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 we we're clear on fifty seven through sixty. I'm sorry, fifty eight, fifty nine, and sixty with adding not to exceed clauses. Uh fifty nine. Fifty eight. I just have a quick question. Is that paid by a grant? Three fifty eight. This grant project. Oh yeah. Is twenty twenty three NJ dot municipal aid? Yes. Okay, so uh, it's it's late. I'm good. We'll okay. go on. 359. All right, I have a question on 359. Was this approved last year? 59? Yeah. 359, the uh, 247,000 to remove the 4,000 gallon tank, replace it uh, underground, replace it with an above ground 4550. Not to my knowledge. Huh? You say no. was it was it approved last year? Yeah. Is this so? What is this on? Is this under? Is this a capital? Is this? Yeah. A you just funded it. That's why it's on. So we just funded it. We just let in in the last in, in the that, capital that thirty nine. The capital that you approved at last meeting. Oh. Okay. Got it. Now, the other question is, why the increased capacity? Why are we adding an additional 550 gallon? Is there a reason for that? We're taking a 4,000 out. We're adding a 4,000 and a 550. Uh, I'll have to get you an answer on that from... from um, okay, Louis. no worries. I'm good. Just get the answer to me, please. Still on the phone? Our Let's let her... One minute. I think I'm good with 362. Is Zaiva still on the phone? Yes, that's her on. Okay, can we ask her this question? Her name is signed here, not Mr. LaForce. Does say that it's important. Zaiva, can you hear us? Go to sleep. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Just wanted to know why we're increasing the capacity on, uh, was that 358? Yes. Why are we increasing the capacity? We're taking out a 4,000. No, 359, I believe. 359. Was it 359? Yeah, we're taking out the 4,000 uh, gallon underground. Uh, yes, 359.23. We're taking out the 4,000 gallon underground and we're installing an above ground 4,000 gallon and and above ground 550 gallon. Why are we increasing the capacity? We're increasing the capacity for the uh for the um what do you call it for them to obtain more uh gas for the for the fire trucks. They requested an additional one. I believe the four thousand is not enough. Okay. And that came from the fire department? Who would that come from? I believe that was the inspection that it was done with the uh, DPW supervisor and TSLAC when they went to visit all the uh, different sites, the fire station, the police station, and also the, um, I know it's three on this uh, resolutions from TSLAC. Good enough, thank you. Um, thank you, Ms. Carballo. You're welcome. Uh, 362, please. 363, pull. Pull? Yes, please. Yes. I'm sorry, which one was that? 363? 362, 363. And then a question on 364. <clears throat> the application to the New Jersey DCA. For Degnan Field improvements, haven't we done those? What what else do we have this to do? This is for a grant. This this is for a grant for additional improvements that we're going for. Right, Requi but what do we need to continue to improve it, there? It, it requires a resolution. 
but what improvements are necessary mm-hmm. at yes. Dagnan Field? We just, we, we pretty much it's done a relatively small tennis grant is, is for some, some type of, um, um, equipment. Oh, that's the, uh, senior equipment. Yes. Okay. If this does briefly describe the project, yeah, here, but yeah. there's no description, there's no description. at all. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is the senior equipment I was referring to is going to be placed on the opposite side. The garden's on the one side, and the senior equipment's going to be. A grant. We got oh. a grant for it. This is, yeah, this is. Right. This is a, it should have been more. It should have been, yes. been more discussion. Yeah, so I, I knew what was you guys did. Because <laughs> residents who are looking at this don't know, or anyone who's looking at this yeah, doesn't know. Yeah, you're right. We always okay. ask for more information. Yeah. Are c- any capital funds required? I knew because I. Applied or matching. To receive that grant? Or is one hundred and ten thousand enough to complete the project? What is one hundred and ten thousand is the is the amount of the grant? Yeah. So what is this the is project? The, it's equipment. It's equipment backing into that. So I we're not know. spending more than the grant, and there's no requirement without, without not without coming back to you and asking. Right. It's actually. Well, do we have the scope for the project? Know, you know, we know what we do. There's no yes, absolute. Can, right. You can't apply for grants without. With, right. Like so they, we, you can't apply for a grant without the. Uh, project description yeah. so it's it's extra it's outdoor exercise equipment yeah i've been asking what so but if we can years. apply for a grant without a description why do we have to approve without a description <laughs> Walking bars. No, it's 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 like you know something that helps their hips and it's an outdoor uh, bike but right. guys, but you expect us to approve this, and and Listen, I, I, I know, but councilwoman, I, I agree with you. You can't be the you. only person who uh, understands when four other people no, have to I, vote. I, I agree. I only understand it because I was involved in the project and 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 and, and applied for it. Because so. I've been wondering about this for years what the, what the equipment was, what kind of what kind of apparatus we're gonna. Well, have this was it. just this was just given to us by uh, uh, Congresswoman Congresswoman. We just got this grant last year. So, yeah. but yeah. but still, understanding that we have one hundred and ten thousand yes, dollars. I think you were all in the picture, and I wasn't because I couldn't be there that day. <laughs> That's okay. And then mm-hmm. not to have any description. Quite frankly, as far as we're concerned, this hundred and ten thousand dollars can be put anywhere because, according to this resolution that we yeah. approve, exactly, it it doesn't have a description that's specific to equipment. Mm-hmm. So. I mean, if the administration decided to take the hundred and ten thousand dollars and apply it elsewhere because there was a, another need, we wouldn't we wouldn't know. This is well, true. The grant would the grant, the grant would preclude that. Yeah, but okay. but to her point, but we don't know. Like, that. I'm not arguing. <laughs> I'm not arguing the point. I'm just saying. But this is like you should have yeah, that, should, that's you should have had the equipment on here for her yeah, for them. I'm still so trying to know what equipment's going in. Okay, so. Oh, what three sixty four dash twenty three? What's your pleasure? Because we still don't have an answer. Are we we're gonna have to propose. We're gonna have to propose an amendment to just. Okay, so, so we just proposed. came from the grant writers. So, so, so here, here's the problem, though. <clears throat> have Mr. Keogh send you pictures tomorrow. Because is it is this time sensitive? To get the money, Look, we, we got a notification from the Division of Local Government Services that they're administering the grant and they can't, they cannot send it to us with until we have a yeah, resolution. It, it, you know, I would, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to vote for it. We just we'll vote get, for it. You get just, the information senior tomorrow. equipment add two words senior yeah. equipment or exercise of senior exercise of three words, yeah. yeah. Just okay. the we know and the general public. So we're pulling this so that we can make some amendments. Yeah, you can just do it now. Just okay, there. do it now. All right. Yeah. So uh, again, my, my colleagues are asking for a senior exercise equipment yes. to be added to the description. I offer a motion. Second. I'll second. Hold on a minute, please. What else, though? 364. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wait, to the description. Question. To the description, please add senior exercise equipment. You can put parentheses around it and put it right after for improvements. Parentheses senior exercise equipment. I, I just want to make sure that we're not limited to just senior yes, exercise it is, equipment. It is just it's for just them. that. Okay, it's I wanted just to make sure for them. Yeah. if there was something else that we did that we're yeah, missing. It's, on it's specific, okay. it's to help their hips. Perfect. It's one thing they get on and they did like I love it. We need it. Thing. Okay. I need it. Stations, yeah. Do, 
And there's nothing else for me. Is there anything else for my council colleague? No. You know, because I was no, 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 no. Is there seniors out, so. <laughs> or any other questions okay. on the resolutions? I have a couple of more questions, but there's a, a motion on the floor to amend 364. We've got to vote on that. Well, the administration just make No, this is, no, no. yeah. No, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay. Right. Uh, any other? No, I'm good with them. So 365 did not include the responses. Please just forward them to me, the additional responses. Um, uh, I need more time on 366. So we want to pull that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I respect that. Because this is a very hefty agenda, which we ask not to have such a jam-packed agenda. <laughs> And it is 1.30 and we have to do the people's business. I understand, but so at 1.30 in the I morning. I think that's it for me. That's I have nothing else. All right. Thank you. Um, so what we, I just want to confirm what we are pulling from this agenda. So we have pulled 346.23. We have um, requested changes in the language uh, for 358, 359, and 360, which includes not to exceed clauses. We have those aren't pulled. Those would just be added. Right. That's just we addition. 357. Yeah. 357 was pulled, but that's the rest. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't have that notice. Um, 362 was pulled. 363 was pulled. And 366 has been pulled. Right. The not, not to exceed was 358, 359, and 360. Correct. Thank you. And then I move the for the consent one? agenda. That was um, That was pulled. Was three sixty six. Three sixty six. Mm -hmm. And I move for the acceptance of the consent agenda. So move. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The consent agenda is implemented. All right. Let's start with number three forty six dash twenty three resolution to award a contract extension to Grabowski Construction Incorporated at seven seventy Northfield Avenue. West Orange for snow plowing, salting, removal, and snow hauling for 23-24. Oh, Ms. Caballo is on the call. Ms. Caballo, my question was that um, Grabowski Construction did not have the authorization for the snow hauling, but it is still in the resolution for them to do the snow hauling. So just wanted clarity on why we have that language differently. So the way the bid is typically done is that they have different routes. Contractors bid on different routes, not on all of them on all the bids. They're also the different contracts, they also require different sizes for the plows based on the area where they're located and the terrain of the town. Yes, but if you look at the um summary. The last paragraph on page one, attached is a resolution extending the contract to Grabowski Construction for snow removal services included on Schedule A for 23-24 and fo foregoing the hauling option. But when you go to the actual resolution, mm -hmm. it says plowing, salting, removal, and hauling services, and in the second whereas clause. So that's contrary or contradicting what's in the cover letter. But is that for Schedule A, where he has some and the other one? Well, if we're foregoing hauling option for Grabowski, yeah. that means period. So that's where my confusion lies. And I realize that this may be extremely technical, but we're just trying to make sure we get things correct. So guys, come on, give me some so, help. Yes. So there's definitely for snow plowing for those routes. 1D, 1E on the attachment. And they also have for removal, loading, and hauling as well. So they're only approved for snow plowing. Not hauling. Not hauling. So then... So should the resolution be altered? Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I know it's late. I know it's late. And we appreciate you, Ms. Carbello, for being on with us at this late hour. Um, but again, we just want to make sure we have the wording correct. To get rid of the word hauling. So can we remove hauling services? Whereas the township wishes continued contracting, um, sourcing, removal, and hauling services. I'm we don't want to, but we just want to remove it from Grabowski. I am pretty sure they do have the uh, hauling uh, on one of the air on one of the routes of the of the town. Uh, well, it's not listed. I'm not sure that we're going to have an ice storm in the next two weeks. So can we so, table it so for the next meeting? I, I, okay. I, I, I unless. Uh, All right. So I'm happy to say it has there. an objection to it. Is there a second? I, I, second. Yeah. It's been yeah. properly but moved and tabled. Just, it's been properly moved and tabled. Keep us speak, speaking and. And you're making motions, and it's you know you got to listen to each other. It's a good good point, point, clerk. Yeah, <laughs> it's frustrating because it's you know I'm I'm hearing motions, but I'm hearing John speak, and I'm just like you know what am I doing here? So, so just a quick question. Um, so from what I'm hearing from Ms. Corbella is that there's one, two, three, four, five routes here. And in maybe one or two of them, there could be hauling. Yes. That's we... Sure. Go ahead. Okay. So, so you would, so even though this says awarded snow plowing routes, there's hauling in a couple of these, not all of them. Yes. And the contractors do bid on some of the, not on all of the routes, but on some of them. And the same thing with the snow plowing. So do you still need to know which route has the hauling on it? Do you need that? Well, detail? because, yes, because Krabowski I, I, I can't... highly suggest that that we, that, that you table this sometime. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Uh, I agree with that recommendation, especially because the let's township right. council concurs with its recommendation and we can't concur to something that we're not well, but you can because it says because Grabowski is the only awardee, he just has five different routes and two of them have falling in it. You just want to know exactly which one's going to have falling. I don't know why you need to know that. Well, I'll attach the uh, the uh, the bit to the to the uh, to this um uh, resolution. Will that make it clear? I'm sorry, I couldn't understand what you were saying. If we attach the bit summary to this resolution. And I schedule A, will that resolve it? Yes. Okay. But we don't, I mean, so what do we do with it now? If you table it, you table it. What, what I move to table. I second it. Okay. Councilwoman, oh, sorry. Councilwoman Castellino. Uh, to table. Yes, but uh, Ms. Harbaugh, I guess you, you heard tonight that with the detail, we'll, we'll, need, we'll need more detail. Yes. Okay. Councilwoman Gever Michael? Yes. Councilman Rutherford? Yes. Councilwoman Scarpa? Yes. 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 Council President Williams? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um. So then. And the, this will be put back on the next agenda. Correct? Yes, please. Thank you. With more detail. Thank Great. you. Thank you, Ms. Carballo. You're welcome. And. Um, 357 is next. Thank okay. you. Yes, 357 is next. That was pulled. Um, that's the amount of 25000 for the additional mm -hmm. contract administration services through the end of the project with the Cairo Iovino, 1 Catherine Street, Little Ferry. I think there is a motion to amend. Yes, uh, I think because, again, Mr. Smeraldo stated that this project is over in November 1st that we should adjust the amount to the $10,000 or $15,000, right? Wait, September, October, November. Well, I would suggest that you make it a not to exceed 5,000 a month, and then we we can then administer that. Okay, not to exceed, but again, the way it's written here, it says- No, no, but you're gonna amend the resolution. Okay. To, to not to exceed yeah, right. 5,000 a month, month let me beginning talk. September 1st, and that way that covers no matter whatever contingencies there are, Okay, so then we're going to remove the amount of twenty five thousand. Then, right, is what we're doing when we amend it. Yes, because that would only make sense if we did that. All right, so I'm. I mean, well, if we're going to do that, then we do need some cap on the total. I mean, this not to project exceed. has already gone way beyond 
I mean, we're six, seven months now past what we expected initially. So yeah, so mm -hmm. and I'm going to see twenty five thousand uh, oh, at, at a rate of five thousand. It's nice because if something happens between okay. now and then, I don't want to come back. I'm, happy. It's I, I'm voting though because I think, at least in part, and I, uh, I've complained about this project enough. It's one thirty in the morning, so I, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm voting no. They can't do it. They got to do it each month. Hmm. Township attorney, what are your thoughts I, on this? I can't, I can't hear what your side conversation. I heard count in the run room was very clear. <laughs> <Going down. laughs> I couldn't hear what you. But just based on discussions, what? Well, I, I'm not. The bottom line is, you cannot run a project like this without an architect. They've been an architect. I understand kids. that. I'm not. So, so I'm sorry. What's so to me? I thought the amendment you wanted was the letter dated back That's September 14th. Mm -hmm. Say it's September. Going forward, not to see five thousand a month, and what Ms. Gross is suggesting is the cap issue would be a max of twenty five. I think twenty five is high. If okay. Mr. Smeraldo is saying the project's over in two months, November first, he just said that I earlier. Don't think he knows, but by the way, fifteen per month. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. I feel comfortable doing fifteen. Yeah, 15 and then yes, and they can always come back. Is that a motion? So that's my motion. Second. Thank you. Yeah. Clerk, are you clear? I, <laughs> believe it or not, I am. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you. So there's been a motion Wait, I to. I didn't take a vote. I, on the amendment? I, I need to do the amendment first. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I thought. Oh, we're not going to just vote fine. on it as amended? No, we need to vote I, on the I amendment just, and then we need vote. to vote yeah. on the ordinance. All right. Yeah, because you're not going to. You're I'm not sorry, the resolution. Right. Thank you, council. Um, so the. Amazing. Amendment is to not to exceed five thousand dollars a month for a total cap of fifteen. For a total cap of fifteen thousand dollars, all um, Madam Clerk for the amendment. Okay, Councilwoman Casalino. Yes. Councilwoman Gepper Michael. Yes. Councilman Rutherford. Yes, for the amendment. Councilwoman Scarpa. Yes. Council President Williams. Yes. So the amendment of not to exceed five thousand dollars a month. Um, and not to exceed 15,000 in total passes. And now for the full amended uh, resolution, um, all those in favor or uh, Madam, no, Clark, no, no. Madam Clerk, no, no. Madam Clerk, Madam Clerk. Yeah, motion Madam to, Clark. I need a motion to approve. So move. Second. Second. Um, okay, Councilwoman Casalino. Yes. Councilwoman Geber Michael. Yes. Councilman Rutherford. No. Councilwoman Scarpa. Yes. Council President Williams. Yes, thank you. The motion passes with as amended. And now we have pulled 362-23, resolution providing for the combination of certain bond ordinances and determining the form and other details of the offering of not to exceed 21,390,000 aggregate principal amount of general improvement bond series 2023B of the Township of West Orange in the County of Essex, State of New Jersey, the Township and providing for their sale and determining certain other matters with respect there to B, authorizing the sale and issuance of $38,730,191 general obligation notes series 2023A tax exempt, consisting of $32,906,191 bond anticipation notes, $4,476,000 open space trust fund notes, and 1,348,000 special emergency notes of the township, and C, authorizing the sale and issuance of $1,369,806 special emergency notes, series 2023B, federally taxable of the township. Mr. Gross. Okay. Um, this is a, a, uh, a form and other details of the offering for a actually going, going to bond for a certain portion of existing debt. Um, and so that that's the first part. That's the 21 million. Basically, uh, while we 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 were we looked hard and we're still in an inverted curve. Um, and so the the interest rate on the short term is still extremely high. And it makes the uh, the and frankly the um the the cost on a um, long bond um, is is better than better than the the long term average. So 
we're recommending, I recommend uh, that we move forward with this and, and um, go along with the 21 million. So it's my understanding that the 21 million 390 aggregate principal amount is required. This is all debt. We're just transferring it. That's correct. This is this is not incurring any uh, and authorizing any new debt. Well, that's not necessarily that my is true. understanding. Well, because here, then, I'm sorry. Here it we have eight million nine hundred and ninety-eight thousand one hundred and ninety-one for the capital improvements that were adopted in 12 20 22. Yes, that's that already authorized. Correct, but there's there's debt that was authorized in previous years that we're reallocating as well. So how do we know that all of this eight million dollars or eight almost nine million dollars is actually things that we need to go out and 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 find and find and and basically increase our debt? How many of these capital projects have been done? Haven't been done? What is the status? Do we have to to do the entire nine million? Are we putting some it's my professional opinion that you need to do that? Any other questions, colleagues? Yeah, so uh, I'm a little unclear too. Um, uh, this 21 4, roughly. I, I understand that's um, essentially refinancing existing debt. Mm -hmm. The next section says authorizing sale and issuance of 38.7. Can you speak to that? So this is all that we have renewals of previously uh, previous um, debt uh, bans. You know, every year they have to be renewed. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the lines portion minus the $8 million that council president was talking about is all renewed debt. Um, as chief financial officer, I'm authorized to do everything in this resolution on my own, except the conversion up to the, the 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 to the bonds. So that 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 is um, um, the, the focus of this resolution is the bonds, because we're doing it all in one transaction. It's listed all there for for mm -hmm. disclosure purposes, so that there's no doubt as to what we're actually doing. Do you have a net financial impact? How how much are we saving? Uh, or is is it going to you know what is our cost? How much are we going to spend? You know above what we're currently paying in debt service. Is there a, is there a supplemental debt statement? There's not. There's no requirement for a supplemental debt statement because we're not authorizing any new debt. Oh. This is all pre-existing debt. So, so in terms of uh, in terms of debt authorized. So how do, how much will our debt service go up? Your debt service will go up, right? Because sure. now we have principal and interest on so, uh, some of this short term debt, and so you're going, so, you're going, you're going it'll, it will be lower. It will be lower than if I just renewed. And that's why there there is a savings, and I can provide that. So I'd like to just see the financial impact. I'd like to know what our net after the transaction. What is the impact to our debt service for these bonds only? Um, that that's really all I need to know. Yeah, and and I I, I can't vote on it unless I know that. So well, unless, we can't vote on it. We, we we then we won't be able to go long because there's 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 there are time frames in order to do this. This is for a November transaction. So if if you can't authorize the the, the only thing you're really authorizing here is is going um um to the the bonds so so um like when did so when did you know we had to engage in this transaction within the last month we made the decision along with our 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 bond council and our auditors and our uh, financial advisor that this was the the best method. This is the best direction to go. And and I, I know you know our financial advisor has good reputation. 
Um, I know our bond council has an outstanding reputation. Um, so I'm not questioning their advice. What I'm questioning is the the timeliness of the communication. Cause like we're, it sounds like we have to do it tonight. If we don't do it tonight, you're not gonna be able to go out to the market. Is that right? If you don't, if you don't do it tonight, we will not we will not be able to get the transaction done in time. Right. We we have because we're turning over we're turning over debt. Right. So even and this is just I mean we just me. had oh yeah you know, again we we today we had our, our meeting with um standard and force. These, these, this is how these transactions always go. This is the same time frame. I've always presented this to be to because you don't know uh, until until the market is right. Well, what I would appreciate, and this is going forward, when you make the decision, hey, we're going to go out, we're going to take, you know, a basket, and you may not have the basket of securities that you're going to uh, refinance or convert, right? But you know that it's, you know, these, this group, it may end up being less than that, but this is the the basket that we are considering. And we've made the decision based on advice of counsel, bond counsel, and our financial advisor to go out and do this. You guys, need, meaning the town council, need to be prepared because this is, you know, like I feel obligated to read these. And and I'll, I'll be honest with you, like I didn't have enough time. I, I, I read it. I didn't read it well. Um, uh, same thing. There's another one in there. It's, it's a lot. So if you give us a heads up and give us what you have when you have it, it makes it easier to act quickly on things like this when our when we're running out of time because it's hard for me to do it not knowing what the impact is going to be to our debt service it is it's going to go up which is going to crowd out other parts of the budget we still have contracts with our unions we still have the garbage contract which is probably going to beat us up we we just got the capital budget presentation tonight um and then we've got a you know first part of next year, get ready for the regular OE budget. And it'd be nice to know how much crowding out, if any, is going to happen based on this transaction, right? Like if it's- if it's Well, this particular transaction, the bond transaction itself is going to result in a savings. So we're gonna have net less debt service. Because surface. of that, our debt service is gonna be more because we've spent money and that we have to, we have to replace. So I mean that's that's the the eight million in here, which is we're we're going to a bond anticipation bill. But again, that's something that as chief financial officer, I'm authorized to do. But when when we when from a cash flow perspective, we need those funds. I get it. I think for me, and I don't speak for anybody else in this particular vein, right? I think for me, the heads up letting me know so that I can understand what that impact is going to be, or at least have an idea, even if it's not exact, you know, look, this, we're going to, we, we're going out with 8 million above and beyond. We'll, we're going to do, you know, just pulling numbers out of here. It's $20 million that we're converting and 8 million in new, or, or in this case, bands. Um, and this is the impact that we expect from that. That, you know, gives me I'm happy to do that enough to kind of make a decision um because this really makes it hard my my last question and i know my colleagues have some too is this a four vote or a three vote that was my question three yeah. and why is it a resolution versus ordinance out of curiosity it's the law okay just wondering yeah thank you so, so it's a three vote to pass it it's a simple majority okay and that there is a deadline. It has to be passed tonight in order for you to do what you need to in do. Order, in order to yes. meet. Yes. Order yes. yes. And, okay. and that's very typical because we won't. We don't really know what the 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 um, economic environment is until you get closer to the date. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these things always happen that way. I get it, but what I would so like the way I would have if I had known I would have a new business last week. Hey, council. Met with the bond council, met with the financial advisor. This is what we're considering is going to have an impact. We don't know what the impact is going to be exactly. We're not even sure we're going to fully execute the transaction, but this is what we're thinking. We're going to come to you. Happy to do that. And this is going to be the impact. Yeah. All right. 
that's it for me because it's two in the morning and I'm hungry. <laughs> One forty nine. Hopefully we get up. <laughs> All right. So somebody offer a motion. So I, I still have some concerns about the nine million nine million dollars. Um, and understanding what has been done from that 2022 capital um, improvements, what hasn't been done. If, if we could, you know, adjust that based on things that aren't priorities, that would be helpful. I, I, we just have a, you we know. Got that list. Didn't we get that list with the the projects you didn't? No, we that's, have our, that's our, that is our, that is uh, a debt for a previous year. We We always do one new issue a year. This is the new issue that we do every year. I mean, you, you, you know, we, 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 we don't. We're always a year behind. So you've authorized a certain amount of debt. We start spending that money. We have to have money to, to, to pay for that. So we, so, for instance, we pulled the pickleball courts, but that's in the twenty twenty two capital improvement. Well, first off, you, you did. Well, no, we, we, did we did in the budget. We did. we did in the budget. We said we didn't want to do that right now because we just wanted to reduce the impact. Just, just to be clear, you have expressed that you don't want to see that this year. This year, but we want it. it but it's, not. This it's year. still in. It's still there. The money is still there. You you funded it. So you know, I mean, it's 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 funded. I'm not clear on what that means. I'm sure. Money was appropriated. Money is there, but there's not a project. Right. Yeah. So it right. didn't get spent. So it's there, didn't get spent. Right. So then that goes back to my question, you which is, to go away. I want it to go away right now, and then come back in another capital budget if we're going to reappropriate. Well, you those. didn't. You didn't do that. I mean, maybe in your attention, but that isn't what you did. We did it with the other projects that. We that are we will do with the other projects that he wants to apply to this capital budget. That list. The allocation list that I'm definitely capital budget. Microphone, please. So in the reallocation part of the capital budget presentation, there was money that was approved. The projects did not get done or they're not going to get done. So we're asking to transfer those funds over. That was $1.5 million. Right. And these, this funds, these were funds that were already appropriated. Now you're saying you don't want to do the pickleball courts. Yeah. 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 But the yeah. money is already appropriated. Yeah, but then you're going to tell the money. Okay. So the money is sitting there. I'm just not spending it yet. You're just not spending it yet. <clears throat> okay. Now, I don't borrow it until we need it. So we always have $10 million that's authorized that, that, that's, that we're not spending. Well, so that would be helpful. I think that's why we need to see the statement because we keep seeing or hearing. Well, it, is it where yeah. online? All that's online, isn't it? All no. The debt well, certainly, yeah. all, all, all the debt statements are on. How do we get to it? Just send it, yeah, just send it to us. Yeah. So, it's so hard to find anything. No, it's not. It's I, I'm the worst one to find things online, and I find it. It's 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 there. It's I, 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 I hear you, the, but if council I have colleague this asked, year, I have emailed or each and every one of you the supplemental debt statements when they were introduced. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Gross, okay. I'm not saying you didn't. All I'm saying is they asked for you to resend it. Just resend it to them. That's all. Make a note and resend it. Yeah, that's it. Oh, I'm not. So I, we but, can move on from you know. I'm just mentioning because anybody could grab well, it. I'm time. not sure what you want me to resend. No, I mean, I, I mean, believe you, but it's because it's two in the morning. I don't think any of us are sharp as we were six yeah. hours ago. Yeah, well, okay, my, my point, see, so you want me to send, but 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 what is it you want me to send? Because this is a this is a, a supplemental a compilation is of like, a lot of different things. There's a lot there. Right. There's a lot. So 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 and and you and you have to understand that the supplemental debt statement has to do with when you're passing a bond ordinance. I, I'm good on the supplemental. Not debt with yeah. not with this type of a transaction. Right. I, I'm good on the supplemental debt statement. I was just showing support for whoever asked for whatever they asked for. Whoever asked for just if you ask for something, get it. That's all. Don't make them look for it. That's yeah. all I'm saying. I mean, I can resend you all of them from this year. But I don't, we don't, not the supplemental. We have that. I'm sorry. 
All right, I'm sorry. It's two in the morning. Let's go. Let's just move on. Yeah, roll the vote. Okay. Is there a motion to approve 362-23? So Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, Councilwoman Castellino? Yes. Councilwoman Gebra Michael? Yes. Councilman Rutherford? No. Councilwoman Scarpa? No. Council President Williams? Why did y'all do this to me? It, we didn't do it to you. Yes. Okay. The motion carries. This is not this is not normal. Okay. okay, that was 362. Next one is 366, resolution authorizing the certification of the 2022 annual audit by the governing body. I read what we have. I just didn't have enough time to go back That's to fine. the statement. Councilman Rutherford, you pulled this. Yeah, I just, this was the other one. I didn't, I just read what we have in here. Um, I just would like, I just would like more time. Is this oh, required yeah. today? No. You, so can we you, just you, table this to the next meeting? Yeah. What is that? Offer a motion. We table. If you haven't the read it, then you then you have to. You have I mean, I've read it. this, which is the minimum that we're required to. At least that's the way I understood it. Uh, I would. Three sixty six. The audit. The audit. Uh, okay. You're gonna. Yes. Okay. 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 But can I just want to make a comment because this would have been a press release. That's a non-negotiable, non-debatable. So we have to vote. Okay. And then okay. All right. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Madam Clerk, yeah. It was already published for tonight, by the way. What was that? The it, the audit was already published. It's gonna no, you gotta pay to re uh, republish. Correct. Then you have to do what now? She has to repay to republish it. What yeah, I just I I don't know. I won't know until Thursday when I get when it's in the paper. Okay. What is it usually if it's a re-notice? I don't know. I won't know until Thursday because I'll see what the cost was for everything. Okay. There was four attachments to it, so it's not going to be cheap it's a to tell you lot that. Of pages for an audit. Huh? It's a lot of pages for an audit. It's 165 pages. Yeah. Look at it. Well, I mean, that's not published, but there's four attachments that it's had to be published. Are you where you're comfortable no, oh, yeah, sorry. but the okay. advertised the audit, yeah. Don't call the vote, Add a clean audit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> after all that, right? No, Councilwoman no. Castellino? Yes. Councilwoman Gebber Michael? No, for my colleagues, so you can review it because it is hefty. Well, this is to table. Oh, to table. Okay, yes, yes. Sorry. Councilman Rutherford? Yes. Councilwoman Scarpa? Yes. Council President Williams? Yes. Thank you. And, and I want to make the my way I would like to make a yes. because on that audit, what I wanted to say was that the township hired P township hired PKF O'Connor Davis uh to Davis. complete the requested audit, Davis to complete the audit. And on September 28th, the audit report was released and listed West Orange as having an unmodified opinion and no audit findings. The results are summarized in the resolution that you have today at October 10th, West Orange Township. Um, this is the first time in 20 years that there have not been any audit recommendations for four straight years. So our finance department and John Gross should be commended. I, I have to applaud, you know, the you know, it, it's my system. The system works. My staff would like to hear that. But the truth of the matter is it works because everybody um, buys into it and by, everybody does a really tremendous job. This is not um, this is this is not something that is um, about a small group of people. Uh, it's about the entire organization. And I can can do nothing but applaud. It's an incredible feat. Um yeah. And that that um, doesn't happen very often. And uh, I was I was frankly very surprised. I did, didn't expect it this year. Um, so now I have to expect it for next year, I guess. Mr. Gross, so. can you just speak into your microphone, please? I received an email from constituents that they, they can't hear you. So okay. Well. Thank you. And Congratulations. Yeah. 363, uh, I skipped. 
Sorry. Someone, I think somebody I, pulled that. 363 resolution authorizing emergency award of refuse and recycling mm. collection service yes. contract to suburban disposal and pending bidding and award of new refuse and recycling collection contract. I know there was a question by one of my colleagues as to why wasn't it sent to the state for their review in a more timely manner. Um, I know we've been working as a committee on this um, for since February. Uh, so. And that that's the answer. The there, uh, um, we do have a a, a draft, that, and everybody's made their comments back to to it. And then the next step is to go to the state. Um, we were able to negotiate with the current provider uh, for no additional cost for refuse and for um, recycling. The additional cost is to just to pick up the cost of the recycling. Um, I, I, the 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 annualized cost of that um, is a is four hundred thousand dollars more, um, but that is far less than what we anticipated mm -hmm. it was going to be. So, Mr. So, Gross, we've had um, several complaints from residents that come through, some to us, some directly um, into the uh, website uh, complaint, um, and then of course we see a lot of social media posts. What is the actual policy, recycling policy of our company, just for the public so that they're clear? Um, they've been uh, citing that there's no, not been any separation of recyclable goods and trash. Um, certainly, we've had challenges with them picking up on a timely manner, picking up all of the refuse. Um, what is actually, actually being communicated to the company how does that help us financially when they aren't doing what they're supposed to do? And then certainly moving forward, um, how do we protect our residents so that they get the service and the quality of well, service it's, that it's, we it's expect? Serious. Um, it's serious. It, I mean, you know, the law is you have to recycle. You, you can't commingle. Um, our garbage could end up getting rejected because of that. And so there, there are potential issues. Uh, we put, we put our, all are on notice for that, and uh, they've been taking it very serious uh, at, at from what we can see. Um, that doesn't mean that that uh, they have always have complete control of their staff, and I'm not sure exactly what's going on. We've, we've seen an uptick on it the past week or two uh, of problems. Um, we go to them every time, and we expect them to perform properly. Um, they're they're there is an, it, when it does occur, um, there is a cost differential. Um, and that's something that, that, that we, when we can measure it, when, when we have the ability to measure it, um, we will, we will take, take advantage of that. Um, and we have, have we been taking advantage. And we have. So to the public that's still up at two in the morning, um, if, all of those videos that you send in, all of those uh, videos, I mean, the, the complaints are fine, but when you send in a picture or a video, that helps the administration more to make a downward revision to the amount that we pay. It does. Okay. It helps. It, it And it helps the, the, the company identify who they are having yeah, the problems with. Right. You know. So I move uh, for the passage of the resolution. Second. 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 Okay. Councilwoman Castellino? Yes. Councilwoman Gebra Michael? Yes. Councilman Rutherford? Yes. Councilwoman Tarpa? Yes. Council President Williams? Yes. Thank you. The motion passes. That completes all of our resolutions on uh, for this evening. Ordinances on second and final reading 2815-23, an ordinance amending chapter 15, section 15.7 to update the township's rent control ordinance. Is there a motion so to... Is there a motion to introduce on second, second and, and final, final reading? reading. And Councilwoman? Yeah. Yes. Second. Okay. Councilwoman Castellino? Yes. Councilwoman Gebber Michael? Yes. Councilman Rutherford? Yes. Councilwoman Scarpa? Yes. Council President Williams? Yes. Are there any members of the public at 2.03 a.m. who would like to speak on Ordinance 2815 on second and final reading? Council President, there currently are no hands raised. There being none. Council colleagues, do you have any comments? I move for... How many people are 
Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. We are rest on strong. We are rest on strong. 22. We're still here. All right. Um, Madam Clerk. 2815-23. My Lord have mercy. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? So, yes. Yeah, so second. Moved. Oh my. No. Okay. So who who did the first one? Okay. Sorry. Thank I, you. Councilwoman Casalino. Yes. Councilwoman Gebra Michael. Yes. Councilman Rutherford. Yes. Councilwoman yes. Scarpa. Council President Williams. Yes. The motion passes. Uh, 2816 23, an ordinance amending chapter 17, section 37.1, and chapter 7, section 37.1, and chapter 7, section 50.3H of the revised general ordinances of the Township of West Orange, regulation for the movement and parking of traffic on municipal and board of ed property, parking meters in parking yards, prohibited parking. Is there Is a motion to second? Are there any members of the public who would like to comment on 28? Wait, I need to take a vote. Oh, okay. Please slow it down a little bit. Sure. Councilwoman Casalino. Yes. Councilwoman Geber Michael. Yes. Councilman Rutherford. Yes. Councilwoman yes. Scarpa. Council President Williams. Yes. Are there any members of the public who would like to comment on Ordinance 2816? Council President, seeing none. Seeing none, council colleagues, do you have any comments on ordinance 2816-23? No. I move for the acceptance on second, second. and final reading of 2816. Approval. approval on second and final reading. Councilwoman Casalino? Yes. Councilwoman Geber Michael? Yes. Councilman Rutherford? Yes. Councilwoman Scarpa? Yes. Council President Williams. Did that motion have a second? Yeah. I did. Oh, okay. Thank you. And the motion passes. So the next motion we've already handled 2817-23 is 2818-23 ordinance amending chapter two, section 62 of the revised general ordinances of the township of Orange, older adults advisory board. Are there any members of the public who would like, no, we got oh, I'm sorry. I'd like to, to, I like to, I like this to introduce like to our second and final reading. Yes. Second. Is there a second? second. Thank you. Um, it's been I properly- have to do a vote. Moved and seconded, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Casalino? Yes. Councilwoman Gebra yes. Michael? Councilman Rutherford? Yes. Councilwoman Scarpa? Yes. Council President Williams? Yes. Are there members of the public who would like to speak on Ordinance 2818 23? Council President, seeing none. Council colleagues, are there any comments, additional comments? No. I move for the acceptance of, for the approval on second and final reading. For 2818-23, is there a second? Yes, second. Thank you. It's been moved and properly seconded, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Casalino? Yes. Councilwoman Geber Michael? Yes. Councilman Rutherford? Yes. Councilwoman Scarpa? Yes. Council President Williams? Yes, it's been, a, uh, the motion is approved. 2819-23, an ordinance amending chapter 25, section 1114 of the revised general ordinances of the Township of West Orange drive through windows. Uh, I'm move is there a motion to introduce on second and final reading. So move. Second. Wait, what if we want to make amendments? We introduce it first, and then yes, make... yes. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Councilwoman Casalino. Yes. Councilwoman Geber Michael. Yes. Councilman Rutherford. Yes. Councilwoman Sparta. Yes. Council President Williams. Yes. Madam, I'm sorry. Um, yes. Councilwoman, you have amendments that you would like to propose. Um. If it's not considered too substantial or we don't have to. Mr. Trank, could you please? So I'm going to ask I'm you. Oh. Yeah, I'm yeah, just right. wondering because I know with the other, with the ban on gas bills, there's too many changes. With this, I just want to strike out restaurants and then the other one about the five acres. That's That's, That's substantial. The substantial? Substantive. Substantive. Okay, well then, okay, I don't support this. Um, thank you. Okay. Uh, move for the acceptance okay. of. Could you? Only thing again, since the planning board is reporting this is not consistent with the master plan, this amendment, uh, there is a requirement that there be Four votes. additional language as to the reason to go counter to the master plan. So, again, I've certainly uh, heard the comments about the fast food, and I think we talked about it at the special meeting in August. Uh, so so again, I, I certainly can put in the stuff about the fast food and share it. 
So, do we want to yeah, I mean, reject this? Why, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've got enough of that's the major. No, no, no. I'm asking, do we just reject this? We'll it's on second ask. reading. Different. You can definitely vote. If there's a motion, just vote it down. Yeah, we, uh, yeah. well, we haven't done public comment for. Yeah, do public comment. All right. Is there a public comment? <laughs> uh, Council President saying none. I think we should Thank you. So, and then oh. if my council colleagues um, don't have any comments, then no. I'd like to call for the vote. So I, I, I mean, we just voted okay. down. To vote it down. Yeah. Okay. So I call for the vote for the approval on second and final reading for 2819-23. Is Was there a motion? No. It wasn't? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then I move, um, I move that we... Not approve 2819-23. Well, I can do a motion to approve and you can say no. Right. And then it'll be voted down. But what do we do with the other one, yeah. Mr. Trink? Let's be consistent. Yeah. You do said a do a motion to, to V. Yeah, yeah, let's do the can same I thing. Ask a question so I'm clear because I'm getting really tired. So this ordinance, this we agree to that would be on five acres. Are you opposed to the five acres now? Yeah, I am. Okay. I always was. I don't that and restaurants. I'm, I'm okay with the five acres. Okay. So I could vote. I should vote yes then. Well, we're, we're doing a we're, we're, we're motion to a do a motion to defeat. Right. So then, so your, then vote, your vote would be no. Vote. Okay. If you want to vote yes, vote no. <laughs> Opposite day. I don't know why we're doing it that way. Okay, yeah, you know what? Because I was always under the impression that you don't do a negative motion. Okay. And that's what we've do been doing do twice. No, I think we should be consistent. With the other well, one. I know. Clark I don't know why we did it that way before. Clark we've Clark always Clark. done it this way. Motion to approve, and then you say no. Yeah, right. You don't do a negative motion. We've always done it that way. Always. Oh, All right. So can we go back and amend the language? No, no, no. No, we don't have any. Yeah, it's dead. So uh, let's just do this one. So All right. Is okay. there a motion so to approve move on second approval. and final? The second and final reading of 2819. Is, is there, there a second? Second. second. Okay, Thank so you. it's been properly moved and seconded. Uh, is there any comment from the public? No, we already did, oh, that. We did that. Yeah. Okay. Councilwoman Castellino? Yes. Councilwoman Gabber Michael? No. Councilman Rutherford? No. Councilwoman Scarpa? No. Council President Williams? No. Okay. Right. Motion failed. No. Uh, yeah. Mo I, yeah. I'm fails. okay because this is saying no drive throughs in town except for on five acres okay. of property. All right. 2821 uh, 23, an ordinance amending and supplementing Chapter 7, traffic subsection 7 31, no passing zones of the revised general ordinances of the township Wait, of West Orange. I have a question before we make a motion to introduce. How does it go from 2819 to 2821? Is that a typo? Should it be 2820? No, 2820 was not on. Right. No, no, no. Oh, 23 no, no. was. 2823 is that 2820 is a I believe but it's not in here yeah I know there's a reason it's okay. it's, it's I don't it, know if it, 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 it whatever it was it did exist okay. so it doesn't tree ordinance it doesn't get tree ordinance. tree ordinance is that the tree ordinance yeah okay right so if it's the tree ordinance oh that's right that was the tree ordinance it right. required some feedback from somebody correct the planning board I believe so okay. I'm waiting for it to be heard before the plan. We're going to have a, you guys are gonna have a we're do a workshop. We have to workshop. talk about it in new matters, but <laughs> right. Okay. Why? Yeah, tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Three after midnight. Uh, <laughs> okay. Is, so 2821 23, an ordinance amending and supplementing Chapter 7. I've already done that. Is, yeah. I, I move for the acceptance. Second. No. I move Is for there a motion on? to introduce on second and final? Second. So moved. Introduce. Okay. On second and final reading. Yeah. So moved. Councilwoman Castellino. Yes. Councilwoman Gepper Michael. Yes. Councilman Rutherford. Yes. Councilwoman Scarpa. Yes. Council President Williams. Yes. It's been properly moved and seconded. Is there any comment? Seeing none, Council President. Colleagues, is there any comment? Public no. comment is closed. I move for the um, approval on second and final road reading second. 2821. Councilwoman Castellino. Yes. Councilwoman yes. Deborah Michael, Councilman Rutherford. Yes. Councilwoman Scarpa. Yes. Council President Williams. Yes. Clerk. The motion carries.
Ordinances on first reading 2822-23. An ordinance oh, amending so and supplementing. Sorry. It's okay. An ordinance Just amending and supplementing chapter seven traffic subsection 7-32.2 restricted parking zones and 7-32.1 handicap parking on street of the revised general ordinances of the Township of West Orange, 85 Mitchell Street, 65 High Street, 5 Glennon Place, 100 Maple Street, 131 Franklin Avenue, and 6 Marmon Terrace. Second. I move for the introduction on first reading. Yes. Yes. Hold on. She has to vote. Councilwoman Castellino. Yes. Councilwoman Gepper Michael. Yes. Councilman Rutherford. Yes. Councilwoman yes. Scarpa. Council President Williams. Yes. I have a question before we move on. How do we address when handicapped parking has been approved for a residence, the resident moves that had the handicap, how do we then come back and fix it? It gets that? undone. It, they, they inevitably, someone reports, reports it. it. Yeah, so. And then, and then engineering will, will. Doing will an be. ordinance. All right, so I've got a report for that. I'll send it to Zajabeth, I guess, or do I yeah. send it to Zajabeth? Yeah, okay, that's fine. 28, 23 20. No, that was, no, it was, yeah. Oh, okay. We're done. All right. Pending Most, matters, new yeah. matters, no. council discussion. Council president. Yes. I have one. Yes. Um, Almost five months ago tonight, we spent a very similar e evening morning till three o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And during that meeting, um, I had two grand two baby grands born oh congratulations and, and so the past five months um as they have become little people and adding to the four other grands that i have uh i've um talking with my family and made some decisions and i'm i advised the mayor last week that um sometime next year I will be I will be retiring probably mid year. Haven't set a date. Obviously, I'm going to work out with the administration and make sure that there's a a, a, a proper transition. Um, but I w wanted to let you know um, that um, that 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 was uh, in in the future, uh, just so that you were aware. So God bless. Congrats. Congrats. Enjoy your life. Enjoy. Enjoy those kids, man. Yeah. Tell Lucky you. So there was one. Good night, Mayor. One piece of business that I wanted to bring for my council colleagues' consideration. I know this would probably not favor well um, with the administration, but my recommendation for the mercantile license is to not impose any penalties in 2023 uh, for those who do not register. There's a $2,000 penalty if you're not registered. And I understand that the administration has said that they will work with residents. Um, but I would like us to take onus and remove that penalty until January 1, 2020. I second that. Yeah, yeah. I support that. Can I tell you that penalty that's in there is the same penalty. It's a broad penalty that you have for any violation of any of your ordinances. It's the same penalty. We understand. So if you take that out, you're taking out any penalty for anything. Um, Wait, yeah. what? Why, why would that be the case if because we're making it, it specific to this mercantile license application penalty? I was very clear. But just not to impose the penalty yeah, until talking, January I'm one. The way, the way it's structured, that that's it. Now, no one is going to. I, I want that. I want that voted on and approved by this so, body because I think that we owe that to our residents. To yeah, to yeah, well, that raises a question for other ones that may. But, but this is specific. The penalty is specific to the mercantile license. It says if you do not comply with the mercantile license by the end of this month, the thirty first, that yeah, you are I get that, that I you get can that. be imposed with a two thousand dollar fee. That's and I, I and that's not fair that's because true. there are some people who don't even have the information or know to register. You're right, but there's there's when do you want it to extend to? I said not to be imposed. The penalty not to be imposed before one one twenty four. So you really literally have those 60 days or for the rest of the year. That's not enough notice. Yes, but but it's it's better to be safe than sorry and have it in writing. 
because we are, I mean, our residents are being hit like crazy this year. You've got the almost 6% tax increase, the sewer, the this, the that. No, no, I, I so, agree with I mean, that. And, and we're talking about notice, right? Like Montclair, right? The, with the but ban of gas blowers. Hold on, I'm speaking. Sorry. They're being sued because there wasn't enough timely notice. How do you give residents one month? Oh, I agree with Some that. Some people haven't even received it. So why not just extend it a couple of months? Like what's, what's the, the, penalty. the penalty? The penalty is I mean. all I'm asking to be waived until January 1. I, I second that. I, I think there's a five vote uh, support for that, waiving the penalty for this year. But the question then becomes, Mr. Gross said, if you take the penalty out of this one, it affects all the others. How is that so? I don't know. That, that's my question. Uh, it's, it's two o'clock in the morning. I'll look and see. Like, my recollection is we, we have a general penalty in our ordinances. Yeah. Okay? That general penalty is $2,000. So whenever we whenever we talk about a penalty in reference to something, we we refer to them. So now, if, now I was going to look and is it possible that there's a that if there's one specifically for this? And it's also yeah, I can look and see. So well, the good news is we have another meeting on October 24th, and so we can finalize it. But I've read right. I've read all the documents, and there it, this is specific to mercantile. It's not specific to mm -hmm. you read the yes, it's in the it's the two thousand oh, dollar penalty. Okay, no problem. Yeah, but I have a motion that we adjourn. Yeah. Is there any other Second. new business or pending matters? Well, there was the original, I mean, the ordinance that we did work on. For the we'll have to do that next, next time. Quarter yeah. after you know, she asked, so I <laughs> I have to go to the motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Is there a second? Okay. It's two o'clock in the morning. Well, we'll talk about budget by then? We haven't even gotten the capital budget. No, I know. We haven't gotten. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, Good night, Good night, Good night. 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 Good night.